first of all, Ernie, I would I would like to start off by giving a shout out to FYF Sports Debates Podcast. I really love that podcast. I really do. FYF Sports, man, we back. Appreciate everybody pulling up. My apologies on the late stream, man. I had some stuff going on, man. Trying to trying to get some stuff set up. Salute to Dr. Waltz from Chicago, man. Appreciate you pulling up, man. I've been checking out your lives, man. You've been cooking over there, man. You you've been cooking over there. I, I can't lie. Salute to Antisocial. He says salute Lamont. Can't really get on the platform no more. You gotta watch what you say. He said, he says, he says, Lamont can't really get on the platform no more. You got to watch what you say. You say too much for me, but still support from the chat when I can. I don't know what you mean. What you mean? Watch what I say. What I say. What I say wrong. Just basketball talk. Just basketball talk. That's the one thing I can always walk away from this saying, yeah. I always do my best to keep it basketball. If anybody takes anything that I say or do outside of the context of basketball, then you're just trying too hard. It's just sports over here. Forget your feelings, man. No feelings involved over here, man. It's just sports. That's that's why we're talking about this topic right here. We are talking about this topic today right here because it's too many people emotionally invested in just lying about this, the, the game of basketball. And, and and then when you have, when you have those few people out there, Oh, he says he has to watch what he says. Okay. My bad. I'm, I'm tripping. Maybe I misquoted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, anti people got to watch the curse and that's all that's, that's what's so crazy about it too. And that that's why I'm doing more of the reactions and probably going to start limiting how many people I have on the panel because Man, it's hard to demonetize these videos when people get to cussing. I salute the anti though, man. You know, I ain't tripping. You know, you always welcome on the panel, even if even if you do cuss. You know, I ain't tripping on you. But we've been talking about this, y'all. The problem, the problem with sports is this right here, y'all. We just gonna get right to it. And and I and, and for me, I don't have to sneak this. I don't have to dodge and not say names. I can call the exact names out of the people that try to pull this this game on people. I was listening on Ticket's channel the other day. And I'm listening to all these old heads really trying to convince CJ on stuff about basketball. If you go back into this time, and if you go back into this time, when you have people like Chilltown, which Chilltown actually has a real a lot of really good basketball takes, but sometimes he gets pulled back to them old school narratives. All right. Then we know Fluent. Fluent is basically the white version of Ticket TV that just knows how to talk proper. Fluent, horrible basketball takes. Horrible knowledge of the game. Absolutely none whatsoever. Uh, he's just a grown up. He's just a grown up Marsh full of stats. And, and Marsh still has much better takes because he he removes his feelings from it so he can evaluate the game on a real level. It's just too many people bringing emotion from their era and then trying to bring it to our era. 
as if their version of the game was better than what we have today. There, there's absolutely nothing. There's very few things in world history, you guys. There's very few things in world history where I can go back to 1980 or even 1990 and say this was better then than it was now. There's there's no type of electronic. There's no type of sport. There's 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 literally nothing. I mean, if you really even think about it, kids are even smarter. Even if you just go to the little kids. Right. Kids nowadays are even more tech savvy, more smarter, able to pick up on things, more business savvy, more credit savvy. This is just a natural progression of everything. Everything as it progresses is just going to get better. People are going to figure out easier ways. They're going to find out more efficient ways to do almost everything. The problem is in the sport of basketball is too many people out there really trying to convince us that what we saw back then is superior to what we're seeing right now. They're trying to convince us that all this, this defense and uh, they're trying to convince us that these players, these so fundamental did it the right way. It's all lies, y'all. There's no sport. I don't care what sport you go to, whether it's like Babe Ruth was a great home run hitter. Babe Ruth is not hitting no home runs in today's game, y'all. That's a fact. Hank Aaron, great home, great, great hitter. As great as Hank Aaron was, you will not find any baseball player talking about Hank Aaron could come in today's game and he could hit. 1,900 home runs. Why is it only in the sport of basketball where these players can come from the 80s, they can come from the 90s, they can come from all these other eras, jump into this era, and do just otherworldly things that we've never seen before? Jordan could come into this era and score 50 a game. Magic could come into this era and get 15 assists per game. All these weird narratives, they just exaggerate everything. Every player from back then could come into this era because they say it's so much easier and all this, everything. So they, they, these are the claims that they make. But yet the game is easier. I want you, and this is the main question I want you out of, before we even get into the video, because we're going to be reviewing this video. It's only a five minute video. And then I'm going to be opening the chat up. I'm going to be bringing people up to talk about it. But it's just sad. It's just is only with this era. They, they believe that these old school players can literally just jump in today's game and do things 10 times better than what we've ever seen. And, and my number one question is, if the game is that much easier, if it's that much easier, how come y'all ain't done it? And just even double down on that, most of the people that say that, they kids can't even do it. They say it's all that much easier, but you can't even teach your kids the right way. If it's that much easier to get to the league, why don't you just tell your kids, well, we're just going to groom you into being a basketball player. This is the easiest way to get to 10, 15, 20 million. This is the easiest the game's ever been in NBA history, if it's so easy. You know, it's sad. Like, Mr. Moss doesn't have very many good takes. But it's sad when Mr. Moss has to be one of the first people to call Elder out. Well, Elder says he's 60 years old, still in these gyms, running with the youngsters because it's so easy. Why would you lie to us? Like people lie to us and tell us that they can go to these gyms and run with these guys. Like people forget we saw you play against Hitman X. Hitman X is probably one of the least athletic basketball players I've ever seen in basketball history. And Elder struggled with Hitman X. Hitman X probably dribbles a basketball 22, 23 times a year. And I'm talking about actual dribbles. And you struggle with Hitman X. But... But then when we have these conversations to, to gloss it up and to make it sound good, you get all of these old heads talking about how great their game is and what they can do and how great their game, they can still do this and they can outsmart these players. No, you can't. It ain't, it ain't as sweet as what people try to make it sound. And, and, and 
And then when you have very credible basketball minds like Gilbert Arenas speaking on it, calling the BS out, then all of a sudden people going to say Gilbert Arenas ain't credible. Now all of a sudden he ain't credible. See, it's so funny how when these basketball talking heads say something that they like, especially when it's like, for example, when Larry Bird said, I'm taking Kobe over LeBron, everybody ran with that. But then when I come out and say, well, Larry Bird said Scottie Pippen was the second best player in the 90s. Oh, no, nah, Larry Bird tripping. Nah, Larry Bird. Nah, I, nah he's just saying that because he don't like Jordan. Look at random clips saying this air is soft as hell. I know. See, random. And that's the thing. It's fine that you say that with the Tom and Jerry logo. It's fine that you say that. But how much money would you be? Like, I don't. Here's my thing right here. I can bet anybody who thinks it's easy to hoop against these youngsters. Right. If you are ever in Arizona, I will put a thousand dollars on the table. I will walk you to a gym, and if you are able to cook the youngsters that I put you in the gym with, then that's your $1,000. It'd be these people who can't hoop. They just say stuff about old eras, right? The reason why these older, the older talking heads exaggerate the game so much is because that's how the game was presented to them. Whenever you have somebody telling you that Jordan would come into this era and average 50 points per game, that's because that's how the game was presented to them in the 90s. The game was presented Air Jordan. He could jump these shoes and make you fly. Every video game that you played, every video game that you played, jumping over players, dunking over players, you could play double dribble. And when you went up for a dunk, the screen went gray and you was literally flying through the air for about 10 seconds before you dunk on somebody. The game was presented to them in an exaggerated fashion. That's the sad part about it. It was presented in a, in a very exaggerated fashion. Salute to Kobe in here. Salute to Pooty. Salute to SM. I see everybody in here. Salute to everybody watching on all the other platforms, too. I see everybody watching from FYF Sports Debates Live. Salute to y'all. King Bertha, facts. The exaggeration is ridiculous. I want to know, and, and, but I know where the exaggeration comes from. The 80s, going into the 90s, was an exaggerated era of basketball. Everything that Magic Johnson did, exaggerated. Like, people talk about Magic Johnson and his passing as if we've never seen passes get thrown like Magic Johnson's has thrown them. We, They make it seem like we've never seen anybody have the same court vision as Magic Johnson, which Magic Johnson was pretty damn good at what he did. But I don't want you to sit here and act like we haven't seen similar passers. Why is it so ridiculous when people actually compare Jokic's ability to pass to Magic's? Why is it that far-fetched? Why is it every time we compare a player today to a player to pass, we just, we just can't even compare them? It's just unfathomable to even compare the two things. They they always say, oh, he's on another rim. What, well, and my question is, well, what puts him on another rim? People just say stuff. Kendrick B Squad says, Lamont, you should know more. He says, I love and have immense respect for the 1970s, 60s, 50s, and 40s. They are so underrated. We're not, I'm not underrating them, Kendricks. See, my when I did my top 75 list, I was the only one to give each decade of basketball equal consideration. When I did my top 75, what did I say? I said, well, we're going to start from the 60s on up. Every 10-year span, I need the top 10 players from every 10-year span to give my top 75 balance so I don't overload my top 75 with players from the 2000s. That shows bias. I don't overload my, my top 10 list with players from the 90s, which would show bias. I gave it balance because I understood I'm, 
my mind is only limited to the games that I was able to see. So to give it balance, I split it up with decades. And then that forces you to study, okay, who and what players were considered the top 10 of their own decade. Right? I can look at George Mike and understand that this is when the game first started. This is when the game first started getting created. I can understand why he might have struggled in the context of how we see the game today. But then I can appreciate, okay, with what they understood the game to be back then, he was a great player. And then as the game advanced and we got the Oscars and the Bill, I understand that they understood the game to a certain level. And the game was looked at as entertaining to a certain level. And then the game advanced again. And then it took a different level of entertainment. So I understand with the different changes and different eras and how basketball was once just viewed as a sport. Then it became entertainment. Then it became media driven. So there's a lot of things that are impacting the changes that we see in the game. A truth teller, if I'm sad, here's the problem. See, y'all say these things and I have the easiest panel. I have the easiest panel for you to come up and explain yourself. But when I drop the link, all of a sudden, I got I got people saying that they in conference calls at nine o'clock at night for work. It happens every time I drop the link. So I'm not even going to drop the link again right now. I'm just going to get through with this video review, because every time I drop the link to get people up here who say that y'all always y'all you cleaning out the cat litter or something, you doing something weird where you don't have time to click the link, but you can listen and you can type and comment. That's the problem. I be I be trying. I literally invite other people onto the panel from other channels. They never pull up, but they listen because and I know they listen because every time I go to those channels, people are telling me what I said in my own video. Y'all got to stop, man. Y'all got to stop with it, man. It, it, it's sad. It's sad. Like it's sad when. You got people grew up watching the eighties and they refuse to give what they players that they see today credit. That's the saddest part about it. And then, then what, and here's the number one excuse for the illogical basketball talk. And, and y'all, this is the new excuse. Y'all before I go into this video, I want y'all to tell me if I'm wrong. This is the new excuse. It's the LeBron James fans that met, that made me this way. It's the LeBron James fans that made me. Hold on. A LeBron James fan can't corrupt your mind so much that you don't see basketballs normally. If a LeBron James fan can mess up your mental to the point where you just start saying stupid stuff, like these players from the 70s, 80s, and 90s could come into today's game and do the same thing, that's that, that. Come on, y'all. It's too, it's too many illogical takes. And then the saddest part about it is when I come with these questions, just like when I was on Player's Choice, y'all. Every time, every time, every time these same people, anytime they don't have an answer, they say you're trolling. Oh, get out of here. You trolling with that. Oh, that just that means you don't want to answer. When I consistently ask the question on player's choice, tell me about the 90s without mentioning Michael Jordan. Oh, you must be trolling. Well, tell me about the 90s. Tell me about the 90s without Jordan. Well, that, that's trolling, man. Stop. No, just tell me about the 90s without mentioning Michael Jordan. I, I ain't dealing with it. You a troll, troll, Mott. Oh, am I? So that that's how you dodge. That's the new way of dodging now. Tell me about these eras. See, I could tell you about what made the I could tell you what made the, the, the 80s exciting. It was a it was a wide array of talent that made the 80s exciting. It wasn't all levied on one person. And so you don't see one person so heavily overcompensated that everybody's labeling this person's the GOAT, and absolutely nobody in NBA history can ever be the GOAT again. You had a, such a wide array of talent, you didn't have to over-exaggerate with one player. The 90s was so watered down. 
that this is what happened with Michael Jordan. I understand that Jordan is the GOAT, but I will never say that Jordan is the GOAT and he's just, nobody's close and he can't be touched. And this is what you hear. Oh, LeBron can't catch him, play 20 years, can't catch him. Kobe, they, they just say these things. They say nobody can come close. That's the problem right there. So just a lot of people, a lot of lying. And then they get mad at me when I call it out. And then and the main thing they say, yo, you trolling. Oh, I hate these LeBron James fans. I, I don't even be talking about LeBron James. Like, and, and I see it in all my community posts. Y'all be seeing it too. Because some of y'all say the same things. I do a community post about something. Somebody, especially the dude named BG who be in my comments. I will do it the most. Rank. I did a community post about Katie and Kyrie. This man comes in and writes a 19-paragraph answer talking about LeBron James. I said, man, th th this was about KD and Kyrie. What is you doing? He was like, well, this all connects back to my answer. So my answer is KD. Oh, so your 19 paragraphs about LeBron means it's a lot of delusion, man. Y'all just go read my comments. Y'all see exactly what I'm talking about. It's crazy. Hold on. We, let me share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. He said, LeBron fans, random clip said LeBron fans are emotional. All right. Well, when I drop the link, I want you to come in here and explain to me how LeBron fans are emotional and how you're not. I, I want you to come in here and explain to me why LeBron fans are emotional, but whatever your take is has nothing to do with emotion. The fact that you're bringing up how emotional another fan base is in that sense, come on, man. I just call them delusional. They're not, they're not emotional. They're delusional. That's, and again, this is a product of the nineties. The nineties presented basketball in this exaggerated manner. There's nothing normal about when the, as the nineties presented basketball, look at the, look at the movies, look at the commercials, right? Look at, look at the video games. There was nothing normal about normal basketball. Everything was presented in an exaggerated manner. Even the dream team was presented to us in an exaggerated manner. A dream team who everybody say this is the most unstoppable compilation of talent we've ever seen. Yet these are all old players close to being out of their prime. Charles Barkley was the best player on that team. Gets no credit for it. Scottie Pippen was the best facilitator on that team. Gets no credit for it. They say this is this this compilation of old players was the greatest dream team ever assembled when it was it never was but they oversold it to us and now they have everybody believing that kate no other u.s olympic team beat that dream team even though we literally watched that dream team get beat by college players and then when you talk about them getting beat by college players oh why you bringing this up man why you bringing this up man this is what they do Get mad at me for just showing the facts. Everything about the, a lot of things about the 80s and 90s were oversold, especially going into the 90s when they didn't have much star power to market. Right? You couldn't market Hakeem. He wasn't very marketable. You couldn't market Patrick Ewing. He was, his face was just too gangly. He was too funny looking. Right. Who, who was there to market? You tried to market Penny, which actually that did very well, but then he got injured. Y'all didn't have much to market. You couldn't market Carl Malone. The people start digging them skeletons out the closet and now you have a 90s cancel culture going on. You couldn't market Dennis Rodman because... Y'all were extremely conservative out there. Y'all didn't go for the, the LGBTQ type of whatnot. What, what did y'all have to market? So y'all had to market up and hype up some shoes where y'all literally had kids thinking if you wear these shoes, you could fly. I'm not wrong. All right, y'all, let me play this video right here. Hold on. Let me make sure I add it to sound. Let 
We're going to get to it. We're going to listen to Gilbert Arenas' take on this as well. This video is titled, 80s NBA players cannot compete with today's NBA players. And I want you all to really listen to the things that Gilbert Arenas says in this video because he presents a number of facts. He says, can I donate 10 for a video? Yes, you can donate 10 for a video, but you got to give me something realistic that I can do. Last time you told me to go find a video that didn't even exist, Kobe. All right. Give me something that actually exists and I got you. All right, let's get to this video. I might stop it. I'm probably just going to let it play through for the full five minutes so you guys can just absorb everything that he's saying. The 80s basketball, right? It was tougher. Shut up. Let it go. 80s cannot compete with 90s, 2000s, and now. It is a pointless argument. Lenny cannot play basketball today, right? His defense does not work today. The things that you guys glorify, which is hard fouls, not better defense, yeah. hard fouls. If you look at the people who were brutally hurting people, they were not all defensive players. A defensive player is playing within the rules, stopping you. Yeah. Like, like on the offensive end, like if we can play offense how they play defense, just give me the ball, let me run with it and go score. It's illegal. It's illegal. But if I can do that, I can say I'm the best scorer in the league. You're just clotheslining players. You're just hurting players. And that's I would want the less talented of the talent. <laughs> That's it. The talent, like, but you're not going to find your Dennis Rodman mindsets today. And I mean Dennis Rodman mindsets, not on the court, off the court. You're not going to find players sitting there, leaving the gym, no shower, going to the club, clubbing all night and got a game tomorrow. You're not doing that today. With no shower? Right, uh -huh. you're not doing that today. You're not in, you're not in Vegas all night gambling and then flying in that that morning to play a basketball game. You're those these players today are not doing. These players today are sitting in the gym. They will mollywop your asses, you 80s for real. Y'all acting like y'all was in the gym six, seven hours a day. You weren't. Stop the bullshit. Stop acting like your guys were this glorified and you're sitting here learning game plays, learning habits, and you guys are happy alcoholics. <laughs> Today, you guys are all yellow-eyed, looking like <laughs> aliens out there. <laughs> yellow-eyed bandits. You just, like, no, I'm serious. No, but th this is the thing. If you talk about Will, and, and we know Will more for the off-the-court stuff than average of 50, but when he was playing with the Sixers, he had like a nightclub in New York, Harlem, Brooklyn, somewhere. I just remember my pops telling me and he was going and turning up every single night. So things are different for this day. And then we also have more resources, more technology. It's just more advanced. Obviously, nights are shooting, not playing in the chucks. So you got to just take each period for what it is. Yeah, take it for what it is and leave your little goofy asses in your era. But, but like, oh, if, if, yeah, yeah. If, he, if, uh, if, if LeBron was in our era, you know, we would stop him. LeBron's like 260. Bro, first of all, you smell like gin, all right? He's running right through, right, he's running right through you. I mean, come on. Look, when I came into the NBA, when I, 2001, cocaine, boom, out of the socks. Boom, boom, boxing out, cocaine patch fall right out of the socks. Now, you got to think, let us think about this. Think about how high or dumb you have to be to play in an NBA game with it in your sock, not in the locker, not in your bag, in your sock in the game. <laughs> on the bench, <laughs> on the bench, the 14th and 15th player, Gatorade bottle, two Bud Lights, fill it up, drink it by the fourth quarter, sound like fans. Right? Like, and you telling me that you guys in the 80s, bro, think y'all are going to guard players today in the whole ideal is we fouled you? And you got to think about, when we're talking about hacking, I think um, Isaiah Thomas said this. He said, and he's right, the bad boys 
fouled Michael Jordan. I didn't foul Michael Jordan like that. Joe Dumars didn't foul Michael Jordan like that. No, the players who actually played defense did not. The average, like when you talk about the Gary Paytons, when you're talking about the Scotty Pimpers, the Michael Jordans, um, those guys who were defensive players, they, they the reason they were great at defense is because they were playing within the rules of the game. The players who just hacked the shit out of you, <laughs> those guys are not considered defensive players. They're just hackers, right? So you're telling me that, you know, you're just going to hack me and I'm going to shoot free throws? Well, like, how does, like, uh, if it didn't work in the 80s, why the fuck is it going to work against us? Like, it's just, it's just, the concept is just so stupid. I appreciate you for saying this, Gil. They just, they just, they just stupid. All heads are gonna come for you, but nah, they, 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 they probably they're gonna when they probably respond, they're gonna be drunk anyway. They can't, they can't drunk. This is eighties is just a bunch of drunks. So, yeah, hey, I've said the same things, y'all. This is what's so crazy. When we talk about defense, I've I've literally sat here and told y'all time and time again, fouling a player is not defense. The threat of a hard foul is something that a good player will invite. If you want to foul me and let me get my numbers up because you want to send me to the free throw line to get to get more points, so be it. It, it is not that big of a deal. When we look at players today, they they fighting tooth and nail to try to find ways to finesse and get to the free throw line, right? They trying to turn good defense and make good defense today look like a foul, trying to sell it to the ref just to get the free points at the free. That's how valuable it is to get to the free throw line. So you telling me back in an era where y'all say guys with just hard foul, that players today would not love playing in an era like that where y'all just going to be trash defenders. You're not going to try to play on the ball. You're not going to try to stop me. you just going to hard foul me. Which it really ain't that hard of a foul. And I can go to the free throw line and I get free points all day because y'all don't know how to play defense. And you only got so many of them to give before the coach calls off the wolves and says, hold on, we ain't a goddamn double bonus. And we just started the second quarter. Y'all got to stop fouling. So it gets to a point where you can't even do it anymore. But again, even when we talk about the hard fouls, and I'm about to drop the link, even when we talk about the hard fouls, what, what do they do? They exaggerate the hard fouls. They try to tell us that these hard fouls was the most scariest thing in the world. That no player today would drive in the lane if they saw if they saw Bill Lambeer, I want y'all to really think. What would Ja Morant do if he saw Bill Lambeer standing under the rim? I want y'all to really think about the end result of that play. I want y'all to really think about the end result of LeBron James driving towards Bill Lambeer. I want you to think about that. And I, I can even use a 38-year-old LeBron James. I want y'all to really think about Zion Williamson driving towards Rick Mahorn. I want y'all to really think about the real end outcome of that. Of that. I, I want y'all to think about Jason Tatum driving in the lane, full head of steam towards some of these guys that you guys consider or claim to be great defenders. In this era where y'all say all these players are soft, even though we watch on a night in and night out basis, we see some physical basketball and we know we see physical basketball because as soon as some, as soon as, and I want y'all, all y'all got, all y'all got to do is look at how the older generation was talking about LeBron's elbow on Isaiah Stewart. Oh, that ain't, that ain't for the game. That ain't part of the game. Hold on. It's just a little blood. Oh, so now you mad because he threw a little elbow because he because he actually got physical? 
Because he kind of he trying to fight through the contact because people grabbing and hold him all the time. But he elbows somebody. You see a little bit of blood. It was the it was the older fan base crying the most about that. Oh, that wasn't good for the game. He shouldn't be doing it. He should get suspended. So when you see a little bit of blood, y'all get to crying. And he said it was more hard fouls in the playoffs back then. And if you hard fouled in the playoffs a whole bunch, and this is how I know the Detroit Pistons was a good defense because you guys tried to dumb their defense down to just hard fouling when they actually were a great defensive team that didn't need to foul. And because of the highlights that you guys like to push on everybody, the only thing that people know about the bad boys defense is the hard foul. That's the only thing. Y'all don't talk about how innovative Chuck Daly got when he would run those quarter uh, quarter court traps, right? When he would when he would run those three quarter court traps, right, to evade the illegal defense rule and trap early. So when 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 Chuck Daly did some very creative things to make that team elite defensively, y'all don't talk about that. Y'all try to convince us. That these players can't play today because of the hard foul, which is something that's not what Chuck Daly actually even taught. There's no basketball coach in the world that's going to preach hard foul, hard foul, hard foul. Jared Thomas says, stop it. MJ got his ass kicked. No, he didn't. What you see is you see about the nine clips of him getting hard fouled and you dumb that down to as them being physical. No, when when the Pistons beat the Bulls, they did a great job of making it difficult on Jordan. When we look at Joe Dumars' defense on Michael Jordan, when you look at the, t- the team defense that they were able to play on him, right? Now, Jordan put up so many shots, he's still going to get to his 30, but they didn't make it easy. And until Michael Jordan got superior help, he did not experience any winning. It wasn't about the fouls. We know it wasn't about the fouls. It was about Jordan just needed more talent. Because when he got more talent, what voila, what happens? They started to win. But when y'all talk about the Detroit Pistons defense with Chuck Daly and them, why don't y'all actually talk about what made them defenses great? Don't give me Bill Lambeer with hard foul you. Nobody feared Bill Lambeer. Bill Lambeer got scored on plenty of times. Nobody was in fear of no Bill Lambeer. Bill, Bill Lambeer was not looked at as some defensive juggernaut. Rick Mahorn wasn't either, even though he was a pretty good defensive player. But nobody feared driving at these guys. These are all lies that y'all just say these things. All because you can go back to one or two plays where you might think you see a hard foul. These are the same hard fouls we can see in today's game. Jared Thomas says, 90s basketball was like jail ball. No, it wasn't. Uh, No, it was not. See, and Jared, you sit there and watch highlights all day. 90s basketball was a very, I'm going to give you, it was one of the slowest paces in NBA history with the illegal defense, and it was an era dominated by ISO scores. If your team had a good ISO score, like the Knicks, like the Bulls, like the Rockets, like the Utah Jazz, any team with good ISO scores could thrive because you slow the pace down to a bore. So you have 79, 85 game, scoring games. So you slow it down to a bore and you ISO your best player as many times as possible. ISO your best player to the point where everybody else think that this player is just being a ball hog. What did all of the Knicks players say about Patrick Ewing? He was a ball hog. He wouldn't pass the ball. But this is what they did by design. Y'all can't, y'all can't, see, and then the problem with what Jared says is, see, and this is where the older generation, this is where they mess up. Because they'll tell us all these things about the game. They'll tell us all of these things about the game. It was all physical. And then they'll say, you need to go back and watch. 
And, and you know what happens, y'all? We actually go back and watch. And then when we go back and watch, we come back seeing it's even worse than what we thought. I, I, I will always use this example with bees. I've never been one to watch a ton of Moses Malone. I knew of Moses Malone's numbers. I knew about the MVPs, all this. Go back. B said, go back and watch. You better go back and watch Moses Malone. I said, you know what? Let me go back and watch me some Moses Malone. I will now I think less of Moses Malone than I did before after watching him play. Because the film don't lie. It, it, I'll, I'll put it to you like this, you guys. And I'll give you a good example. This happens in Indiana a ton. Indiana high school basketball is separated by classes from 4A to 1A. So there's a, there, there's a small school in Indiana called Lafayette, Jeff. They had a guy on that team on a, on a 2A school averaging 37 points per game destroying all the competition. Everybody, coaches are coming to watch him play. People see the video. Problem, he ain't getting no offers. He's scoring 37 points per game. He's averaging eight rebounds. He has the nine assists. He has the numbers. He has the dominance. He's dominating his competition. How come he ain't getting no major D1 offers? But then when you go to Indianapolis, right, about 100 miles away, oh, it's a kid at Ben Davis. Oh, he averaging nine points per game, six rebounds, but he getting offers from IU. He getting offers from Kentucky. How does it happen like that? See, the video exposes more of the truth than what people might lead you to believe. See, because the video exposes the fact that this kid going to this 2A school in Indiana, he's only scoring 37 points per game, probably because the competition is inferior. And there's a whole bunch of other factors. But when you actually watch and break down this game, I don't know if that will work against high level players. But then when you go to Indianapolis and you see all these 4A teams fighting and battling it out, and you see a guy just averaging nine points per game, but he has a whole bunch of talent on his team, so he can't get all the minutes, he can't get all the shots. But you can look at him and be like, hold on, I can use that. That'll work. That'll translate. So when I go back and watch Moses Malone, that won't translate to today's game. That won't work in today's game. That won't work. Now, you guys can try to sell me the numbers all you want. The problem is, y'all told me to go back and watch. And so now that I've looked at them with my own eyes, these numbers is really a product of an inferior competition. These numbers is really just a byproduct of you having a better team and all these other teams just having inferior players at your same position. And it just won't translate. So when I say that, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all need to stop telling people to go back and watch. When y'all tell people to go back, just like with J.J. Reddick, when he was talking about Bob Cousy. And, 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 and then one older commentator said, oh, you need to go back and watch you some Bob Cousy. Go back and watch you some Bob Cousy. And you're going to come back thinking Bob Cousy couldn't make a high school team today. Go back and watch you some Jerry West and some Pete Maravich. And you're going to come back thinking that those guys would struggle making a D3 college team. Go ahead and keep going back and watching. Or you can just give these players credit and praise for being great in their own era. Link is in the chat, man. Hit that link if you want to pull up. Link is in the chat. Just hit that link if you want to pull up and cook on this topic. All right, we're not gonna be good. We're gonna we're not gonna be live all night talking about this. We, we y'all heard what y'all heard what Gilbert Arenas had to say. He says yes, thank you. That's another myth. 
this dude, Mad Dog, he's trying to sell people on the narrative that Larry Bird is the best shooter of all time. I've heard people try to sell people the narrative that Reggie Miller is the best shooter of all time. If he shot more threes, if he shot more threes, he would be, no, he would not be like Steph. We, we watched the game. We saw Reggie had no handle. We knew he couldn't shoot off the dribble. We knew he struggled to drive and finish at the rim. He was a catch and shoot guy that consistently moved. That was his strength. What up, Pootie, man? What, what, what you got on this, man? Did the Gilbert Arenas talk some sense into you? Yo, the fact that you called the 90s cop inferior is crazy. What did I say about 90s cop? Bro, you just said inferior. I was talking about Moses Malone. Oh, he probably was. Nah, but listen, what do you think? Well, he, Mo- he played in the 80s. He played you, a little bit in the 90s. What do you think he would do in this era? He's Andre Drummond in this era. You can't compare most to Andre Drummond. Though. Well, I, the, here's the problem. Hey, Sax, Sax, you got some background noise, so I'm gonna mute you, and uh, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna unmute you when I come to you. The problem is, I watched Moses Malone. So, and, and the thing is, Pooty, and I can pull up the clips if you really want me to pull up Moses Malone highlights. And we can play them and watch them together. And there's no way you will be able to reasonably walk away from this conversation and say, that's not Andre Drummond. Do you do you want to see the highlights? I mean, listen, Andre Drummond is a good player, but I wouldn't compare him to Mike. Well, why? Because remember the game advanced. Players are players are better. So to see a guy like Andre Drummond, who's struggling in today's game, be able to do what Moses Malone was able to do 30, 40 years ago is not that surprising. We ain't even got to go back that far, far, Lamont. We can even just go back all the way to remember um, Jaleel Okafor? Yes. He was like the third pick, pick back in the day. He was a traditional center and he got mopped out, mopped out the league in what, like a couple seasons? But J- Jaleel Okafor would have been a beast in the nineties. In the nineties, yes. No, I'm t- I'm talking about when he was in this era. Cause my, no, I thought but, your whole thing was no. I'm like, just saying that's how the game advanced. That's how much it's advanced. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. So I, I don't understand where people are coming from. Like I, I'm not taking nothing away from Moses in his own era. Dominant. People need to stop trying to bring Moses Malone over to this era. And then try to say equally dominant. I got two eyes, man. My thing is just compare guys to what they did in their era because we got different rule changes that happened. Um, There was illegal zones back in the day. There were times, you know, you could only play your man, you know, technically straight up. There were times you couldn't even throw a simple double team team back in the day. Pace of play was different. Like, we got to take into account, like, not only all the rule changes, but, you know, how guys also came up as well. If you came up into an era where technically where technically flopping is not considered an actual skill, you know, that's what you're going to do because that's just what your game is predicated on and that's what you would have to do to actually win. So it's also just based off of, you know, how you grew up with the game and whatnot. Heck, I know guys still, even to this day, back in the 80s and 90s, that when they go out to the court, you know, all they do is just want, all, all, all they want to do is just shoot mid-range jumpers and then drive to the basket. Meanwhile, you have this current generation when, when they get out to the park, all they want to do is just shoot threes. So like I said, it just depends on how you erase. But but, you know, but the problem with that, Chris, is that was, I don't those see are, that. Those are smaller shots. Those are smaller shots. I don't see that when I hoop. I don't see guys just wanting to shoot threes. I don't know where people – when people say that all these kids do is shoot threes, you must have never picked up a basketball in Chicago. I when I'm never, in the gym, when, I see it. When I go, if you go hoop any, go to any YMCA in Chicago, nobody shoots. Everybody drives. Everybody drives to the point where you be like, dang, kick it out to a shooter one time. So what do y'all talk about? Like, it's, it's just based on where you hoop. Like when you go to Indiana, that's a state that just tends to have more fundamental players. So you're going to see more of the shooters. You're going to see more fundamental. When you go to New York, you're going to see the handles. 
right? You go to Chicago, you're going to see the drivers, the slashers, the hard-nosed players, the defenders. When you go to Cali, you're going to see the more finesse players, more skilled bigs, things of that nature. It's just basically where you your demographic, right? So people try to try to say this era is just shooting threes. That's still a lie. If, if I'm a coach and I need to recruit a guy that's a slasher, you can recruit that. You can it's, it's out there. It's it's an abundance of guys that are slashers. It's a abundance of them. What so about the th- th- what about the three point specialists? Where you got to go to get them? Well, you got to go find them. And usually, where do you find your shooters? You can find your shooters, the Indiana types, the California types, maybe sometimes in Arizona. Washington has a ton of shooters. So there's yeah, there's, the there's certain demographics that where you can find anything that you want, a little bit of anything. So it's, so it's not all these young players are copying Steph. Ain't no all people copying Steph. That, that's not true. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. But but don't you at least agree that Steph Curry, not in terms of changing the game with the impact, but don't you think he's had a bit more predicated on people shooting the three ball a lot more, though? No, what, what Steph Curry helped people understand, the value of the three-point shot. And so – this is what I tell people when I play pickup ball because a lot of people play pickup ball with these rules. Most people play twos and ones to 15 or 11, something to that degree. Sometimes it's different depending on what state you're in. What I, you know what I tell my team? I said, kill the three-point line. That's worth double. I said, if they make twos, they're going to beat us. I said, if they make layups, they ain't beating us. You ain't scoring no 15 layups in a pickup game. But I said, if they get to making them two-point shots, they make four They make four twos, and that's halfway there. The game, dang, they're over. Right? So what I'm saying is, with the three-point shot being worth more, I think teams have figured out uh-huh. the value of, I can miss more threes. As long as I make a certain percentage of them, I'm going to outpace you. That's so true. Teams who strategize this are just playing the numbers. It's only and it actually yeah, is but... winning, it's actually winning out. Like college coaches are saying, well, if my team puts up 25 threes and we make 36% of them, 32% of them, well, generally we could put up enough points to outpace this team, even if we're on having an off night. Now imagine yeah. if we're having a good shooting night from the three-point line. You don't stand a chance. Yeah, but what you gotta understand is that the three-pointer is a lot harder to shoot than the mid-range. Well, the three pointer is first of all, it spaces the defense out, so it's harder to defend, yeah, I mean especially it. if you got a team that can move the ball. So, if you have a team that don't know how to move the ball, like we saw the Lakers early in the year, of course, the three point line gonna look tough. But if you got a team that knows how to move the ball, that knows to get up and down the court, like the Golden State Warriors, like last year, well, it's gonna be a little harder guarding that three point line. So, Ooh. it's not as easy as what people say it is. It's, 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 it, and, and you got the corner three, which is the shortest three on the floor. So teams understand that now. So corner threes are much easier than top of the key threes. Right? So there's advantages everywhere on the court. You just have to find a way to pick it out. Hey, Lamont, how much shorter is that corner, you think? It's not much shorter, but it is the shortest. Out, all the spots on the three-point line, the corner three is the shortest. So that's why they say if you want to take the easiest three, the easiest three is always from the corner. It's the shortest. It's the shortest three. I wish. Yeah, but okay. Ben Simmons are new there. Be too scared. But this is why teams are generally telling their bigs, go learn, develop your three-point shot. It makes you more valuable. To be a stretch big now, you're invaluable. To be a Listen, 3 and D right? guy, you're invaluable. You're going to make a ton it- of money. Because if cause you all right. you disrupt the defense, you completely thwart the defense when you can make the three. It just even even if you make it at a thirty four to thirty six percent clip, you stretch the defense out. Now Listen, you make, now right. you make it now you make your team hard to defend. If a big wants to shoot like one or two threes per game, that's fine. But four, five, six, that's mad excessive. Real talk. No, it's not excessive if you're shooting thirty six percent, thirty five percent from the three point line. Yeah, but you are big. Go in the post. Post up. Okay, but you know, that, okay, that's what that's you it. relegate bigs to. The thing is, it's easier for bigs to shoot threes. Why? Because it's harder to contest. They see the rim. You can't put your hand in front of their eyes. So it's easy for bigs to shoot the three because you can't get into their line of vision. It's so also why not easy. take it? It's also easy for him to get hurt. Landed. Why, why do you think Kevin Durant is so efficient? Because he's a seven-footer and you can't contest it. 
Yeah, but he's not a legitimate big. It don't matter. He's seven what? feet tall. How is that That's not legitimate? Tall with guard skills. Yeah, I know, but he's not a post up back to the back. No, 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 no. He's oh, not a post up because he didn't let some stupid coach in high school say, you're going to be back to the basket. And he developed and evolved his game and became one of the greatest weapons on a basketball court that we've ever seen. If he grew up in the <clears> 90s, somebody would have said, yeah. go get on the block. And they would have limited his skill set to being back to the basket. They would have told him, man, you're skinny. This, is, small, this is where Chris Weber, like when you talk about players that tra- change the game, cr- talk. think about Chris Weber. Because Don Nelson... He saw it in Chris Webber before it happened. He said, if I put you at the five, can't nobody in this era guard you. Yeah, but KD didn't come up with that. He had to see Biggs do it before he did it. So Hold on. Okay, who did it before KD? KD. Who, who, who did it before KD? KD? Who did if, it before KD? If, K, if, if, Dirk, if Dirk wasn't doing it, if guys like Rasheed Wallace wasn't shooting. Tracy McGrady. Bro, hey. These dudes are Like I foot, said, man. these dudes. No, first of all, nobody's done it like KD. Not like KD. No, 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 no. KD is one one of a kind. Dirk is not a better offensive player than Kevin Durant. What? I said a better three. Nah, you capping, bro. You capping. Dirk is not. Wait, 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 wait. What? Did you say that? Hold on, Dirk. Hold on, Dirk wasn't shooting threes before KD. Bro, you cannot compare Dirk and KD offensively. It's not. Oh my god, bro. No, no, no. He politicking right now. Dirk was back. He politicking. Was back to the basket. What KD is doing. Dirk was doing that before we've seen KD doing it. He just don't have to handle. Dirk, 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 was, shooting off the Dirk was not shooting off the dribble. Dirk no. was not shooting five feet beyond the three-point line. Dirk was not, oh. you know, Dirk was strictly back to the basket in the mid post, turn oh, around, man. fade away with that one knee up, yeah, he or he was catching defense, shooting from the three-point He point did his job exactly. as a big man. He did his job as a big no, man. No, you, you, you can't define what a big man is supposed to do. You a can't guard man, Dirk just like you, you Your game, Dirk. when you hoop, y'all, your game is limited to your skill set. If all you can do is go back to the basket, I don't care if you're six five. Then that's all you're going to be able to do. So, so your height does not determine what you do on a basketball court. Your how much work you put into your game determines mm-hmm. that. So Lamont, let me ask you a question: Are you saying that them dudes back in the eighties and nineties? Are you saying that they weren't skillful enough to shoot? No, the what I'm saying is. They, they didn't know enough the about the game. They didn't value they didn't, the three ball. Back they didn't then, know enough back. about the game to but understand. That's not their fault, though. They it, I, I'm not blaming them, but I'm just telling you this is one of the reasons why you can't take players from that era and stick them to this era and act like what you saw them doing back then would work today. They so were Lamont, clamped up. I, so Lamont, so I want to ask you a last question. What happens in 30 years from now when we say that about this? It's gonna, the game is going to change again. again. It's going to change again. So Larry Absolutely. Bird would have destroyed this era? No. Larry Bird oh, my God. Era, we're gonna, hold on. We're going to look back. Yeah, you politicking. You're yes. politicking. Hold on. We're going to look back and say, wow, LeBron James couldn't even shoot yes. his own defense. Wow. Yes. My we're nephew's doing that right now. He's six. I agree. I agree. Correct. They're going to look at LeBron and his three point shooting. They're going to play in my generation. They're going to say, How does this dude, six eight skill like this? He can't even shoot threes, bro. They're going to say that. No, he's not. Because he was fine. picked to come into the league. Uh, and besides, the league. zone has a weakness anyway. Yeah, you, if you can't shoot, yeah. That's what hey, happened man. in 2011. Everything has a weakness. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on hey, man, you sound like the dude from Godfather. Check this, now. Out. Check this out. When we talk about 2011, that has a lot more to do than LeBron James missing shots. Generally, NBA players, especially the stars, only miss shots because of excellent defense. Well, I would and how, I'll be real with y'all. And, and, they and how do we know that the, the Dallas Maverick team was a great defense? Well, I can swear they, did the they, same they, thing they beat the defending <laughs> champions. They yeah. beat the defending champions Eric and Paul swept them. Bro, Bro was one for four in the fourth quarter. That's not even a question. Okay, you know, wait, wait, wait. Do you know what? Okay, hold on. Tell me how many points Kobe, Kobe scored in them two closeout quarter? games. It was the same thing. Bro. He scored twenty. Game, this is game six. He scored seventeen, no. I think. No, he, he no, scored. No, hold on. In the two, in the two close. No, there was no over. game six. Was no game it was only four. Oh, my fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. Hold on. Game four. What? What did he score in the last closeout game when they got swept? Twenty-two. No, seventeen in both games. Yeah. Well below his average. This is this is the defending champion Kobe Bryant, who was the best player in the league at the time. This who this who got swept by the Mavericks as well. So let's not act like this Maverick yeah, team not, was just some just pushover. Yeah, it was a great team. But Kobe went outside. I will give you that. I will give you that. 
The no, thing, I don't. The thing if you're gonna give it to about, me, then just give me. Dallas Mavericks their yeah. credit for being yeah, a great bro, defensive Lamar, unit. Lamar, can I no, no, no. So how they the played, thing is, Lamar, can bro, I say this? Nine, like, hold on, they went nine men deep, man. They had nine guys wait, playing over 15 minutes, man. Wait, let, who, let, who, let me just say this. Like every the Dallas time Mavericks had nine guys. Hold on, let 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 Ben and go real quick. Yeah, real quick. Every time you guys bring up 2011, you're ethering yourselves if you're a fan of Kobe because he did poorly as well. Just saying. But you're acting oh, like no. it never existed. That's crazy. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna. Did, did I'm not gonna say that Kobe was bad. Hey, yeah, I didn't even bring up 2011. Hold on, that that'd be like me saying, "Suck this player did play didn't have a good game against the, the 04 Pistons." Well, oh, the yeah, goddamn no, 04 Pistons was a great defense. There's a lot of players they gave headaches, stars and role players alike. Like the, that's what great defenses do. The I will give the Mavs, all four pitches they credit. The 2011 Mavs just were a great defense. They also had 57 wins. They also were a really good team. They also had a star in their own right. They also had a team full of depth, a mix of veterans and youth, and they could defend their ass off. But nobody want to give them credit. People just get so thirsty because they don't know how to talk basketball. They want to get thirst so thirsty to say, oh, LeBron choked. Well, you know what? You can maybe add a little element of that, but I like to actually give defenders credit for what they do. When you hey, slow Lamar. it down a good player, especially in a seven-game series, that's great defense because yeah, you are game. not stopping great players in this in today's game. The way this game is, it's extremely hard to stop the best players. And when you are able to successfully do it, that's defense. That's generally not the player. All I wanted to say was was that Eric Spolstra got out coached severely in that series because the fact that they tried to make LeBron James a facilitator and not score, but also LeBron just couldn't shoot either. So, well, yeah, I mean, Col- listen, Kobe against that Dallas team, he averaged twenty three. LeBron averaged sixteen. I mean, he he was able to shoot in that in that defense. So they still lost, bro. bro they got, yeah, they got twenty three is more than sixteen. Hold on, twenty three is more than sixteen. He also got, what are we talking about here? Hey, what was no, no, no. Hold on, Kobe averaged twenty three. LeBron didn't did even get swept. That. No, Kobe oh. had like one good game in a whole series. Did they just yeah, went twenty three in that series. He didn't yeah. have any. Yeah, how much those Hold on, he's second best player. Averaged thirteen points in that series. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Mac. Mac. Hold on, Mac. What you're doing is you're taking that game one where Kobe yeah. scored thirty six right. and inflated his average, and you're trying to make <laughs> it, it seem like he played generally good. He actually played from after game one where they lost. Was that was that worse game up? Hold on, Mac. Hold on, Mac. Where they get? Hold on. It don't <laughs> matter. Hold on, Mac. What I'm saying is this. That's all I'm saying. Mac, he got hold on. Breath. What does it matter? Hold on, Ben and E. Hold on one second. Sorry, I'm saying this. That 36. What did it equate to? It equated to a loss, just like games two, three, and four. It didn't matter. You know why that 36 didn't matter? Because they were going up against an elite defense. That's why that 36 didn't matter. That's why they lost every dang game in that series. And then they wore on Kobe so much in the last two games that he only could get 17 points up in the last two games. But y'all don't say, y'all don't say Kobe, oh, y'all don't say, man, he underperformed. What y'all try to do then is y'all try to completely hide the playoffs. Y'all no, say, oh, the do playoffs that. don't count. I mean, he it's didn't have just the finals. No, Mac, I, I know all the tricks. But y'all no, try to say y'all listen. try to say it's the finals record that matter. The, the, Miami the was favored though. Matter. Listen, listen, listen. Hold on. If Kobe, Kobe Bryant was had favored another, it too. Listen, he choked, Kobe, bro. Just on. say if he Kobe, choked. Just like if you Kobe want to say LeBron choked, say Kobe but choked. But hold on. But listen, listen. It listen. Kobe didn't have a Dwayne Wade on his hip. Kobe at, had. Bro, they were the defending bro, champs, bro. bro. Exactly. He brought back the same team. Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. The man had Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh on his side. What you're saying? Team. Hold on, hold on. I don't care. Hold on. Kobe, Kobe had the defending champs behind his back. Yeah, no, hold on. Kobe is the defending champ. It is no S on the end of that. He what do you mean? Co- oh, what? Uh, wait, what? I don't know about that. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me ask you this. Hey, 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 Mac, Jack, Mac, 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 Jack. It's a one man show. Mac, let me ask you this. Okay, if it's just a one man show, man. I don't know about that. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Let me ask Mac a question. Hey, Mac, Mac, one question, Mac. Mac, one question. Can I say one thing? You can hold on. He didn't even Dragon. play with a top 75 guy. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on I got what? one question Tell for you. Gasol, get out of here. Tell hold Gasol. On, hold on, Mac. Where's Tell Gasol? Hold on, Mac. Mac, hold on. One question for you. Okay, sir. The question is this. If Kobe could do it by himself, then how come he didn't do it with Kwame Brown? Kwame Brown? What? Yeah. Bro yeah. said Kwame Brown. 
no, no, no. Because hold on, you you he, just said right. hold on, you just literally told Wait, me out your I mouth. Play for the Washington Bullets. Hold on, hold on, Matt. You just told me out your mouth. Kobe is the one responsible for them championships, and it wasn't the help around them. So if it had nothing to do with the help around them, then how come he didn't have the same success with Smush Parker? And well, Kwame Brown and those guys. Well, well because listen, the difference is Kobe didn't have he, mm. those guys are not good role players. At least with the Lakers, he had no, man. Role oh, so, so Kwame the role Brown players, was a bust. Hold on, so the role players. Yeah, do Kwame matter. Brown, you're acting like this. This is an Anthony no, Bennett. No, Mac, Mark, Mark, Mac, you missing Wait, my Mac, point? Mac, Mac, Mac. Hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. I got this one. I got this one. You missing my point? You can't attribute the entire championship to Kobe when he wins, but then when they lose. That's the only time that you decide to blame the role players. Well, because so why don't you just dole out? Why don't you just dole y'all out? Y'all do that with LeBron. Hold on, People do no that with LeBron. Hold on. First of all, Pooty, Pooty, you are on the wrong channel saying y'all and LeBron. So this are you not wrong, a LeBron? This fan? is the wrong channel for that. I, I thought you were LeBron. You're not a LeBron sexual? I thought, I'm sorry, man. I thought you were. Uh, okay, I mean. It, I wouldn't go as far as calling no. that. He's not bro, that. Like, no, just because no. you're a LeBron fan don't mean he not. Oh, Mac, he, what I'm just, saying is on, this. Bro, we, I just don't. That. I don't go for – it's not even just LeBron. I just don't go for people lying on any of these players. Exactly. When you lie on LeBron, when you lie on Pippen, when you lie on Draymond Green, I'm right there. Okay, well, I'm just assessing the game. Listen, all not, I think but, is – But you don't have a very good assessment of the game. Well, but here's if the, the only thing, thing though, that you can do is give Kobe credit when he wins, but then when he loses, it's no, Kwame no, no, Brown's no. fault. I give Kobe credit. Listen, hey, Lamar, I give him, can I ask I Mac a question real quick? All I'm saying is that – if we're gonna compare LeBron to the Kobe narrative, we're right? not who, who we're compare not comparing. Hold on, but somebody, hold on, somebody, hold on, somebody you just made all that up in your head. Nobody <laughs> brought up Kobe. the Dallas Mavericks in the 2011 year. That's, That's not comparing. Bro. What? No, what we're talking bro, about. Bro, he is played how, like garbage, bro. No, no, it, fan it, it, it had that. nothing to do. Like, for, what I'm trying on, to tell you, Pixie Mac. Hold on, Mac. But Mac, you missed the entire point. My entire point of this right there was, how about if we understand that that Dallas Maverick team took out two of the greatest players we've ever seen, then maybe it had more to do with that D Dallas Maverick team being great as opposed to those guys just choking. It's, Nobody's going to walk around. Hold on, Mac. Hold on. There's no two fucking two-way street. Nobody walks around and says Kobe choked in 2011. Right? Exactly. In the same right, you should not walk around and say LeBron choked. You should give credit to that Dallas Maverick team for being great because they knocked out some of the greatest players in NBA history on that playoff run. Well, Lamont, but but, but y'all so thirsty to say LeBron choked. Y'all would say LeBron choked, but then absolutely forget that Kobe got swept and yeah. they were the defending champions. Yeah, but hold and on. then you have to eat your words as a Kobe fan no, because now you listening. have to backtrack and you have to say Kobe choked. Listen, so, all the Kobe no, fans. No, 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 there's no listening. Your, your next words need to be this. If you're going to say LeBron choked, didn't Your next Kobe sentence choked. needs to be that Kobe Bryant choked as well. Exactly. But, but listen, that's what I was going to no. say. No, are you going to say that Kobe Bryant choked? Bro, I said that 10 years ago. No, no, no. Tell me You're right now. You're not saying that now. Bro, I've said when it first happened. Did Kobe Bryant choke? They, they all choke. The whole, no, no, no. The whole Did Kobe off. Bryant choke? They lost four oh straight God. games. No, no, no. Did Kobe Bryant choke? Bro, just let it out. No, no, okay, no, 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 Just like you said, oh LeBron choked. I want you to say Kobe Bryant choked. He had 36 in game one. I, 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 game one. No, 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 Minute of that game one in 2011 or, when or the Lakers just, were facing off against or, Dallas. Or you can skate around all of that and what just about say the, the Dallas players? Mavericks was What about great. Andrew Bynum pushing uh, J.J. Barrera in the, in the fucking side? We don't talk about all that. That wasn't to the end when they was getting walked Yeah, down. but they, he was playing like shit the whole series, bro. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now just say if we're going to be technical, Bynum did quit. Okay. Exactly. Hold on. Bynum did quit. No. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Chris. Hold on, Chris. Hold on, Matt. Yeah. Mac just said Kobe did it by himself the year before. I don't exactly. want to hear you blaming no Bynum. It goes two way street, man. No, 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 no I don't no, want to no, hear listen, you blaming Mac. nobody else. You, no, no, you okay, just so gave all, all the credit to Kobe for winning. 
No, no, you didn't say it was a team sport. Oh, now it's a team won. sport. <laughs> wow. You just gave all the credit to Kobe. Now it's a team sport. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's how it works. When Kobe does great, he gets the credit. But when the, the team does bad, oh, you know, those guys but, get and, oh, and now we can flip that same wow. logic on you. Because no, no, you know they what y'all the say? Same this I can swear y'all say the <laughs> same thing about LeBron James fans. Exactly. I'm not a LeBron fan, so I don't know what you're talking about. But you are definitely yeah, a Kobe fan doing the same. You're using the same criteria, though. And I hate that criteria. When Kobe messes well, up, no, I criticize him. Guys, when LeBron difference. messes up, I criticize him. What's, exactly. what's the problem? But here's the thing. Le- up, hold now, now LeBron, listen, listen, LeBron is playing NBA 2K, creating his own teams. Kobe isn't. You know, the difference is oh, LeBron. Gosh. Listen, oh, LeBron, gosh. hold on. Really Thank you. Quick. I got a Thank question. You. LeBron, hold on. Kobe's LeBron doing. Thank you. Hold on. Really quick. LeBron Trey. has no excuse. He has two. He has Is another he, guy uh, averaging 26. Kobe's never had that ex- outside of Shaq. What? No, yep. did, did he have Lamar? Odom? Paul Gasol. Lamar. Paul Odom? Gasol. He, he had. He had Paul Gasol. He had Paul Gasol. Paul Gasol averaged 12.2 points that year. True. Was he all star? No. In 2011, in the playoffs, 2011, 2012, he was. Not go oh. Paul Gasol was yeah. was soft before Kobe though. Man, listen, I would take Chris Bosh over Paul Gasol in No, you won't. That's a no, lie. You no, you no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't, bro. That's a lie. Bro. In 2011, I would. you wouldn't That's take Chris Bosh. I, I would. Not. That's a lie, bro. No, I would. I would definitely That's take Chris Bosh. No, like you a, won't, bro. Stop lying. Yeah, that's how I would. Here. You capping no, right you now. Won't. You politicking. Oh, you politicking. I don't know. Bro, Chris oh, Bosh is averaging 26. Hold on. The year Mac, before. Hold on. Oh, Ain't no, hold on, Mac. Y'all got to go one at a time, man. Y'all don't okay. need to do this really quick. Can Chris Bosh over Powell Saw in 2011. Come on, man. Look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Get everybody else in here. I got to get to Angus. I gotta get the DJ. Okay. I gotta let me get to T Streets because he's been sitting there. He's been sitting there waiting patiently. T Streets, man, what you got on this, man? No, man, I'm just listening to the logic of what they said. Because first he said that Kobe won the championship by himself. Then when Kobe loses, then it's everybody else's fault. Like, that don't make no sense at all. And then you got the Kobe fans that want to blame LeBron fans of the same logic, and they do the same thing. Like, I don't get it, bro. Like, if you're going to be consistent, bro, be consistent on both ends, man. Just say Kobe, he had good role players. LeBron had good role players, and just give everybody credit. You don't give no more man credit. Listen, team it. teams win championships. No, no one player finish, really man. does it by I gotta let him finish, man. Let him finish. Nah, and I gotta nah. get to the other people. They said, let me get to um. I know T Streets. I was like you said. Let me get to uh DJ. DJ, what you got on that? Well, like man, for one, I say like championships are a team accomplishment. For one, like. We can't we can't keep sitting here saying, well, um, Kobe didn't choke or LeBron didn't whatever. Like, no. When I when I look at 2011, I say LeBron played like garbage, and that's my favorite player. And he played like garbage, plain and simple. Like, and then people say, Oh, he played 2K. Well, what did the Warriors do? Because they did a better job of playing 2K than him. Like, True. So we gotta stop that narrative too, bro. Like it he lost. So what? It happens, bro. At the end of the day, that doesn't take away his greatness. That doesn't take away, like, the man was a hell of a floor raiser, bro. He took lesser role players to the finals twice, bro. No all-star, no top 75 player. And he won without a top 75 player in 2016. Who was that? Nobody, But everybody glosses over that fact. Kyrie ain't no top seventy five player. Yeah, Kyrie's Kevin not top. Love, bro. Yeah, Kyrie's not top seventy five. So, 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 Yo, y'all so let's, let, y'all let's stop this narrative, bro. Like Kobe was great. LeBron is great, bro. Like at the end of the day, in my opinion, LeBron is a better player. I've seen LeBron take lesser talent, full of pretty much nobodies, to the finals twice. I've never seen Kobe do that, bro. Hey, I'm mute sorry. your background if you're playing a video game, y'all. Please. Like, well, it's, it's just a fact, going. bro. Like. And then people keep like people keep saying Pau Gasol ain't this, that, and the third. Pau Gasol, one of the greatest power fours ever to play in basketball, bro. He's a Hall so of Fame Chris player Bosch. for a reason, Chris bro. Is too. Like, no, he's not. Chris Bosh is a bro. If bro, it wasn't Chris for LeBron, Bosch bro, he would not be in the Hall of Fame, bro. He got two rings with LeBron, bro. Let's stop that, bro. So Pau Gasol, ah. made, so Pau Gasol made the Hall of Fame, right? Yes, Pau, Pau Gasol, Gasol is a Hall of Famer. Fame. Yes. He's, he's really retired. retired. And Chris Bosh Bro, will be Pau Gasol was a Hall he's of Fame player. Do you do you do you, you realize Gasol Pau Gasol one of the greatest retired. international players, bro? Do you do you know that? And do you, you, know, that you don't think you don't think hey, Chris Bosh is one of the greatest American players? Oh man, bro. Hey Lamar, what up, T Street? This dude is weird. Hey, how did it become a how did it become a Kobe and LeBron debate? That's what I said. 
Because the Kobe fans, nah, the reason why this happened, one time and all, and all of a sudden, hold on, y'all. Shit, y'all we gonna move on from it because I don't want to. I don't want to talk about Kobe because again, ever somebody says Kobe choked, then people can't control themselves. <laughs> they go exactly. off into these long dialogues. They just go off in these long, weird dialogues trying to explain to us that Kobe didn't choke, even though he lost in more dramatic fashion to the same team as LeBron James. And so that's all it is. They just trying to defend things that can't be defended. All you have to this could have ended a long time ago if Mac would have just said, Yeah, Kobe choked too. He couldn't even fix his mouth to say it. Even though he would run around all day saying LeBron choked and losing to the same team. At least LeBron got some wins up against him. Because first of all, y'all, when y'all talk about LeBron, y'all talk about he got swept in the finals. Y'all say he couldn't have got one game. So can I use that same logic? With Kobe, exactly. he couldn't have got one game. He mm-hmm. he couldn't get one game against the Mavericks. <laughs> he got one game in 2004. So come on, man. Hold on, LeBron couldn't get one in 2007. Come on, man, this is crazy. But against three, I, I'm not, hold on, I'm not, not, Tim I'm Duncan not was playing like crap. But, hold on, but look, yeah, hold on, Chris and Matt, mean? y'all missing a point. Exactly. I'm not trying to talk about that. I'm trying yeah. to tell you it's dumb logic to say that. I'm not saying it to use it against Kobe. I'm saying y'all need to stop using it against LeBron because if I use it against Kobe, you're going to try to run off and turn this into a whole Kobe <laughs> stream trying to defend Listen, stuff that can't fair. be defended. We can move on. That's fair. We can move on, but context matters. But all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, context does yeah. matter. Yeah, let's can move I, on. Yeah, can, I just, can I just context, add before we move on? Context <laughs> does matter. That's the big thing. Now, try using that same logic when you talk about LeBron. Context matters. And don't use fake context like what you just said yeah, but, uh, Lamar, Dude, no, hold on I... mac mac you're gonna learn today mac you're gonna learn real basketball today mac. real basketball is not when you say lebron james created his own team lebron james does not sign players he does not sign contracts oh and every player on every single every star on every team has some input on what the roster makeup is if, if you, you go to the Bla- hold on mac if you go to the blazers i'm positive they consult with Damian Lillard when they make moves. And Damian Lillard has already admitted this. When when the Warriors were considering bringing Kevin Durant back, Steph Curry said, yeah, they came to me and talked to me about it. Yeah. So again, every single team with a great player gets consulted by the organization about what moves need to get made, not just LeBron. And the fact of the matter is, is the organization does not take all of the things that he says um, as fact, they don't do everything he asked them to do. They've said that, no to him. Fact. The first so, time that he asked for the Carmelo Anthony to be a Laker, they said no. It wasn't until the next year where he asked, and they said, okay, we, we need a shooter. We'll bring him in. So they don't give him everything. So how do you get the nickname LeGM? I've never heard He gets the nickname LeGM. Like, hold on, Max. He, like, he gets the nickname from, from I don't want to talk about that. Kobe, he gets, they they don't he gets the nickname from idiots. He gets the nickname yeah. from idiots who don't know basketball. See, here's here's what happens in basketball. See, when the Lakers when the Lakers do bad, when the Lakers do bad, y'all say LeBron was a bad GM. When the Lakers do good, y'all say, great job, Rob Palenka. Y'all don't say great job, GM LeBron. Y'all give y'all actually give credit where credit is due when they actually win. But when they lose, y'all say, oh, LeBron's a you try to so y'all don't even keep consistent logic there. I digress. Wait. We can move on. Can, can I just have ask to. something to us? Can I because it just makes no sense? What up, Sonny? Is just real quick, I just want to get to the just a question for the person who mentioned the whole 2K thing. Cause you hear it all the time, and it's like just to give a little history on it is. If LeBron's running those teams, then why is it that the same people then that say when he went to Miami and that very first year, those very first few games where he supposedly tried to get Spolstra fired, Pat Riley said, "No, I'm the I'm running the ship, not you." Well, because there's so a is it line. him or is it is it Pat Riley? Well, because here's the thing: you're going to value your superstar and what he wants, but also there's a te- there's a teetering line, and some organizations like the Miami Heat they have a structure, so they're going to give him somewhat of what he wants, but they're not going to give him the keys to the to the whole castle. So you got to understand that Pat Riley. But if, again, in Cleveland, LeBron has the keys to all to, to everything. So, right. So, so you say Cleveland, right? right. So That's not Cleveland, true because right? when he in asked Cleveland, when, exactly when he when, wanted when Paul George, to... they couldn't get Paul George. When right. he wanted Amari Stoudemire, they couldn't he, get Amari Stoudemire. Yeah, they, they, Why he need them though? Why he need no. them? Because his hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my God! Hold on. So, are you really asking? My bad, my bad, Sonny. Are you really asking 
why he would want Amari Stoudemire over no, JJ Hicks. Once again, he trying to build super teams. Hold on, what are y'all? Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Exactly. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Y'all got to stop with the stupid basketball talk. It's the organization's job to be as profitable as possible. You only are that profitable when you're winning games. However you got to win games, go win them. As a, as a GM of a team, it's my job to put the, the absolute best team on the floor, and I don't give a damn who has anything to say about it because it's your job to out-compete me, to do it better than me. When the Warriors put that super team out there and we knew they were unbeatable, well, you got to shake their hand for doing a great job. Because yep. now you got to figure out how to beat them, as opposed to crying that they put it together. Because they did it within the confines of the rules. I just just like you. just like when the Bulls had a super team at the beginning of the nineties before the season. Are you serious? Came. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. First of all, because I'm talking to people that don't understand the history. The Bulls was able to put together <laughs> their super team. You, the Bulls was able to put together their super team before the expansion rules kicked in and it prevented other teams from developing properly. Yeah. Jerry Shalom talked about it and all the other GMs in the league had a lot of problem with David Stern bringing all these expansion teams in, taking players from other teams, expansion drafts, taking draft compensation. And that, like I said, Jerry Shalom said, we can't get better without our draft picks. And they so couldn't get better. So, so, so none Lamont, of these teams got better. None of them. So Lamont, I actually disagree from a business standpoint. You said that these teams aren't profitable what? unless they're hold on, unless they're winning games. Is that what you said? Yeah, they you just want to win games. Yeah, I'm no, gonna tell you why. Not true. You don't yes. listen. Hold you on, don't, how are you gonna tell me that's not true? And I'm major in sports marketing and management <laughs> with a focus in the bro, NBA. I have my I have my <laughs> no, NBA. man. Get, get, come, man hold on. You don't my, have, have no NBA. No, you don't. I have how my master in basketball <laughs> association, sir. But you don't know what you want though. You don't know what you yeah, bro, bro, you, bro, first of all, you guys it. it's profitable for it's profitable for a team just to make the first round. So Man. when you so, have hold on, if you have what a big Dan game. Gilbert got comfortable with was this is why Dan Gilbert he had motivation to be lazy when he had LeBron because LeBron under the luxury tax was taking them so deep in the playoffs. Every in the playoffs, teams can profit between fifty to a hundred million just by one playoff round. Yeah. LeBron was taking teams, and, and, and Gan Gilbert wasn't even paying the luxury tax. Most teams <laughs> used the playoffs to pay the luxury tax. He was taking teams deep into the playoffs. They were under the luxury. Dan Gilbert's pockets were getting fatter and fatter yeah, with LeBron. Yeah, but that's a bit – Hold on. Bro, there's no hold on. You got to learn now. What I'm saying is you, you – you, all these owners, these owners are about the money. These owners, there's there's only a few owners out there that actually care about winning. The Mark Cubans, the owner of the Clippers, and they will pay absorbent amounts of money just to win. Most owners, most owners are in that position because they care about the business side of it. And how can I profit? Most owners aren't even in the business of winning. So they're about how can I stay under the luxury tax while also putting the best product out there, even though they know this product can't win a championship because all they got to do is get to the first or second round of the playoffs. And okay. they've massively profited for the year. So that's a great. So so it's a great business move, I, like the I, I Portland Trailblazers. I'm not a rookie. You're talking about business bro, man, you gotta around. stop, bro. Here's Here's what what you gotta to stop. To so, to so basically, with Dan Gilbert, he did not get LeBron James help because it was lining his pockets with money to stay under the luxury tax. Yes. Well, well, he he just nah, he to, actually went over. When he, he, he went over. What are you talking about? He had to pay guys like J.R. Smith. He had to pay all those guys. No, that was the oh. second time, not the first time. I'm exactly. talking about the first run. First I'm talking about the first run. Oh, no, I was talking the about the second run. No, man. No, no the first time. No, hold on. The second time no, that's because they Dan Gilbert knew he had to get right. There yeah, was no, so, okay, there was so, no so, options there. He had so, to get right. So are you saying he didn't know, he didn't understand how to build a championship team until the oh, second time? No, what I'm telling you is Dan Gilbert was not interested in, de- in building a championship team because he was profiting massively just with a mediocre team in LeBron James. No, I'll break this down in simple terms. He took pieces. advantage of what he had. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, Mark, Mac, what pieces? LeBron's first seven even, years, what pieces? I can't even speak, but go ahead, man. Okay, no, no, no. 
LeBron's <laughs> first seven years in Cleveland, please tell me what pieces they, they give. Bro, was I'm saying in. this. They you they were diligent in trying. I didn't say they got the the, the, the top quality pieces. They were in, interested in getting guys, but they were able to get guys. Interested like, oh, ain't getting nobody. <laughs> what bro, do you mean? Not, not listen, okay, so for example, hold on. Y'all not even got, listening to the bro. Y'all when they went and got Marie, Mo Williams, that wasn't a, a part of them trying to build towards a championship? I no, he no, hell, he was, no. no, he was an all star. Mo Williams was an all star. He was a reserve, not even that. He lived Bro, that he, hold on. So when he, was, hold on. When he played with the now they try to okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody let me ask you a question. And, hold on, no, 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 Mac. Let me ask you a question, Mac. He got on that roster. I mean, they oh, hold on, trying. hold on, Mac. Let me ask you a question. West. They, they had a lot of guys that Mac. Let me hold on. First of all, don't give me no Delonte West. That's Delonte West. Don't do that. Hold on, y'all. Let me ask you a question. Don't be disrespectful. So when Christian Leitner. When Christian Leitner made an all-star game, Christian Leitner. Are you saying if he was a free agent the next year, you could literally and honestly tell your superstar, well, we went and got you an all-star. We got you Christian Leitner. <laughs> and, and you think that all-star player is gonna look at you and be like, Thank you for the help? Like he's gonna look at you and be like, This is Christian Leitner. He he only really made the all-star game by default when even with Mo Williams. No, nobody looked at him as a true or perennial all star. So there's a difference between making an all star game and being an all star caliber player. No, can you honestly say out your mouth? We can say that about other players. Can you honestly say out your mouth that Mo Williams was an all star caliber player? It took two two I, injury no, replacements for him to get into the all star game. Two. Okay, so if you don't believe he was an all star caliber but, player, but then me, why are you saying if you don't believe oh, if you don't believe Mo Williams Draymond was an all star caliber player? Draymond Green is a fourth option on that team. He's not an all-star. If you team. don't believe He's a Mo Williams was an all-star caliber player, then why are you bringing up the fact that he was an he all-star Because he was a good game? fit around LeBron No, at that time. you said he was bringing in good help. That's not good help? He's a, he was no. a knockdown shooter. No. Okay, so to win championships... What type of help do you need to bring in? You need hold on. They they, they were trying to put shooters around him. That's why they got that's Bro, why they got to win championships. Wasn't they number one in defense? <laughs> they uh -huh. were number one in defense. <laughs> Oh man! Okay, and here's the thing: you act on. like those guys. Hold on, in, in 2000. No, y'all gotta stop lying and trying to <laughs> so hold on. Guys in that time frame. No, y'all just lie. <laughs> y'all just lie. Like today is that's not the day for that because we're only gonna be live for two hours, and I'm not gonna uh -huh. let y'all just run and filibuster and say stuff that ain't true. <laughs> Especially when I know y'all don't know the game of basketball. First, you're sitting up here telling me that Dan Gilbert was trying to build a great team around LeBron when ain't nobody in their right mind. Because if you because because y'all y'all be the ones remember Mac is the one that said use context, but he talks about LeBron getting swept by the Spurs. What context? What context did he put with that? Did he say that Larry Hughes, the second best player on that team, was hurt, missing, and only played two games that series? Did they put context to any of those things? No, you don't put no context to things that apply to LeBron. Y'all just say stuff, and then you talk about you. I, you're the only person in the world that says that Dan Gilbert actually tried to put help around LeBron his first seven years there. You are the, the only person in the world. That's the most dumbest. And then you sit here and try to go back and forth and try to make sense of it in your mind. And you, now you're trying to convince us that Mo Williams was sufficient help when you just admitted he's not even an all-star caliber player. Now you're trying to convince us of some goddamn Mo Williams. Man. You got to stop, man. Next, what is next? Booby Gibson? Next, he's gonna tell us about the development of Booby Gibson. I bet I bet he's gonna say that. Oh man, yeah, just wild with these and, bad takes, man. And the funny part about all of that is when LeBron left Cleveland the first time, those dudes was out the league within a year or two, bro. Out the league, bro. Hold on, how did they get to that? How did they get to the team? But hold on, let me they were, they were, they were, one second, one second, one second. They were a sixty-win team with LeBron. If they're so good, right? So like as as you claim. Why were they worst team in the league and tied the record for most consecutive losses at twenty? I already know what they're gonna say. He's a team destroyer. If they no. were so bad, I already know what they're gonna say. They built an offense around LeBron. No, let me ask a question. The team could function with the worst team. Twenty six losses in a row. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I ask a question? Since earlier you said it's it's a team sport, it's not a one man show. So how did they get to the finals and the Eastern Conference Eastern Conference Finals with that same team? I can tell you that. I can tell you that. So, so no, tell me, because I want to know no, if, it's, if okay, it's not a one-man show. You know what I'm tell you this? I'm going to tell you this. One, the number one reason why they had so much success, and I don't, I'm not even giving it all to LeBron, but the number one reason why they had so much success, because they had one of the best defensive coaches in the league. 
He yep. What is he great at? He's great at coaching team defense. And so one thing that we know in the NBA is that if you can struggle offensively everywhere else, but if you have a very good defense, it can take you a long way. It might not always win you a championship like we've seen with the Miami Heat, but it will always keep you competitive. Name and the players, you, in, though. In, 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 hold have? on, Mac. You you a, I'm answering your question, and when you not, and when okay. you mix in and when you mix into that equation, LeBron James, who was arguably at that time the a one through three top player in the league, offensively he could do a ton because offensively his skill set catered towards making guys who weren't as good in the ISO. He made them better in the team setting offensively. So LeBron made up for a ton offensively. But defensively, that coaching staff did a lot with that team defensively and schematically that made them elite. Defense carried them a long way. Y'all, y'all wanted you didn't even answer the question. Hold on, hold on. Y'all want so desperately for somebody to say LeBron did everything. The fact is, we know LeBron didn't do everything. We know it had a lot okay, to do with go. that defense. That's what I you but to at say. the okay. end of the day, at the end of the day, you to win championships in this league, you need elite help. No, You're they got to just the walking finals, man. I don't care if you get. I don't care how far – I like I said, defense can carry you a long way. It doesn't always win you championships. They had a good That's team, what I said. Though. I said great defense will always keep you competitive like we've seen with the Miami Heat. They're always competitive. Why? Because okay, Eric Spolster always rolls out an elite defense. That's why. The okay, Knicks Lamont. probably won't go, go – the Knicks this year probably won't do so hot in the playoffs. But you know what? That defense is going to keep them competitive. That's okay, a fact. Lamont. Lamont, can some of those other guys get credit for having a sixty-plus one team? Bro, I just gave them credit. No, no. Who though? The what defense. Names, though? What the name? defense? So the it, defense. It, it, that's their name. And I said Mike Brown, number one of the best no, players, defensive players. head coaches, because it was more team. <laughs> I'm, I, you want me to give so much? What? Why do you want me? To, why do you want? Because so bad? you don't. Hold on. Hold on, don't. Mac. No, there's no because. Why do you want so bad? This is what they try to do. You want so bad for me to give credit to one individual player that I can't give it. I like giving def, team defense credit. Y'all know my favorite players. Dray, one of my favorite players is Draymond Green. What does he excel at? Leading a team defense. I love team defense, so when I see it, I don't have a problem with giving it credit. When I look at Booby Gibson and some of these guys, even Ilgowskis, individually, defensively, they are not the greatest defenders. But when they all play together under the instruction of a coach like a Mike Brown, they can do a lot of great things, which they did. They had a great run. But to win championships, you still need elite help because when you run into a team like the Spurs, who are elite defensively and offensively, that's when you're going to have problems. And they got the star power to, to stifle you and shut a lot of things down. But I just put context to it. And putting context to it is talking about Larry Hughes being hurt. That's all we doing. So y'all can say all these things. So you, you tried to give Kobe all of this. You tried to put context to it. At the end of the day, that team was healthy for the most part. As, as Mac already admitted, he said Kobe Bryant choked, just like LeBron choked. We'll give him that. So as long as he knows that Kobe choked, We'll go with the narrative that LeBron choked. It wasn't Dallas, Dirk, and those guys. We don't even have to count Dirk's championship. They weren't great. LeBron just sold. Is is that true? Nah, I'm gonna give Dirk his props. No, 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 no. Yeah, but if you say LeBron choked, that means it was his championship to lose, and he just basically handed a championship to the Mavericks. It was anybody's championship to win, but Miami home. was the favorites. They were the favorites. Okay. Yeah, that was just cap listening. I mean, listen, I'm not just anybody could have won that. Choke and then listen, one LeBron, play. LeBron had four guys, oh, that you guys. over. Listen, LeBron had four guys shooting over 36% from the three that year. Four guys shooting over 36%. What does that have I mean, to do with anything? Crazy. These are catch and shoot three point shooters. I mean, and then not only that, you had, hold on, they had four guys uh, averaging double digits. I mean, in that team, oh, they were number God. four defense. The what does that team. mean? But what does that mean? That means that there's more guys on that team giving. Okay, so are, so are you problem. telling me that all you have to do to be a good team in the NBA is have five guys that average double digits? No, I didn't. Did I say that? They shoot threes. Well, shoot why are you bringing it up, mouth, man? Stop it. Why are you bringing it up? You just putting words in my mouth, man. Stop okay, but it. why are you bringing up that LeBron James had That's guys? That, why that. are you bringing up that guys had? That LeBron James had guys that scored in double digits in points, but you just, just admitted just for context. Just, okay, so for context. Does having five guys that score double digits always lead to winning? 
No, but that's that's good. That's really good when you. No, it's not a good start because the the best start. They won seventeen. The best start. You got LeBron left. The best start is going to be a team that has. I mean, what else does he need? Okay, first of all, what what you mean? What else does he need? So you saying? So are you saying? Yeah, four guys over double digits. Hold on, hold on. Are you saying LeBron James? This this is the stupidity that we talk about. He's he's basically saying LeBron should have been able to beat the dynasty Spurs. A team with multiple Hall of Famers and a Hall of Fame head coach with Larry Hughes, a guy who was often injured as his second best player, something like that. Like, what like what is he supposed to do? So he's supposed to make up for all that. Like yeah, yeah. So this is this tells me right there that y'all think so highly of LeBron James that y'all think he's like super incredible Superman. or something. Uh, he's people to be- call him the GOAT. So what? What does that prove? Man. Hold on. Nah, because call- if he's the so, GOAT- okay, Pootie, but people call Kareem the GOAT. People call him Mustard Goat. He's Why are you getting mad? Players. Who cares? Man, he, listen, I, I'm Drew not getting mad. Who calls Kareem the GOAT anymore? He's dominating, man. Uh, my generation. Ahead. Drew Gooden was. Hold on, awesome. Mac. Where do you have LeBron James ranked all time? Where do I have him ranked? Yeah. I don't even rank players. I mean, but uh, yeah. if, I, huh. if, I had to, if I had to rank him, I would put him probably like number four. Okay. So he's, <laughs> so he's top five all time. That's not bad. I mean, I, I don't okay, know. so he did all this choking. How does somebody who the only thing you've said a good you haven't said one thing good about him? You only talked about how he's. Bro, a I just said he was the but you have him top player five in the world. Okay. Yeah, but you can't talk oh, trash about him. How I'm Man, just assessing stop. basketball. That's talking trash, bro. You're not assessing basketball if you look at that Dallas series and say that LeBron choked. He he didn't choke. No, he says all his ball. Bro, his oh. av- he was averaging. <laughs> hold on, he, bro. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Mark, that hold was on. the I definition did. of choking. He, his okay, average wait, 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 for that okay. season. Hold on, hold on. No, hold on, hold on. That average, he averaged 24, and it went down to 16. Hold on, hold on, Mac. Wait, Mac, hold up real quick. Lamont, hold up. I just want to come no, to you. No, Chris, no, really hold on, hold on, Chris. Hold on, Chris. Wait, That's uh, weird, I'm, I'm going to explain That's it to him. choking. Because when you dumb it down to just choking, that tells me you don't understand the game. So See, when you when you're hold on, Mac, average, I'm gonna explain it to points, you. I'm gonna explain it to you, Mac. Token, bro. Because remember what I like, what what, what I always preface this, and I go back because I'm consistent. I like to give well, great LeBron's defenses. Not. I like to give credit to great defenses that are great defensively. So what did what did Mark Cuban right? He sat in those locker rooms. He sat in those practices as Dallas constructed this very odd oddly changing zone to, that they wanted to use to defend LeBron that series. And what did Mark Cuban say? He says, when we developed this zone and we started to execute it, he said, the one thing that we saw very quickly, he what said, Le- hold on. He said, LeBron James, he says, for the majority of the time was making the right reads out of the zone. He was actually picking us apart. He said, it was the other four guys on the floor that was making the majority of the mistakes out of the zone because they couldn't understand it. But at the end of the day, I understand that LeBron no, no, being no. the best hold player on, on that I, team. I, I, hold on, hold on. I'll, let me finish. There's no rebuttal to that because that's what Mark Cuban said. No, that's this not is the a guy. Story. This that's is another guy story. that understands basketball far, far better than you would ever understand it. But so here's we're going to go with his. No, there's no. Here's the thing. We're going to go with his <laughs> explanation of it <laughs> yeah, because he's the superior. Okay. No, he's the superior basketball mind to you. Just like I'm the superior basketball mind to you. No, but I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't relegate P players down to just choking. What no, I actually I do is I give you're done. No, I give great defenses credit for executing defensively. Just like last year when we saw the Boston Celtics execute one of the greatest defensive schemes on Kevin Durant that we've ever seen. No, I'm not impressed. idiots that yeah, yet idiots will walk around and say, KD choked. No, that was a great defensive strategy. Give Boston Celtics credit for being a great defense because okay. y'all be the ones. No, no, no. It be people like you that walk around and try to say nobody play defense in this era. But when we see great defense, what? you so stupid, you will only say that these players choked. You That's don't even fact. know how to recognize great yeah. defense when you see it. I think the defense is better today. So no, I've never you're, said that. you're only saying that now because you probably learned a little bit the last hour and a half being on FYF. Hold on, hold on, Come hold on. on. First of all, you don't Come even on, know stop, anything man. about me, sir. So here's what I, I want to say. I know that I know that you came in making dumb statements and you're still I think, making I dumb think the Golden State, statements. I think the Golden State Warriors in their run, I think they want to have no, I think they have one. You're of the stating the obvious now. Now you just stay. No, I'm obvious not. Stuff. I'm trying to because you're interrupting. I can't even give my context, bro. Can I finish? Bro, all I want there's to no say context to. No, I how, just want to add. How do you add context to stupidity? 
There's no, no context for stupidity. Something, but you just no, bro, you be like emotional right now. This is All right. weird. No, I'm not emotional. This is not emotional. I'm, I'm just, just saying basketball. you that's can't it, say stuff that's just generally like We're like for me. So first of all, generally you, take, you can't personal, you cannot man. walk around and say players choked. <laughs> this right? dude's taking you, this so personal. When man. you say players choked, then that means you're basically saying Dallas wasn't that good of a team. That's no, but see, that's not what I'm saying. But you can't say both. <laughs> no, but okay, so can I explain you, what you, I'm saying? Okay, so I want you to make sense of this. How so can you say I, LeBron okay, choked? No, no, no. How can I you want... say LeBron choked and oh, Dallas yeah, was a I great can... team at the same time? I'll, I'll wait. Go ahead. No, no. How can you make that make sense? How can you say LeBron choked and Dallas was a great team? It's either one or the other. Either a great team shut down a good player or a good player lost to an inferior team. Which one was it? No, that's not how that's not how things work. You can't th listen what? to no, because listen, there that's not how things work. Two things okay. can be true at the but same time. But you just said LeBron choked. But okay, but here can I, this is what I want to explain before I got interrupted. I, you keep putting me in the background. I don't even know why. I'll just go on mute if you're just gonna kick me out. But kick me out. So all I'm saying is this when it comes down to choking, and since I've understand choking, the way I define it is when a player's production, right, goes down. In the playoffs, tremendously. It's not like his points per average go down by one or two points. His point per average went down by eight points, and his percentages went down, and it wasn't just because of their defense, right? This dude was unwilling to take those shots that he was given, and he was he was making those extra passes. And, again, if you're the considered the number one player Bro. and the number one absent on the Bro, championship that team, is, that, that's that is inexcusable. See, hold on. Look, hold look, on. For uh, example, can I, I can't no, finish. I'm Matt. almost done. I'm almost done. No. I'm almost no. done. Use context, bro. Because he said I, use. I won't. You can't let me no, do Mac. no, Mac. Use this context crazy, because you just bro. said. First of all, LeBron. We can't all know. Shoot, so they took advantage hold on, hold of that. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. You just uh, said LeBron James would pass the ball. We all know that LeBron James, by definition, is a pass first player. That's so how just come he was MO. a score first player? The, the hold on, player. hold on. He's never been a score first player. He's just a good scorer that's pass first. But how come his averages went hold down? On, in hold that on, how do you? This is the, this is the dumbest thing. Yo, this what? Is the dumbest hold on, you're not even listening, Mac, bro. You're just Mac. talking to the dog. Okay, Mac, here's the here's the problem, Mac. Okay, his averages How do you go from down? 24 points per I'm average I'm going to tell you, bro, that's 16. not hard. That's not hard. That's in that's, the playoffs, not hard bro, to explain. your averages went down. Hold on, Mac. That's another stupid logic that you're saying. First of all, the game slows down in the playoffs. Fewer possessions, one. Secondly, we're talking about one of the greatest defensive performances by a playoff team in NBA history. With so the why Dallas did D-Wade break it? How come so, he... Hold on, Mac. Hold on, Mac. See, so, yeah, he don't want to oh, answer this that. Is what happens. First of all, you just admitted that he shut down your defending champion, the best player in the league, Kobe Bryant, held him to 17 points in two closeout games, right? So we know we're dealing with an elite defense. So does it surprise you that they move on to the Miami Heat and slow down LeBron James? Okay, can I ask you a question? No, there's no questions asked. It no, was I, there is a question. Right I have a question. Face. What do you mean? No, hold on, Matt. The answer's right in his face, y'all. Look, he, look, look, look y'all. This is not rocket science. He says, why does a player's production go down? It usually goes down because you're dealing with a good defense. That duh, like, like, why do y'all say stupid stuff like this? Why did his production go down? Like, when and when you say, when you think his production wasn't supposed to go down, that means you don't think the Dallas Maverick defense was that good. You just think LeBron should have just dominated this inferior team. So that's why I say you can't have one and the other. Either you thought LeBron James choked and this Dallas Maverick team was inferior, or you think Dallas had a great defense and they slowed up a star player. And and the one that seems to be true is the Dallas Mavericks slowed up the star player. Why do we know this? Because they also slowed up they also slowed up Kobe Bryant and they also beat a whole bunch of those other stars on that run. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying every just just talk real basketball instead of these flawed narratives. And if you are going to be biased and just say LeBron choked, at least admit that you know your logic is flawed. Cuz when you say he choked, you're telling me Dallas was trash. Cuz you can't choke against a good team. Good teams are going to make it hard on you. There's no such thing as a that, – that's like saying, look, did LeBron choke against the dynasty Golden State Warriors or were they just a better team? That's a fact. Well, y'all just be saying – like he's, They were just like a better they, team. The Warriors are just a pedal, better team. You can't peddle narratives over here. Give Dallas credit. Why, why do y'all – why is it so hard? Why, why is it so hard to give Dallas Mavericks State credit for being a great defense? Why is it so hard for you to talk about how they okay, dominated Kobe Bryant? 
Okay, Lamont, to add to that, right? You just said there's no adding to, to it. No, just say Dallas was a great defense. Has, you, hold on, you said it has to be one or the other, right? And I want to add to here's what I want to say to that. Bro, that's what great defenses do. They no, no, slow no, no. players hold up. On. If it, hold on, if it has to be one or the other, how come D Wade was able to score 26 in that series, but but no one else could? So how come LeBron couldn't do it, but D Wade? You said if it, they're a great mm. defense, okay. how come mm. D Wade because, figured it out? Because exactly. that tells you, See, because that hooked, tells you right there. Olive oil no, hold on, first of all. Like I said, this is this is basketball. First. It's basketball. It's basketball. It's obviously, yeah, but... obviously, it was Dallas's objective. Their number so one objective. Score. Okay. No, their number one objective was to slow down LeBron James. They know the engine to that team was LeBron. You slow LeBron up. I disagree. Then you have a, then you have a chance to beat them. There's no secret to that formula right there. The engine right was D Wade. Hold on, D Wade was not the engine. It was LeBron. He, bro, LeBron, D Wade was the best player uh, man, in those playoffs. On, bro, bro, D Wade right, bro. was the best player. All right, year. it doesn't matter. They lost. Why exactly. do you? Want, why, you it doesn't matter. The thing it. is, obviously, these defenses about give and take. You, you're man, not going to. First of all, today, no, Mac, hold on, Mac. We're talking <laughs> real basketball. No coach is going to go out there and say we're going to stop D Wade, Bosh, and LeBron all at once. There's going to be some give and take. You either have to. Focus your energy on slowing up LeBron and understand that in the in the process of doing this, we may give up a little bit more to D Wade, but it's more important to slow up LeBron because of his ability to play make and have an impact on this game. They had a whole they had a whole uh, process, a whole system, a defensive system of slowing up LeBron James. And just because they allowed D Wade defensively, they gave him a little bit more leeway. They didn't focus. That's because you cannot, you you can't focus your defense on three stars. You have to focus it on one objective, and you have to go out there and hope that I, that objective gets it done. And them slowing up LeBron James actually worked. They defended him with five guys, not one. They five guys. And, and yet you want to cry and talk about, oh, D-Wade was the better player because he had a few more points. So are you really, you honestly are going to walk away. Are you honestly, can you honestly come back in the stream and say that D, that D-Wade was a better player than LeBron James that year? You are a slick son of a gun. Is D-Wade better than LeBron? You are a slick son of a gun. Is D-Wade better than LeBron in 2011? <laughs> I already told you. So is so you saying D Wade was better than LeBron in 2011? Dude, get the wax out of your ears. What did, what did I say? Yeah, no, just say you. it, bro. You won't even let me talk. Well, I'm I'm afraid to talk, man. This is crazy. <laughs> All you gotta do is don't make up stuff. I'm not, bro. Look, the chat is telling you. I'm not even talking. I'm just sitting here like this is crazy. Bro, now I'm, you only, just I'm only laughing because you're making embarrassment of yourself. This hold on. I'm not embarrassed about anything. I'm so, you are, you are, you are. So, so hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Hey, Let me ask him a question, bro. I mean, he, up, listen, only I'm illiterate people ask. Hold on, bro. Let me ask him, bro. Hold, hold on. on. I'm, I'm just trying to understand uh, his perspective uh, and where he's stemming I'm from. That's all. Hold this. on, bro. Can I, you, can, can, I, can I just add one thing real quick? Just When you tell me that the defense was trying to, they just let D-Way go go rampant. I did not say that. Okay, so what did you you just because no you defense said, is just gonna let anybody stars, so you have no to defense on is, I said their defense it was clear to see that their defense was geared towards slowing LeBron James and they were successful just but like you said they had five hold on Mac on hold on just like hold on Mac just like their defense was geared towards slowing up Kobe Bryant <laughs> is that a fact guys. is that a fact no bro you you lied you said they had five guys on them. Hold on. No, what I said was they guarded LeBron with five players. That's a fact. That's not true. That's called a zone. <laughs> no, LeBron, he's taking it literally, bro. He He's taking it like you said. They he's literally have five Hold on, hold on. Mac, on, Mac, bro. do you know what a zone is? He, he a don't zone, know, bro. A zone is guarding I know what a zone is. Yes, I do. A zone is guarding the basketball with five players. That's the definition of a zone. That's not oh, it. No, it's not. Oh, my God. Bro, you are gotta be a bro are you okay, bro? <laughs> Mag, I, bro, Mag, bro, Mag, bro, I just with you until you said that, bro. Can he? Can, can, it's the reason. Let me ask you this question, Mac. Hold on, Mac. One question. When the ball moves, oh, the, question, when the bro. ball moves There's in the no zone, questions, when the ball moves in the zone, why do all five <laughs> guys move with the ball? <sighs> I'm when sorry, the coach I can't hear you. Go ahead. When the ball What's rotates that? in the zone, the zone is supposed to look like every player is attached on a string. That means 
you have a man between the ball, you have a man on ball, you have two people shifted and shaded towards help yeah. side towards the ball. So when you're in a zone, why do all five guys well, yeah, move it, it with stop, the ball? So it stops it stops your 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 predominant like guy. Why do all five guys move with the ball? It so it stops your guy from getting uh access to the middle of the of the of the of the court to be so able to the purpose of the zone offense. is to do what to the basketball? It's to it's to force you base, force you on the side. You, you defend the ball with a team. Yeah, but you, and you there's don't other norm, norm, there's other and you don't worry about other guys. Team, what is the number one you can coaches? Do a two, three, two, the coaches two, are going to say in the zone, we don't worry about the next man until the ball is in the air. And as as the on the flight of the pass, that's when we start to rotate and we worry about the next okay. man that touches. So, so the zone is question. predicated towards stopping one player with the ball. So, so hold on, let me ask you a question. So are you telling me LeBron in what what hold on in his eighth, ninth season, he wasn't able to figure that out? Bro, hold on. Mark Cuban answered the question for you. He no, said, I'm asking you. If hold on. I'm telling you. Bro, hold on. I, I, see, the thing is, anything that I say, you don't believe. This dude is a LeBron. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Anything that I say, you don't believe me. So I'm giving you a source, an inside source who was in that locker room. You know what he said? He said, when we strategized this zone and we saw it in action, he says, the one thing that we saw very quickly was that LeBron James was making all the right reads. Now, you can call that choking because he was passing the ball. But at the end of the day, I only expect you to see a very limited version of the game because you might not have liked LeBron. So hold on. Obviously, any, as hold on. a Kobe any fan. Zone, so hold on. Any zone that's being played on the other team's best player, we should we expect all those guys, to, to their, their numbers to diminish? Is Bro, that what you're saying? Hold on. First of all, zone is meant to slow the game down. So whenever a team I, no, goes, I understand that, but, whenever but, a team goes on, into guys, a zone, like, but certain guys, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, it, it depends on who you run in the zone against. So exactly. first of all, exactly, then if say you run, that. Then if you're running a zone, it depends on how the other for, running the zone shoot, then yes. only works. Running the zone only works as well as the personnel that you have. It don't work well if you got shit defenders out there. If if the if the Dallas Mavericks had five JJ Bereas on the floor. I promise you that that zone wouldn't have been very effective. Like y'all say, JJ Barea stopped LeBron. If you had five J, five JJ Bereas on that floor, that zone wouldn't have looked very good. So it was five players defending the basketball as a unit. Now you call it what you want. LeBron has also admitted himself that he probably could have been, been a bit more aggressive in looking to score uh, against that zone. I, this is one of the things you learn as a player. Right. But the one thing that we've seen is that any other team from this point forward does ever try to a zone against LeBron in the playoffs. Yeah. Well, they got torched. So the <laughs> exactly. thing is, the one thing that we saw is that he learned from that. Like when the Miami Heat in 2020 tried to run zone. Well, got the torched. very they, they 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 got him out that zone real quick. So, again, you learn as you go and in, in your zone and your the, the way you attack the zone is only as effective. Um, as the players you have on the floor. Yeah, yeah, like you said, he lost. I'm not here to defend him for losing, but I'm not about to take away from the Mavericks for being great. They were that was a great defensive performance. Give them credit. You're so pressed, you so thirsty to say LeBron James choked that you don't want to give another team credit for being great. That's why I say y'all might as well just take the championship away from Dirk because y'all don't say he earned it. Y'all don't say that team earned it. Y'all basically say LeBron choked. That's all y'all relegated to. That's called hate for a player. If you really understand the game, you would actually give that Dallas team credit. So, Lamont, let me, Lamont, let me ask you this. What's your definition of choking? <laughs> choking is choking is when you do something. So, for me, I'll give you an example of chokes. And we don't see very many choke jobs in the league. Ben Simmons passing up the layup. J.R. Smith blowing the opportunity to make the layup because he doesn't understand time and score. He didn't have situational awareness. Those are choke moments. When you do something so out of whack, right? Your basketball IQ falters you so bad. C Chris Weber calling a timeout, which actually I think it was his bench calling a timeout, but Chris Weber calling a timeout. Those so types of things. So those are called oh, mistakes, oh, though. Those oh, are called no, mistakes. No, those, those types of things, when you go out, when you don't understand, you don't have the situational awareness, and, and that causes you to make mistakes, that's choking. But missing okay. the shot, hold on, missing shots is not choking. That's just okay. missing the shot. So let me hold on. Let me give you my definition. Making, making errors, turning the ball over, 
being aggressive, attacking. Okay. Like, do you, you guys see Russell Westbrook attacking and having turnovers, and y'all say he chokes. I okay, see let me. Guy, but Lamont, I see Matt, a guy Matt, that's Matt, just being aggressive out there trying to make. No, no, no. I wanted to talk to Lamont really quick, and then I'm gonna. I gotta leave here in like. Y'all like call every because y'all call everything choking. No, no, because no, that's not. Hold on, y'all have no separation. Y'all no, see no. a player miss a shot, y'all say he choked. No, KD, that's not. That's not. KD has a bad works. shoot night, he choked. And, and you know why I notice? All, all you got to do is go to the the <laughs> lowest IQ basketball minds on YouTube and <sighs> wait, just wait for KD to have a bad game. If you go to Mookie or Tickets Channel, oh my god, as soon as, oh my god, as, as soon as yeah, these guys have a bad game, now he mentioning them now. Now he mentioning them. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I mention them because it's facts. If they what they do is they wait for great players to have one bad game, and their next video is David Booker choked. He had a bad game. No, having a bad game is not choking. It's okay. They're just, they just calling it for what that's it is. That's so, called, but, but that's that's called low IQ basketball takes. That means that tells me right there you don't understand basketball. If you're that quick to say somebody choked, that tells me you don't understand what the hell was going on on the floor. And you if, if you feel so emotional game, about it, anybody that I called out, tell them to come over here and debate me on it. No, I, I don't even know these can't guys. Talk but okay. Hey, you call everybody. There's a reason why people don't. Yeah, look crazy. Yeah, like Listen, man, at the end of the day, to me, my definition of choking. Bro, is your definition you're... doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but see, hold on. But your definition, <laughs> but your oh, definition hey, Mac, your hey, Mac, why you just won't say what he say don't matter, Mac? That's all you got to say. There's not just one perspective don't matter, Mac. That's all you got to say. There's multiple perspectives. Hey, what you say? You got to take this shit. It don't matter, Lamont. Listen, listen. Yeah, what about what about, about it? No, what about in the series, on, Lamont? Wait, what if you playing bad during the series? Hold on, nah, nigga. You hold on, nigga. nigga. It's my turn, nigga. It's my turn. It's my turn. You are not a piece of media. You can't handle it. My bad. Let me ask SFM one question for SFM. That is the definition of SFM. Because you're a Kobe fan. could not figure out. He could not figure out a zone in his. Okay, you say he didn't figure it out, but Dallas said he did. We'll move on. And you learned how to break zones in middle school. Come on, hold on. You can't tell. You can't come in here and tell me. Use a zone as hold on, excuse, hold on, hold on, her. The Dallas yeah, coaching staff. The Dallas coaching staff said he figured it out. The other people, met, but so how come D Wade it. figured it out? D Wade right, excels we're, in it. Hold on, we'll move. We'll move off of it. We'll digress from that because now you're just trying to talk basketball and you don't even understand what a zone is. You, <laughs> you said must, a zone. No, I do know. You, I was about you, to no, cook you. Don't. I was about okay. to cook you with my grape seed off. Okay, let me ask okay. you a question. What type of zone were they running? Damn. Damn, hella quiet. You got <laughs> Damn, hella quiet. Come on, you got, we're going to put him on the big bro, screen. You speak up. Tell me you what type of zone now. were they running. A zone that LeBron couldn't break. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my goodness. Boy. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Come hold on. on were they running a 2 3? They running a 3 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It was that 32 old, oh, that old man zone. That's all I know. Oh, man, you got to go. That zone, right? Oh, this man said they were running. A I don't know why y'all laughing. Hey, I mean, a, hey, I'm gonna tell you right, right now. If you're a coach, if you run a three-two zone at any high level of basketball from high school on up, you're gonna get cooked unless you really know what you're doing. Don't don't listen to this man and run a three-two zone ever <laughs> in life, bro. Never ever in life try to run a three-two zone. You will get cooked, especially if you come up against one of the teams I'm coaching. I will make sure we we give you a good hundred on, on the scoreboard. Easy. Okay. So, no, they were not running a three-two zone. Okay, so, see, so he's just talking now. This is out of hate. You know, SFM, <laughs> isn't it fair for me to say this? I'm not gonna run around and say Kobe choked in 2011, right? Because that's low basketball IQ talk. It would be much easier for me to just be like, "Damn, Dallas did a great job of containing this team. They made it hard. They took away a lot of reads. Right? They came out, executed defensively." took advantage of some things, our fatigue, all of this, and they just worked as they beat us 4-0. They're just a great defensive output. Or you could go with the low IQ take and say, Kobe choked and give no credit to the Dallas Mavericks. Like he just was just throwing up shots, missing on purpose, just couldn't get nothing to fall, wide open shots. What's more likely? You're talking about one of the greatest scores of all time, just missing shots? Did he choke? Or did Dallas actually execute a great defensive game plan? Yo, my whole thing is... No, that's, is, that's for SFM. No. Say it again. Do, do, do you think Kobe choked in 2011? No. And why do, you, why do you say he didn't choke? He just came out three in a row. He just went back to back. Fatigue? <laughs> oh, man. I'm goofy. 
I mean, that's a really, you can tell the truth. The Lakers just wasn't good, man. They got their ass kicked. Hold on, they, they were good. They had 57 Kobe, wins. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe didn't choke, though. Got the buzz, My whole thing is why you wouldn't look, look at Kobe's performance. You wouldn't look at Kobe's performance, and he said he choked. But when we look at LeBron in 07, we see that Bruce Bowen and the Spurs played you with a basic zone, and you only shot 35% from the field. Yeah, that's the problem. When we what look at 2011, zone? when we go on to 2011, no, 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 and the no, thing SFM. is, it LeBron, was you know, a basic I know zone. Zone. No, 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 it was Herm. a basic zone. No, 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 Herman SFM, y'all call the zone basic. Tell me what zone it was. Because I've studied this. Two zone. three. Two three. It, wasn't no damn two, three. it was a two three zone. It was a matchup. Zone, it was the two three zone. It was the two hands, three man. zone. And team. Bruce Bond was his primary defense. Okay, hold on. It was a matchup. Bruce Bond can't be a primary defender. Y'all gonna get educated Because that was still his primary defender, bro. SFM. Come on, y'all. Hold on, hold on. Herm and SFM. Y'all in the backstage now. Go Google it. Do whatever you gotta do to learn. Easy. Tell me what type of zone the Spurs was playing before you come in here and say that a zone slowed up LeBron. Okay. That's gonna be and, and then, hold on. And then Herm tried to say it was a matchup zone. First of all, Herm, you can turn any zone into a matchup zone. 3-2 matchup zone. 2-3 matchup zone. 1-3-1 one, one matchup zone. 1-4 one, matchup zone. You can turn any zone into a matchup zone. So what matchup zone was it? See, now you're just saying stuff, Herm, and you're talking to somebody to understand the game. So y'all just say it was a basic zone. First of all, ain't no zone in the NBA basic. Man. Ever. You can't run a 2-3 in the NBA unless you really know what you're doing. And, and the coaches that dare do it are taking some major, major risk, especially with a 2-3. Now, you might be able to get away with it if you can put – a, a, a great defender at the top of a 2-3 matchup zone or something like that. We've seen the Warriors run a box and one, but that's an elite defensive team. We saw them do that last year. Ain't no any team just walking around running a natural basic 2-3, even a 2-3 matchup zone, thinking they're going to walk away winning the series. I mean, come on, y'all just be saying stuff, and then, like, y'all just be acting like I'm just supposed to just let it gloss over. No, G, this is not ticket TV in none of them places. You got to come with real takes. And not act like you know what you're oh talking about. My God. They faking it. They, I promise you right now, SFM and Herm are faking it. They don't know oh what the hell God. zone was being played. Oh. They don't know nothing about a this zone. Is crazy. They don't know nothing about a one three one zone. They don't know nothing about any of this stuff. But yet they so quick to say, "Oh, it shut down LeBron." And it was for you got SFM saying it was a two three. You got Herm saying it was a matchup zone. They don't know what the hell type of zone it was. Even if you combine two three and matchup zone, it wasn't even a two three matchup zone. What the hey. hell is y'all talking about? And it's two of y'all trying to defend this nonsense. Hey, hey Lamont. Okay. Like, I know, I know, I know, I know, stuff. I now, Herm, when he come back in, he going to be mad. And then, Herm, go, you turn your I camera on on Ticket TV. Lamont. Turn your camera on over here. I oh, know, I, know, I ain't turning. I ain't turning to no for you. First of all, second of all, second, nah, second, nah, second, second of all, Lamont. Now he coming for ticket. That's crazy. No, no, no. Hold on. Just let me say something. for bad basketball Now, first of all, Lamont, since since you sit up here taken up for professionals that don't, don't that don't know how to get through a zone first of all that's mm. pitiful that you guys use zones as your excuse. favorite player jordan said that he, he, no, he could bring the i zone mean i mean hey, hey, but guess what guess what that was no, the no, of hey, but why are you cutting me off though i listen to y'all like, hey, 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 you shut up and let him talk yeah i listen to y'all screw and talk y'all nah but you sound dumb let her go let her go that's like straight up, bro. Because because a player say he don't like playing playing going against zones doesn't mean he can't you play through like it and figure it out. First of all, I mean you a clown for Dick Ryan. That's you though. I mean it is what it is. I'm my own man and my own skin, home boy. You a, you a JDR. I'm a man, you, my you nigga. I mean I don't even talk about Mike. On, First of all, I don't even talk zones, about my game. Nah, zones, but you, you, you tell you tell your dick right at home, boy. You to shut the damn up. up. That's what you do. That's what you do. You tell the shit. Yo, yo, yo. Y'all got to kill the curse. Hey, let him finish, bro. Yeah, y'all cutting me out, so you know it is what it is. Tell us about the two, three zone. Now, Lamont. You learned that you learned how to break zones in middle school and high school. Okay, tell tell, tell me about the zone. If, 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 no, 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 no. If, if, no I don't okay, Herm, how do you break a one three one match? No, I'm just telling the it is. No, 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 no. If a professional, if a no, professional, Herm, how do you break don't, a one Don't cut me off, Lamont. You cutting me off. In the day, Lamont, if you use if you use the zones as an excuse to slow a professional player down, that lets you know that their IQ is not as good as you as people say it is. If he has so much of a great IQ. 
How come he couldn't figure out that song? How come he couldn't figure out another way to attack the song? So at the end of the day, y'all bigging up these guys and they couldn't figure out the song? Are you a professional? No, bro, no, bro. No, don't ask me nothing. I'm not a professional hey, basketball you, player. You, I'm not, I'm not a nigga capping for on, another nigga either. Y'all protect the nigga. Hold on, y'all, hold on. Y'all, y'all, hold on, y'all. let him finish so I can get to the No, my that. thing is, why are we harping on Oh, there's no thing. Let her finish. And then I'm so y'all, so, so y'all like, so y'all like to defend these guys so much. Y'all get personal. Y'all get sensitive. Y'all getting y'all feelings. At the end of the day, y'all think about what y'all saying. Y'all making excuses for professionals that had a hard time reading the zone and figuring out how to get through a zone. If you guys can't see that, y'all sublime. You know what? Y'all are sad. Y'all are man. They ran every zone. Professionals, bro. Hold you on, learned I'm that finished. stuff in middle school. You learned that stuff in middle school and high school. You damn near learning in the fifth grade how to break through a zone. So, end of the day, if a professional basketball player having a hard time to break through a zone and he's struggling throughout a whole series, when you got multiple games to figure it out, that lets you know that player doesn't have a high high IQ like y'all thought that player had. So, end of the day. Y'all can come with that shit. Y'all can come with that stuff. I mean, and the mud. You can try hey, to degrade these guys and talk bad about her. these guys and try can to expose one question, them on the zone. But you expose yourself. But you expose her. yourself can I ask about one exposing the players that don't have a high IQ. Can I ask one so question? Y'all can her? cut the crap. I ain't gonna answer. I know you're not gonna I'm answer her. Her. I'm I'm I tried to let you talk. I'm just gonna let you finish first. I got one question when you're done. All right. So I'm gonna ask it now. Here, I'm got quiet. All right. Me, me and you both got fifth grade teams. I'm running a one three one matchup zone. So you said you learned it in fifth grade. What would you tell your team to do to beat my one three one matchup zone? Because Herm said we learned this in fifth grade. And y'all, as y'all see, he left the chat. See, when it's time to ask real basketball questions, Herm said you learn how to break a zone in fifth grade. I want anybody on here to tell me what strategy, because first of all, one player can't beat his own. It takes the, the biggest, the best weapon versus the zone is the pass. So what does LeBron James do best? He passes. He has the ball. You so. cannot, first of all, if you drive and try to beat his own by yourself, that's the purpose of a zone. They want you to turn into this ISO score, score trying to score on three people. That would be the dumb thing to do. The best thing you can do against the zone is you pass a team out the zone. You make them rotate. You reverse the ball a ton, You especially a 1-3-1 one, one zone where you got to kick it to the weak side. Now, teams that are elite at this, they're going to have elite on-ball pressure. The number one job of a 1-3-1 one, one matchup zone is to prevent you from doing what? Throwing skip passes. Skip passes. So what did the Spurs focus on with LeBron James? They made it tough for him to throw skip passes. Right. And just because he's taller, there's still a strategy for that. You get up under guys, you chase the ball, you be physical with these guys, you shade guys farther out into those passing lanes. So all you so when Herm says you learn it in fifth grade, no, you don't. <laughs> Herm is lying. Mm -hmm. First of all, there's no fifth green, fifth grade team ever in basketball history that's even has the IQ to run in one three one matchup zone. So they're not even gonna put a team out there in it. Two, three, maybe. Those are the basics. But Herm is lying when he says these things. Herm doesn't understand the zone to this degree. That's why he got up out of here. When it's time to talk real basketball, at the end of the day, only thing he wants to do, he wants to slander LeBron James with absolutely no context. He doesn't understand the game. He talks. They love to talk about these players. They love to denigrate these players. They love to call them failures. They love to say they choke. But when it really comes down to talking X's and O's, you can't really explain what happened on that court other than just saying he choked. That's all they do. So when I hear choked, that tells me you're an idiot. <laughs> That's all it means. It tells me you are stupid. Herm, basketball-wise, is stupid. Herm does not know what he's talking about. God he damn. is. No, I'm no, not. No, he don't. Her Herm is a basketball oh, dummy. People he can don't. say all the capping that they want, but I'm not going to walk around and say Kobe choked just because he lost. Love 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 I'm not going to walk around and say LeBron <laughs> choked. The thing is, this choking label... <laughs> See, look, SFM, but see, SFM just understands he has very limited basketball knowledge. So that's why he He's can joke and laugh. Up by no so, so SFM just kind of knows his basketball knowledge is very, very limited. But when nah, you say mine's through the roof. <laughs> you know the average came in, bro. The average came in. Man, that got messed up, man.
How can they get up? Hey, bro, bro, you, why you got her like that? Bro. Why you had the SFM? Really, SFM. Like if it's guys. a Kobe debate, I'm not. I'm never gonna debate you on Kobe. You you gonna out talk somebody on Kobe for days? Like I give you your props on that topic, but outside of Kobe, it's I, couldn't tr- I couldn't trust you in the debate. Now, if we got a Kobe debate, I'm sending you all day. I'm sending you out there all day, but but nah, not outside of that, I can't give it to you because you. But it don't matter what debate, bro. I know mm-hmm. more about LeBron than LeBron fans, bro. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You a massive liar. Yes, I do, bro. No, you don't. You are a massive liar, bro. Bro, cause that's who I always got to debate with. So yeah, I already yeah, yeah, learned yeah, 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 by time yeah, yeah, yeah. by time like this hard debate, bro. I already learned probably everything you needed to learn before you can even debate about whatever player you finna debate about. I know about every player, every it don't matter which one. It don't matter which one. No, the heck you do not. They ran, they ran every zone in the book for this nigga. Then they ran a one three one on this man. He couldn't get through that. He couldn't, Bro. Got worked by Bruce Bourne, man. <laughs> Bruce <laughs> Bourne. Hey, Hold let on. me say something. Hey, a one Levant, one Levant, Levant, is the, Levant. Is who played that same team in the Western Conference Finals good. next year? Who played that same team in the Western Conference next year without two starters still beat him in a four one series? <laughs> Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Yeah, that's true. Cheers, that's true. Wait, Missing but, two wait, starters. But, Kobe Bryant. What does that mean, though? How'd they beat him? Four one. Hold on. I, I, what you, you know mean? what it means? Let me tell you what it means. Let me tell you what it means. Hey, hey, hey. I would take care of some business, Lamont, because somebody broke it to my car. 2009, the same team to beat him in the playoffs. Kobe beat them team. Then in 2010, the same team to beat him in the playoffs. Kobe beat that team in the finals. Hold on, hold on. I can tell you how to beat a 2-3 zone. Hold on, hold on. I can tell you how to beat a 2-3 zone. That's the easiest zone to beat. No, I'm just saying. That ain't nothing. Like, that ain't nothing. You, you act like that's something special, man. I'm dealing with this stuff out here right now, man. It broke into, my, get broke back into to one of my cars. Yeah, oh, it broke into my one okay, of my cars you. and shit like that. I ain't, ain't no lie. Nah, you got it. You got it. You got it. I, I, I don't run different. for no smoke. I don't want to no smoke, man. You got it. Ain't no, ain't no shaky nigga. Nigga ain't never been shaky. Nigga never ran for nothing, nigga. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man I something special until I beat him one, three, one. Hey, they ain't shit to figure out. That hey, is. Lamont, okay, that I, got, is. I got a question, Lamont. How, how the one, three, one zone is the hardest def- hardest I, def- one of the hardest defenses to go up against. Not, it, not, but it's one of the hardest to perfect on the defensive side as well. Everybody can't run a one, three, one. Bro, they pressing the perimeter, bro. But hold on. How did this video go from talking about, you know, players from back in the day? Because the Kobe wrong. fans can't stand it. Like, the Kobe like, 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 I'm not. I'm not even a Kobe fan. Because, 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 Got over Kobe. That, that we be feeling like that. Kobe like never, how did we get to Michael when he didn't get to Kobe? Kobe, Kobe like that's a film. Nobody, nobody said Kobe, Kobe pa- been past Tim Duncan. Nobody said this stuff. Nobody was long time ago. Only thing no, Kobe passed Tim Duncan in the snitching. No, he didn't. He still but LeBron went to Draymond to go sni- uh, r- ran and snitched about true. Draymond Ray- right or wrong. Draymond already had a certain amount of Bro, why is you talking about street stuff about basketball on here? Bro, I don't like I'm not finna do the nerd. Talk with you, bro. Like, so like, 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 like talk my punk. snitch. You a punk. I'm a punk in real life. Oh, hold on, bro. Oh hey, my god. Here it goes to the What does Kobe god. He hey, one at a time? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, you said what does Kobe what did you oh you said oh you said what's Kobe have over the bronze? That's why I don't like the bronze. Hold on, hold on, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Hold on, be quiet, be quiet. This what we get this what we get in motion. Hold on, be quiet, be quiet. I'm finna. Oh, can I tell you? When did Kobe pass that? Can I tell? You, can I tell? You, bro, come on, bro. He been dead out. What? Bro, bro. Yeah, when? Uh, Shaq, but not Tim we, what, well, we didn't know when LeBron passed that. We oh, didn't know oh, when oh, LeBron oh, passed that. Oh, oh, I don't. Oh, I, I don't oh, even oh, know if LeBron oh, over Curry right now because oh, Curry oh, took oh, that generation oh, over. So I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I was wrong. What's why they can't have Curry over LeBron? Curry took his. Curry came and conquered. Curry came and conquered. Before Curry came and conquered. So yes, yeah. Curry always had the better team. Though. KD, the thing, the thing is, the thing is, 
KD, KD even comes out and say that man Michael and Kobe, man, they the greatest of all time. This is who I try to emulate my game out. Bro, KD, KD, Curry, all them, they not too far behind LeBron. KD and Curry not too far behind LeBron. Curry need to probably at least one more chip to get over LeBron just all the way. Like, I'm not Kobe was a role mm -hmm. player before Shaq left. Like, right, come on, y'all, hold on, y'all. Oh my God! Oh my God! Just stop. Just leave, bro. Just leave. Just leave. Just stop, Shaq bro. Left. Just leave. Just leave the part. Just leave, bro. Just leave. Leave. Bro. Hold on, leave. Hold on, leave. I'm, trying to say I'm trying to say something. Look, y'all, we gotta go one at a time because can't nobody hear nothing. All right, can I can kind of respond back can to I the D dude, bro? Quick? Hold on, let me hold on. Sir. I gotta let Dale De Niro. Yeah, yeah, let him talk. Let him talk. And I gotta let Wes just pulled up. I gotta let Wes get his take too. I'm not trying to have people just sitting here waiting because y'all talking. And then we still gotta give. And lastly, we gotta give her my opportunity to tell us how you uh, beat a one three one match. Man, tell them how they bust your window, man. I don't know how. I don't know how to beat no one three one or none of that. They just get on here, and start chatting. What you got on this Delta now? I mean, like I said, I, I don't really. Get, I mean, my thing is that I'm looking at the title, right? It says 80s players cannot compete with today's NBA players. Out of everybody that playing the NBA today, why is LeBron the first name brought up? But these these KDRs and JDRs hate LeBron so much. How come they can't bring up stuff? How come they can't bring up uh KD? How come they can't bring up somebody else? It's always LeBron. Like that just shows how much how much of a threat he is to these uh what you call it? Bro, they bro, bro, they, how is he a threat to Curry and KD? Curry and KD beat him in the finals. They not a threat. He not a threat to them. They they, they, they stumped on him. Like I said, the first name that everybody always bring up is LeBron. They're they not even they like when we talk about breaking down the games today. We talking about like breaking down different defensive schemes, different schemes, offenses used. They don't have the type of basketball intelligence to do that. So the, so the immediate thing they start doing, man, LeBron choke LeBron. Like it's a bunch of goofies on here. Like that's it's sad. First that was thing, it. LeBron choke LeBron choke, but they can't even say okay. What defense was the Mavericks playing? And then what's crazy is that same the same Mavericks team that they claim LeBron choked against. What y'all don't y'all know that the, the Mavericks what they did for LeBron, they did the same shit against Kobe too, and they did it even better. But oh, LeBron choked, but Kobe didn't choke even though they they, they played defense more efficiently. Kobe came out three straight five. And then Kobe, not to mention Kobe got. Smacked. It's not the same circumstances, like, you know, like, bro. I'm not, I'm not about to be debating over here. With it's not KD the same, sir. Let, let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Kobe, Kobe, and the Lakers didn't have a parade talking about we're going to go get our third it championship. Matter, talking about we're not exactly, we're exactly one, two, matter. three. No, 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 no. Be quiet. Be, be quiet. Kobe, Kobe, the trade. Lakers. What the Lakers were considered no super team. You were considered a super team. Then you had a parade. You said not a one, not two, they, 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 not they three, not four, not five. Not six, lanes. not seven. See, you disrespectful. You like to talk over people all day. So you automatically lose a debate with me because you can't because you're not gonna get, talk over me. They, you're they not gonna talk over me, so you're gonna lose a debate with me. You feel me? You just another one added to the dust. I'm asking you just another one added to the dust. I'm asking everybody else can let you talk, but you're not gonna let nobody else talk. No, you can't talk. Lamont, mute me because I don't want to hear him. You feel I'm just going to keep talking. I don't want to hear nothing else from this dude. I can only hear myself. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to ask a question, Lamont. I, bro. I'm, no, my, my Hold on. Let, let's ask something from finishing and we're going we gonna, to, we did, you can get to all the questions. All right. Bro. got to clean up the answer, though. Bro, bro, I said this. It wasn't the same circumstances. It wasn't that LeBron, Kobe came into, came into the next season and said, oh, I'm going to go uh, 3 P. But LeBron came into the next season and said, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. Saying they was going to bring the champion, uh, championship to Miami. He, he was cocky about it. Had a whole parade like you won the finals before you even started the season. Talking. Stop calling me, girl. I ain't. But yeah, but yeah, you done? so through, so through them circumstances and for you to go to the finals and then all of the fourth quarters combined, all of the fourth quarters, you had zero points from the field and all of the fourth quarter combined in, in, in 2011, you only had one point. And that one point came from a free throw that you had in some game, some game in the free throw, uh, at the free throw line, but you only made one free throw. 
out of that out of them whole five games in the fourth quarter. You didn't have no points from the field out of five games in the fourth quarter. So is that look that is in choke in your bench that averaged 18 points per game, man? You bench out was ever to able to outscore you? Yes, that is choking. Yes. Can I, can I, ask, a, can I ask a question? Can I have a bottle? So you said that, you know, the, the Heat, they had a big parade, blah, 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 not one, not two, not three. Did Kobe not – did the Lakers – one, one did the Lakers not come off of two straight championships? That's one. And two, did Kobe not text LeBron, pick a team, pick a city, we still coming back next year to beat y'all. So they was expected to go to the finals the next year. Like, he literally texted them that. Like, what? What? That's a fact. That's a fact. Kobe texted LeBron, pick a team. You can look it up. I'm not – like, I don't be capping like you do. Texas LeBron, pick a team, pick a city. It don't matter. Next where, team, where, 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 where can I find it? Oh my god! Let me where can I find it? Literally right after the twenty ten. What does this have to do with the eighties players the being game. able to compete that, with? That's what I'm saying. I don't today. even. I don't even like talking about this LeBron and Kobe. It's just that these KDRs and JDRs they, they hate LeBron, but they love LeBron at the same time. It's sad. Oh, bro, you Bron- that, that is true. Uh, no, 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 no. I think I think the point that we missed, y'all, is this. For both players, they had a 20-year career. So, yes, they didn't have their best moments in 2011. But overall, like, why are we still harping on strictly it's just sad. Dallas? They got to go to something that happened 12 years ago just to bring, which, bring down. both the of them. I will go to 2014. No, 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 I think we missed the point. This is why we got off topic. I think the point is this, and I, d- I didn't even want to get on it this long. The point is this. if you, I don't care if you call LeBron James a choker. If that's how you look at basketball – if that's how you define players having bad games, I'm fine with that. There's no issue with that because just like uh, the the Mac guy, he said, my version of choking is this. Well, I just say that if that's your definition of choking, and the one thing we know is that all players have bad games, then you need to equally disperse how you label players as chokers because one thing we know that's been consistent throughout NBA history is that all great players from Michael Jordan to Bill Russell to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, they've all had bad games. They've all had bad moments. That means they all are chokers to the same degree as LeBron. And that's why I say it's bad basketball talk just to say choke because this logic of choking as defined by you guys can be spread to anybody, including Kobe Bryant, because we know he had a ton of bad games. And that, like I said, that does not, to me, that's not choking. That's not a, a bad game. It's not, not like game. LeBron. It doesn't matter. But, <laughs> but, but matter. the thing is, is again, well, that now, now what you're trying to do, SFM, you're trying to, you're trying to, you're trying to define a level of choking. So how did now, now that he's at the highest say, level, Lamont, but you're right. You said <laughs> not like LeBron, that means you have levels to choking because that, that brings a whole new element to the game that you're going to have to try he to He showed me a whole new element of choking. No, it, no he did <laughs> not. He just showed you what you game. How, how do you think I'm supposed to feel, Lamont? Oh, What's wrong man. with having a bad game? Lamont, how do you think I'm up? Lamont, a bad game. He had his first two finals. He had bad series. Do you not think, not bad game. Do you not think we can't dig through Kobe's resume and find mm-hmm. multiple bad games that we could just label as choking? Listen, we can, but not at that so is altitude. Choking? Not at that altitude. Okay, so, oh so hold on. He's, no, so Kobe, not is just at a, Kobe is just a choker to a lesser L- degree. Listen, no. What I'm saying, coming in, no. Listen, we have James Harden. That's a choker. LeBron is not on that level. So LeBron is a choker to the ninth no, degree. No, 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 no. James Harden, Harden is a choker to the tenth okay, degree. Look, okay, look. James Harden is, is the choker to the twelfth degree. LeBron okay. is about to choke it to the But nice what's the tip. common theme in what you're saying? They all choke. No, exactly. no, the co- no, no. The thing, but the thing is, with LeBron is, LeBron is. When we talk about your choking, we're talking about on uh, sometimes how you had the best teams in the world. You feel me? Best we're talking. To, we're talking. We're talking about you. Just hold on. We're you talking about you. Just you can only bring up one example of LeBron choking. That's the sad part. Like you. No, 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 no. We can't. No, we can't. Because if I want to say that LeBron first two finals were trash, 07 to eleven, they were. And if I want to say in twenty fourteen, and, and if I want to say in twenty, I didn't get to twenty fourteen. Kevin Durant swept them. Is that Kevin Durant swept them? Kevin Durant you wonder why, why, why so many you wonder why Spurs so many people try to Lamont. attack you with COVID. Lamont. Lamont. It's because you try to use Joe. You're picking out three series 
Michael, my, okay, guess what? guess what? Guess what? Call me talk. LeBron talk. Michael Jordan ain't never talk. Yes, he Michael did show. Yes. 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 Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan yeah. Michael 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 Not to that degree. Not to that degree. Like Danny Ainge in a elimination game. No, it's not. Michael Jordan before, but not to that degree. No, yes, to that degree. Yes, on, no, no, he did not. No, he did not. Uh, you never to that no, degree. See, so no. Yes, he he what do y'all mean? Now y'all, mean? Now y'all got. Watch. Now y'all just added a new element to this. Because now <laughs> y'all say he didn't choke to that degree. Now y'all got, got degrees. He literally got outscored by Danny Ainge in an elimination. Well, what game. do y'all mean? What do y'all mean? What do y'all mean by degree? To that degree, when it what, what is these degrees of choking that y'all now classify? They just making up. They just retired. Just making up anything. Sad. Thank you. Y'all just they got y'all to. say it. Yeah, you only start running around talking about choking because you don't know how to really explain what you just saw happen. They pick and choose what they want to say choke. When if it's somebody that they like, then they're gonna be like, oh well, he ain't choke because blah 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 blah. Whether what, 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 what if it's LeBron? Well, that's all it is. We know hey, that that's all it is. That. This player oh, here didn't do that. This player here didn't choke. Or you could just give credit to, to other teams that were able to slow a good player down because it's not often that teams are able to shut down and slow down players like LeBron, the Kobe's, the Jordans, the KD's, the James Harden's. It's not often like you guys can really only run to moments because these guys don't become MVPs of the league because they choke away every single game. They've done more good than bad in the NBA. But y'all done handpicked all these weird moments to say they chokers. And they gave no either. credit to any good defensive performances. You ain't gave no credit to the good coaching strategies. You just say they choked. And all these other teams is just walking trash cans. And they should have just beat everybody. Lamont, can I can I? Hey, just man, all I know is that every like that? time the Lakers beat beat the Spurs in the 2000s, Kobe led every series. Out of four series that the Lakers won, Kobe it's led every one. The Spurs choked. Led every one. The weak old Spurs. I think anybody struggling with those weak old Spurs is struggling. That's FM. That's FM. Did Tim Duncan choke when he lost to Kobe? Hey, man, he shot 42% as a big the whole series. In the last game, he shot 36% in game choke? five. Hey, hey, man, nah, he ain't choke. He ain't choke, but he ain't performing <laughs> good in 08. Hey, he ain't do the, Hey, he ain't performing good in 08, though. I don't know how you shoot 42% on Paul Gasol guarding your buddy and Kobe missing two starters. He's not goofy. You missing Andrew Bynum and Trevor Reese. He still let Kobe beat you. He just came back off of two knee surgeries. And he playing on a broken finger. Oh, my God. The bean is crazy. Yeah, bro, because Kobe's doing hey, so all can, uh, he said, So he can said, the 80s players okay. match up with the players of today's game, though? No. The top ones, yes. No. The top. The top oh, my top. God. Who's, not who's saying, saying no? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, who's what? saying no? Y'all think the top Did LeBron not the snitch on Draymond Green, Lamont? We don't care about none of that. That's the fact we not talk about that no more. I we talk about the 80s players. But, 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 yes, exactly. Kobe snitched on Shaq. What are you talking I'm about? sorry, but no, I agree with Lamont. They, would not, be, they would not be they would not be all Next. the way elite in this in this era. I would have to agree to Lamont to a certain era. I don't believe that Larry Bird will be the same Larry Bird if Larry Bird was the Oh no, not every player because it's certain oh, players you could no, it's, it, it's certain no, players it's, it's certain tier. players you could just point out and say by his size and the type of athleticism he played and the type of weight that he played. So that Rob he could Sesson, be so Rob Sesson, half of them players Larry back Bird in the day would they would they wouldn't even play. But I'm team. sorry, Larry Bird is not gonna be the dude that I'm gonna look at and say he's gonna be in this bit. I'm sorry. So why I'm sorry so why would Larry Bird not be why would Larry Bird not be? Okay, because from nineteen from nineteen from future. 1980, from 1980 to 1984, when we talk about Larry Bird and his prime, just those four years, those four years in a row, he was shooting 20 percent, literally from the field, four years in a row in his prime. Okay, four oh years God. in a prime. Y'all can go look at it now. You lost me with that one. You no, lost me with that. No, one. no, no. Listen, what I'm saying. Listen, what I'm saying. No, listen, what I'm saying. No, listen, what I'm saying. Go look at 80. Listen, listen. Go look at 81, 80. 80, 81, 82, 83, and 84 a season. His prime was very short, too. That's why. So, so those four years, the, those, four years those four years, those four years right there, those four years, you go look at it. He shot 20% no, four I, I straight years from the three. Oh you feel me? Larry Bird, Larry Bird, listen, listen. 
Listen, Larry Bird wasn't even making threes like that. Let's be honest. That's because threes back then weren't that valuable back then, sir. I'm okay, sorry. okay. So listen, what I'm saying we all know the lower sure. that you, the lower tip no, that you have, your you field goal Mario. percentage should even be higher. Was a great if it, if it's attempts for Larry Bird attempts to be one attempt, sometimes zero point eight attempts a game. For your three not to, to be 20 some percent from the three for four straight years, oh, so, so, to so me, you was so wasn't that good of a so three point shooter at that time. Somebody was hardly shooting. So, was Larry Bird a good? That is what I have to ask about that. So, Larry Bird so Larry Bird wasn't a good three point shooter. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's he a good three? I'm not saying he's a bad three point shooter. Hold on, let me just ask him a question. So that's your argument of why Larry Bird. Oh be no! Not uh, not only that. Not only that. The um. Okay, I'm just saying. Continue. I'm not. Please listen. Continue. I'm saying. Listen. What I'm saying here. I'm just saying Larry Bird would not be Larry Bird. I'm not saying Larry Bird. Who would, would he it be then? Larry be Bird is not going to come into this Carl NBA. Larry Bird is not coming to the NBA right now and running no three MVPs in a row. And that, if that's not going to look like that for him, that, that he's not going to get that. that close. What the heck? Nah, he's still a cook. He don't have he's still a cook. He, oh, hey, he's Jordan. still a cook, but he's not getting no three MVPs playing. in a row. Two thousands, it don't matter what you're talking about. Two thousands to twenty tens. I'm sorry, man. He's not getting three MVPs in a so row, man. That's up to y'all. Who down Larry Bird in today's Ooh. game? Who is shut down Larry Bird? You say what? Who is shut down Larry Bird? You say who was shut down Larry Bird? We have plenty of dudes besides now. We have dudes. We have dudes that's up at 49, 48 inch verticals. You said who, Ooh, yeah. who would shut down they, Larry Bird? They could play as um, I would love to put on, I would on, love on, to put me, a Draymond me, Green. Me, wait, hold on, hold I would love to see Draymond Green guard Larry Bird. I would love to see Draymond Green guard Larry Bird. I would love to see I would love to see a prime Kawhi Leonard guard Larry Bird. I would love let me ask this man a question. Let me ask this man a question. So you mentioned verticals, right? Yeah. You mentioned vertical, right? Okay. So didn't Do hold on, hold on. Let me ask this man a question. Didn't Dominique Wilkins have a very high vertical? He's not a defender. He's not a yeah, defender. Michael no, Jordan but you mentioned vertical. Yeah, but then, oh, but then okay, okay. But then Dominique did, Wilkins, didn't Dominique, didn't Dominique didn't, Wilkins didn't, handle Larry Bird. He no, Bird what gave him fifty. Larry Bird, Larry Bird, Larry Bird couldn't go. Larry Bird couldn't do nothing with Dominique Wilkins. Though, so Could Larry really... Bird guard right. Dominique Wilkins? All right, bro. You Could Larry listen? listen. Answer, Larry the answer the question. Answer the question, guy. Could Larry Bird guard Dominique Wilkins? Dominique Wilkins guys. Larry Bird. Larry Bird murdered Dominique Wilkins. When was Dominique Wilkins a good defender? And you said, guys. Larry Bird. Exactly. When was he a great defender? When did we? When? When? Twenty seven. But no, you, you mentioned vertical. Okay, and I mentioned vertical. Okay, vertical okay, that's my point. No okay, okay Bird, that's my point. Yeah, okay, so okay, look, and Larry Bird and Larry Bird cannot guard. Bird. Okay, look, Larry Bird could not guard Dominique Wilkins. So I'm saying that this era, you have the type of dudes that have either same type of athleticism or they got a little bit more athleticism mm -hmm. today. But Man, I'm saying I'm when you're dealing with a dude, when when you dealing when you when you dealing with dudes like that, they also they gonna have defense on the same the side of the ball. I'm sorry, he's not going to. You be are that you right? Same you right about that? So that's the only thing but you said right in your whole comment. Is you sorry? Because so you sound <laughs> sorry as hell talking about Larry Bird <laughs> wouldn't be able to kill in this day's game. You right about that? So Everything else you said was wrong, but when you ended it by saying I'm sorry, you was right about that. Cause then everything else you said first. Is you Larry, said well, Larry Bird. First you said that, why, why you interrupt me? I let you talk. I let me talk. Now, when you said a vertical would be the problem for Larry Bird, then I bring up Dominique Wilkins. We all know Dominique Wilkins had one of the highest verticals in the game, yeah, and he killed Dominique that, Wilkins. Let Man, you. let hold him up, talk. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Let, me let me finish. Let me okay, talk. So, let me finish talking. Okay, so not even Dominique. I know Wilkins. you don't want to hear this shit because it's about true. Michael Jordan. Man, I, 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 I can't tell y'all Larry Bird, Bird, Bird fan. Man, Man, I, I, no, 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 no. All right, so I already gave you. Really So let me let me give you some more eighties players that would have been fine. Charles Barkley would have been fine. Carl Malone would have been fine. Kim Olajuwon would have been fine. Patrick Ewing would have been fine. Of course, Jordan would have been fine. Be, Isaiah Thomas would have been fine. Dennis Johnson would have been fine. It's a no, whole would, bunch. No, James Slow moving Worthy would have been fine. Kareem would have been fine. Magic would have been Kareem fine. I agree with. 
Alright, all right, listen, listen, so everybody answer this. Everybody answer Your this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I did, hold on. I'm gonna answer this. I'm gonna answer this. Let him let him answer this. Okay, if Larry Moses Bird would have been fine. Okay, look, look. If Larry Bird was to come in the NBA right now, right? And uh, NBA right now, I'm talking about right now. Is he oh no 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 let me ask something? Let me ask something. Let me ask it. Is he a top five player? What age? What year? Yeah. Possibly. Possibly. No, no, yes. everybody listen to what, what, what I'm saying. What, what, everybody and this is when I'm through my point. Listen to what I'm saying. Is Larry Bird a top five player if he comes to play in the NBA? Yes. No. Yes. 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 Okay. 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 So look, so look, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. For majority, a lot of people say no. Some people say yes. But the people, uh, the, but, but, the, but, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. Hold on. Hold on. Look, bro. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm saying, I'm saying if he's not even going to be a top five player, that's what I'm saying. He's not no, going to be I that same Larry Bird. Name me five players in the league better than Larry Bird. Right now. Oh, 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 that oh that's easy. That's easy. Nicole, Nicole, Yo, Nicole, Yo, Jokic, Luca, Giannis, Giannis. Now you lost me with that one. That's the same. Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant, LeBron James. I'm sorry. You said uh, Nicole, Yo, okay. Jokic is better than Larry Bird. Bird. You said Giannis How is Luka better than Larry Bird. Yes, yes, oh yes. I'll tell you the yes. Yes, you what? Hey, you was right though. You was right, bro. You proved me right again. Yeah, when you say you yes. sorry, you sorry as hell. Nicola Yoke is going to be the second wife for the win three MVPs in a row. Nicola Yoke is going to be the third. Larry Bird is a better shooter than Giannis. Man, I'm taking Yoke. I'm taking Yoke. You taking Yoke to Larry Bird? Yoke is not better than Bird. I ain't never seen no talent like Yoke. I ain't never seen no talent like Yoke. So, Will Chamberlain wasn't like Yoke? Will Chamberlain. Ain't nothing, like ain't nothing like Yoke. Ain't nothing like Yoke. Ain't nothing. Nothing. Hey, nothing. Orange he, orange he, nothing. He wasn't. He just wasn't no solid passer. Oh, you think because he holds the ball in his hand? Man, he was that bad, man. That when he when he left Why the league in the sense, he was that bad for that, man. He's that bad for that, man. He must have not never played basketball. Why do people always call Bo Chamberlain a stat pad? Why the hey, like yeah, he's that bad. Hey, 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 we're trying to say, dude, the average 50 in a year that went on to the playoffs, the average 15 lesser points than 50, man. I'm not trying to hear about that. Ain't that the same dude that averaged 30 for a regular season? But when you go into the, hold on, but when you oh, go into the playoffs, he averaged 24. He averaged 24 in the playoffs, but he averaged 30 in the regular? Yeah, ain't he the same person that dropped from 24 in the playoffs, went to 18 in the finals? Is you crazy? That Will Chamberlain, that's who you talking about? He's ready to Bill Russell. Oh, 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 what about the Cowboys? Uh-uh. Listen, listen, listen. His every every production, whether it's when, when it go to regular playoffs and finals, his production dropped down. When you go to regular playoffs, his production dropped down. He ever sees less of points. Let him talk fast and talk loud. His production dropped down. Lamont, 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 when you average 50 and, and you drop 15 less of points, what that's called, bro? Your production been dropped down, sir. You do know that Kobe talk fast and talk loud. That don't mean nothing, bro. For real. You know that Kobe uh, playoff production drops drop down from the regular season too. No, it don't. This how I know he. This Jokic how I know he just talked. Hey, hey, everybody, everybody, y'all hear what he, he just said? Now Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant average. No, no, let me finish. Kobe Bryant averaged twenty five in the regular. When you go to to the playoffs, it go up to twenty five point six. He had his field goal percentage. Hey, man, drink his some water, bro. Percent, listen, Take his field goal percentage is forty four. It's forty four point seven in the regular. Then when it goes to the playoffs, it go to forty four point eight. His his regular his regular uh three point percentage is thirty two percent. It go up to thirty three percent in the playoffs, higher than Larry Bird's. I bet you didn't know his field three point percentage was higher than Larry Bird's. You feel me? So I don't know what you're talking about. His field goal percentage go up. His three point percentage go up, and, and he averaged twenty five point six. Talking about his playoff production going on. It sounds stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about, son. Any number six steals all time in the playoffs. Any number six steals all time in the playoffs. He said Nikola Jokic is better than Larry Bird. Man, Nikola, yo, man, listen, man. Come on, man. Hey, listen, man. We know, Wait, listen, no, everybody no, tell the truth, man. We know, we know Larry Bird ain't the... Yo, SFM, would you say Jokic is better than Kareem? Hold up. No, 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 no. Nah, man, listen, listen. Man, we all know Larry Bird ain't finna come beat top three 
forward in the league right now. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Nah, for real. It's all serious right now, bro. Top three. He not even going to be on top three, four, bro. It's all serious. You talking about the same Nikola Jokic who can't guard nobody? Listen. He's the worst defensive player than Larry Bird. Larry Bird. Who Larry Bird going to guard? <laughs> Who Larry Bird going to guard? He played better defense than Jokic. Exactly, bro. bro. For the 80s? For the on, 80s? For the 80s. That's for the 80s. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. FFM, 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 what is you talking listen, about? Listen, no, no, Bro, no, he would have to go against Kevin Durant. He would have to go against Kawhi Leonard. He would have to go against LeBron James. No, he would he have to go against the Greek Freak. He's not going to. Man, Kawhi Leonard would handle Larry Bird. It don't matter on both sides of the ball. He's going to look better than Larry Bird, too. How is Kawhi? Hey, hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, I ain't going to knock Kawhi. What Kawhi going to do to Larry Bird? Prime Kawhi Leonard. Three time defensive player of the year back to back. Hold on, y'all. Are you talking about Mr. Low Management? Like, you talking about Mr. Low Management? The two time finals MVP. You talking about the guy who plays for the Clippers and lives in San Diego? Three time defensive player of the year. Who hardly ever in the game. Mr. 20 to 30 games a year. We talking about that guy? Talking about Corn Roll. Talking about Corn Roll. Y'all don't do that. Kawhi we talking about Mr. New Balance. We talking about the guy who wear New Balance shoes. I got a quick question. We talking about that guy. The guy who wear New Balance shoes. The guy who wear Larry Bird. Who could Kawhi? Real talk. Who could Larry Bird? 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 Who
Oh, my fault. No, I wanted to ask. So, SFM, real quick, do you think that Nikola Jokic back in the 80s would have won three MVPs in a row? Uh yeah it's, yeah it's a possibility no no he sounds sick in your head no he was sick how 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 how, how? listen listen what was Larry Bird Larry Bird never led the NBA in, in the top ten Larry Bird and some dunk on only two people that never led the NBA bro in Larry Bird right? what does that mean though? was averaging so, twenty I'm with a broken back I'm right? just saying it's yeah, when you have a dude that? like Jokic when, when you have a dude like Jokic which is in this era he to led the NBA in multiple categories right. them, just our basic things just our basic things and if you think he can't come into that era and be a nope. facilitator and he's going to be if he played in the 80s then like then what year would he be born? he's going he's he's to bring 60, all right? the big men up 60s or 70s that means Jokic will not have the luxury of, that era, though. of of of, you know of being that. able to see the first passing big men of those eras see Jokic learned from oh, being able to see bro yeah. if he was but born in that talk, era man, man, man but we're talking about right now we're talking about Jokic right now man we're talking about Jokic wouldn't be a top 5 center listen listen I'm sorry I'm sorry bro Jokic 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 Jokic
was ahead of his time. That's why it was so hard to defend, the way he can make shots, turn around, fade away, the size and passing, the rebound and what he did. The same with the Dr. J's. If you think about all the great players of the 80s, they all were ahead of their time. That's what made them great. And, and teams struggle with adjusting to what they did great. Yeah. So what's happening is when we see Bird do those things against those players, it looks otherworldly because they never saw that before. Players today have seen Larry Bird 50,000 times over. And so the things that Bird was able to do against 80s defenses and players – just don't see it pulling off the same. Now, that doesn't oh. take away from Bird being great in his own era. And this is why I say stop trying to take those players from that era, throwing them into our era, trying to convince us that they would be great. Because the problem is when you Come watch the footage as a coach, I'm, as a coach, I'm looking at Bird and I'm saying with, with, a, with competent defenders in, in, in certain types of zones, I'm not worried about that. Too. Oh, yeah. He could just going to take the slow mid-range. All he do is trying to take that slow mid-range. He's trying to rise up and take the slow mid-range. But when you're talking about a guy in Jokic, and this is why I don't get on SFM for this Jokic tape, Jokic right now, he's doing something that's ahead of his time. This is why teams are struggling with defending him because when you hear other NBA players talk about Jokic, they talk about how slow and methodical is, but yet they can't figure out how to defend it. As a seven-footer, the way he can pass, the seat of floor, make score 30 at will. They talk about how easy it is for the man to score his touch around the rim, and he can still make threes. So I'm almost positive. I got a question for you, I'm almost positive as the game progresses, we're probably going to see more big men develop the skill sets that Jokic has, and it'll get normalized. And when we look back in time, somebody's going to be able to say the same thing I'm saying about Bird. LeBron, LeBron. that's evolution. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Mute your background. You got noise in your background. You never done What you hear, Tom? Hello? Yeah, you can hear me. That ain't me. Hold on. Let me ask LeBron a question. Hold on. I'm not saying Bird is a bad player, but I'm not going to act like the things that where I'm I saw him do in the 80s is something brand new that couldn't be stopped today. He's we, more skilled than Jokic. He's not. Hold on. Hold on. Hold true. on. Back deaf. This is the same analogy that I just gave about a, a high school player playing at a class 1A school, averaging 30, but and not getting no D1 looks, even though coaches are coming to watch him play. But a guy could be playing at a 4A school, averaging 10 points a game, but get an offer from Kentucky. It that doesn't matter what it looked like against lesser or more inferior defenses. At the end of the day, it wouldn't work against elevated and better defenses of today. It won't. It won't look the same when you do it against oh better God. defenses. Man, I don't. I, I don't get what they oh, don't get about that about that Lamont. Lamont, look, look, Larry Bird. Y'all think Larry? Y'all think Larry Bird come do that slow mid range, bro? Me, is y'all serious? Let me ask Lamont a question, He's man. Deadly off Everything the ball. he do is slow, bro. It's a one thing. Self pass. He just don't pass. Hold on, hold on, y'all. It's one thing. Hold on, I'm deadly. At the YMCA, I'm not <laughs> deadly <laughs> when I go to the pro am run. So are you yeah, saying the A's YMCA? Not the YMCA. Hold on, hold on y'all, Wes. Hold on. Y'all talking too much. Y'all missing my whole point, and this is where I think people try to say is slander on Bird when it ain't slander. What I'm saying is if he's doing it against inferior competition, and you inferior like you, he's, he, he's not doing it against the same defenses that we see today. He's not. So for you to say he's oh, anybody boy. can look skilled against lesser competition. Okay. It's How is it lesser competition? How? It is lesser competition. Oh, the oh my God. God. <laughs> the defenses were not as good as what we see today. And now just because you guys <laughs> just because you guys don't understand defense and you guys just want to say that there's no defense being played today, it don't mean it's true. Y'all just say that people y'all say that because y'all don't understand defense. That's you're a numbers saying. guy, though, Lamont. So listen to this. I, I don't want to hear the numbers. Now, on, I just know that what Larry Bird was Hold doing. on. I just got done listening to your I idiot know, analogy about I YMCA. I, I understand. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is this. <laughs> y'all, 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 I don't want, y'all going to flip this as Spurs slander. Keep Bird in the 80s. Quit trying to get me to, to, to try to 
estimate Bro. what he would do in this era. It's when not about I, when estimating. I cannot honestly say it would translate very well. Y'all got to stop I'm trying saying, to do that. This is where you this this is where you ahead, slander those players. So why you, is that, 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 that thing flow rising up? Hold on, hold on. Y'all keep y'all mm -hmm. keep y'all so desperately want to say that these old players can come to this area and cook. Y'all don't realize. Easily. Y'all don't realize. No, they couldn't. Go ahead. Easily, bro. They could. Hold on. Hey, can I explain? Can I explain? Forty-five points per game. Where's your more talented? Lamar, can I ask you one question, sir? You Hold on, what? Compare people who play in the slow '80s era. I'm just trying to ask you a question. I can't hear nothing because everybody keeps talking. Today's game. Y'all keep y'all just y'all y'all never give players credit for being great in the era. Y'all have to just bring them to these we other eras. But don't just to discredit Jokic. players today. I'm just trying to ask you a question. It's better than Bird. Go ahead, ask the question, bro. Thank you, hey Lamont. So, would you say there's a difference between regular season defense? And playoff defense, would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. So, since there's a difference between when a regular season team is playing another team, they don't prepare the same way as when it's a playoff series and the other team is going up against the same team, they know their plays, they're able to lock in on that same player. So, why is it that Jokic doesn't do – the same oh thing God. he does oh in the postseason that he does in the regular season. That's your question. Because he didn't play in the oh, 80s. That's why. Film, that's a very easy question to answer. First of all, and this is what. Yes, it's a question. Hold on. First of all, pace slows down, and in, in, in not only in the playoffs. Secondly, when we talk about Jokic, when a team can lock in and game plan specifically for you, they can just just by just that naturally is going to take away from your game. It's going to make it harder for you to do what you do great. Secondly, wow. Jokic hasn't had been afforded, uh, other than one time, he truly hasn't been in, afforded the ability to play with his team healthy in the playoffs. He hasn't played with his team at 100% strength in the playoffs. So for me, I give him credit. I give him credit for putting his team even in a position to be there in the playoffs at those seeds to even compete. Y'all want to get on him about losing when he gets there? At the end of the day, it takes a team to win. No, and we, he just hasn't had a full cast around him to win at the level y'all want him to win. Y'all oh expect it. So y'all can cry about it, but it, just like the guy that was in here trying to say Kobe won these championships by himself, as we easily proved, he did not win them by himself. I don't know why y'all want Jokic. Y'all holding him to this championship standard of winning championships by himself when nobody said what he does individually can just go win you championships. It takes coaching, takes a great organization, takes players staying healthy, takes a whole bunch of things to fall in line. Yet you're trying to convince me that he's not this dude because it hasn't led to championship success yet. Wow. And he's still playing. There's still a potential for the man to get chips. It it's not like he's gonna retire next year. No, I got I gotta ask you a question for real. Have y'all have y'all ever seen a player like Jokic? Like for real. Now I'm gonna ask y'all, have y'all ever seen a player like Jokic in NBA history? He's a product of evolution. Hold on, can I just go real quick? But but you ain't never seen no player like him in evolution. Will Chamberlain with dogs. Hold on, hold on. It's funny how y'all keep saying that Jokic is trash in the playoffs, but his playoff numbers are better. Man, if y'all say something about Bill Chamberlain this year, I'm going to cook you. It's funny. Well, I swear to God, I'm going to cook you. I mean, he's winning in the playoffs. He's trash in the playoffs, but his playoff numbers are better than his regular season numbers. Who said he's trash in the playoffs? Hey, fellas. Hey, fellas. Can I make a point real quick, fellas? Because, you know, I don't want to talk over nobody. Can I make a point real quick? So, about about Larry Bird and, like, all the greats, right? The point that y'all missing with a great player is is the mental, is the up like the upstairs aspect, being able to see the game with quick speed and quick reactions. So you mean to tell me a Larry Bird in this era, better technology, he's clearly going to be in better shape, stronger. Oh God, that's the with, listen, thing I've bro, ever heard, bro. I can't finish my point, bro. No, bro, bro I can't talk. finish my Let point. No, this is La La Land talk. No, nah, no. Nah, no, it's not La La Land. This is La La Land talk. It's realistic, bro. It's not realistic. It's realistic. See, this is what y'all try to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hold on. First of all, I can't finish my point. No, you cannot I finish. I hate else, it when bro. people give these weird old points talking about if you put these players from the past in this era and you give them technology. First of all, this technology, ain't. I ain't never seen a piece of technology make you a better hooper. I ain't <laughs> getting in the goddamn gym shooting the basketball is what makes you better. 
Ain't no goddamn technology. Just go get oh a good. No, go get your, go so get a, no go get medicine. Hold on. All you got to do to get better at the game of basketball is get in a gym, get in a lab, start working on your craft. All right, so I can marry no, everybody. No, it that. ain't no finishing none of these no, stupid no, points. No, 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 listen. Y'all be trying to push these the retarded, technology. dumb points on this channel. And I'm not about to let y'all keep getting this retarded talk off. And it's not real basketball talk. Y'all doing video game talk. Go play video games if you want to do La La Land fantasy fake basketball talks talking about if you put them in this era right oh if you give him technology right he would have done xyz <laughs> how do you know he would have done because you got all this technology and you ain't Lamont. do nothing with nothing with the technology Lamont. you ain't picked up a six, ball you ain't picked up a six shot nine six ten you ain't done four, nothing. i don't care how tall he is that at shooter, the end of the day couldn't translate at the end this. of the day mac Def, we've seen there's more players that are six nine in the game that we've ever seen there's there's more competition there's more white guys at 6'9 that can shoot like a Larry Bird. Not shooting the thing 50, is, 40, let Larry Bird be great in his 80s. Because wow. if you bring him to this era, he's not no longer Larry Bird. You talk about Gordon cannot, Hayward. All right, let me tell you why he would be. Oh You're talking let me Gordon tell you Hayward why he would or less. Be. There's no way, just like Gilbert Arena said, there's no way these players from the 80s can come to this era and have the same level of success. Uh, and y'all keep trying to force feed mine. it on people. He no, man, Jeff, stop with it. this dumb, retarded talk. Why don't y'all have real basketball takes for one time instead of using these fantasy fake talking points, talking about video Stop game and bringing them me, into a time machine, Fuck. into a time, quit saying stupid shit. Y'all keep, y'all been talking <laughs> for the last 30 minutes on retarded talking points, talking about, why don't you just let panel. Larry Bird be great in the 80s and quit trying to bring him into this era because y'all want to denigrate players That's of the today. topic of the conversation. Player, no, it's not the topic. The topic it, of the day was talking about this very thing that y'all doing. The very thing that y'all doing is- Bro, y'all are saying that Larry Bird would, would come in this era and he would be a top won't. three small forward. Y'all are saying all, that he that's would that's come that's in this era and he would be a top five player in the NBA. And I'm telling you, that's not going to be none of that. No, okay, hold on, hold on. let Look, me finish my statement. Okay, oh, I can yes, he would. Let me hold finish on, my statement. Let, let me finish my statement. Let me get to the First comment. Let me get to this said, comment. Hold on, Mac. Jokic could. Let me get to the comment. The comment says, "Great players adapt." The Lamont is not. Re First of all, you can say great players adapt all you want. At, at the end of the day, it's still fake news. You don't know what he would have done. We don't know if he would have stayed on his barn at French Lick. He probably wouldn't came close to a piece of technology. Because in Indiana, most of the great players don't even use none of this so-called technology. They stay on farms and farmlands, and they ain't coming around none of this garbage. He's from French Lick, Indiana. Cornfields, cornfields, and more cornfields around. Yet you sitting here acting like more technology in Indiana. There's technology in Indiana now, and you're still getting the same type of player coming out of Indiana. White dudes that can shoot that are fundamental and slow. It ain't changed, even with technology. When you go to Chicago, you're getting the same type of player coming out of Chicago. Hard-nosed guards that can defend and drive to the basket. They struggle to shoot the ball. It ain't changed. Y'all acting like basketball, it don't change. It's basically just where you from and what you got to work with. And Larry Bird would be the same Larry Bird in this era. Unfortunately, in this era, there's more players with the same build, with the same skill sets, but now you got better defenders, bigger defenders that will be able to stifle what he did great. And you won't okay. have these uh, unknown me, white dudes defending you at the power mm -hmm. forward spot. And y'all yeah. trying to lie to us, act like these was elite yeah. defenders that he was Mike, cooking. Michael Kuhn. They what was Rudy Gobert doing in that? Hold on, like I said, look, man, Who cares what Rudy Gobert would do in that era? What is Rudy Gobert doing in this era? He's a mul he won multiple defensive player of the years. Give Rudy Gobert credit for what he's done in this era. I don't give a damn what he would do. I mean, still night. can't catch a basketball. He got so, so, so Michael scared. Michael Cooper was garbage defensively in the eighties. Bro, you're naming one player. Dennis Rodman was garbage oh, defensively. Dennis Rodman was not. What were we talking Cindy about? Scotty Pippen hey, was garbage. Cindy Moncrief, come on now. This the, <laughs> the point is with La when we talk about the Larry is, Bird in the eighties. When we talk about Larry Bird and oh, transcendent and transcendent errors. We're talking about a 6'9", 6'10", forward that is a 50, 40, 90 shooter. That translates to any error. I don't care how – I don't care if a nigga is 7'5". No, it's not true, Victor Mac Wimble that's I don't care true. if he's 7'5". That's five. not true, Mac Def. The yes, game nowadays – Hey, look, now, I'm going to – just like the same that. analogy that I can – I wasn't 50, done. 40, hold on, y'all. Let, let me ask y'all this question. 50, Name 40, a 50 40 guy that won't transfer. Hold on, hold on, Mac Def, Stop talking. Man, that. come on, no. Hold on. Here's the problem Mike with Def. you. Y'all think just because a player got 50, 40, 90, he can do it on any court at any time. You, if you, let's say, yes. let's say you were 50, 40, 90 in college. Don't mean you're going to come oh to the NBA God. and be 50, 40, 90. I said NBA first. Hold on. Mac Def, I bet you 50, 40, 90 
over at LA Fitness. Lamont, you're in no position. Come over here and play with me. I guarantee you're not 50, 40, 90. Because it's first of all, can we stop acting like 50, 40, 90 and these weird numbers you're throwing out? Yeah, I hate that. Okay, if that's the case, if that's the case, that's not true, Lamont. You're 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 capping. Mac Def, if what you're saying is true, then these Elgin Baylor numbers and these Wilt numbers where they're getting 50, 40 rebounds a game, that makes you you tripping, Mac Def. That is multiplicative in this area. That means that means Wilt Chamberlain could score 195 points. 75 rebounds, 78 assists. That's not like, true because they played how? at a slower pace how? today. How? So that's what how? I'm saying. How? You're how? Play, hold on, time out, time out. You're captain, Lamont. You're just hold running on. your mouth. Let me finish my statement. No, there's no finishing stupidity. I told y'all the stupidity is going to stop muting me, my man. No, because hold on, hold on, Del De Niro. The thing is right here, we know that Wilt's numbers, Elgin Baylor and those guys' numbers were inflated because it's no – is it is not you don't want to take away from them, but at the end of the day, the competition they played it what played against allowed them to do those dominant things, and they had oh. unreal numbers. That's why we can put Elgin Baylor and we can look at uh, Elgin Baylor's numbers and say he's not top three all time, even though his numbers are ridiculous. We can put him where he rightfully blinked because we know the competition. You balance it out there. Do the same thing with Bird. This competition was no, not as stiff as what we saw today. But. Bro, so Lamont, I don't, I don't, Lamont, I don't, I don't get this part, Lamont. But Lamont, I don't get this part. That I try to lie true. and say there's no defense if, today when you can't even explain what defense is. Okay, Lamont, let, let me say this real quick. If you were just, I don't know if y'all know about pace, bro. Bird, if you was oh, to adjust, Lord, if you was, to, if you was to adjust a lot of these players or uh, LeBron some of his years to the '80s pace, those numbers would be inflated. You feel me? So I don't even know if he'll just, just completely be the best player. And like just winning three MVPs, if we decide to push these players over here, bro, adjust Stop the pace, bro. Uh, no, how? What do you mean? Adjust the pace. Put the pace on. Put the pace on. This is, this is what I'm the saying. This is where you get yourself in trouble. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is where you get yourself in trouble. Let's say, look, you do what you say. Put him in a faster pace. It inflates his numbers. Okay, but if put, him, put him in a two thousand pace, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Oh, go ahead, put him bro. in a slower air. Would his numbers go down? Who? Who? LeBron, what we're LeBron talking about. No, I'm LeBron saying if he was to play in the he eight, it, listen, the listen, trip, it don't matter whether, listen, listen, team. listen, it don't matter whether you're talking like, this is how I found this out, bro. I was, listen, let me tell you how I found this out. I was looking at Jordan season. I was looking at Jordan season. The SEC averaged 87. And I was looking at it and I was going, I was, look, I was looking, trying to see what was the best scoring seasons. And Kobe Bryant, 2006, popped up as the best scoring season because if you adjusted it to the pace that Michael Jordan, when he averaged 37, he would have been average more than 30 37 so all i'm saying if you was to put lebron james in the 80 his numbers would be inflated he would be damn near averaging a triple double correct and i am agreeing with you and i'm saying if i'm simply saying if you put him in a faster pace his numbers go up okay great okay if if you put larry bird in this nut and you put larry bird in this area his numbers go down listen if you put him in a slower pace error would his numbers go down that's what i'm asking you talking about larry bird no, I'm asking about LeBron. Hold on, but you literally, you literally just said that this uh, this era the pace is slower than back in the day. So listen, you- listen to l- listen oh to my, my question because he said this is one of the slowest pace eras of all time. That's what I'm trying Listen, to say. Listen, the, the two the two slowest pace eras is the 2000s and 2000s and now. Correct. You know that, right? We're yes. living in, in that era Le- right now. Yes, so nigga, what do you mean LeBron slow average era? thirty? And LeBron right, averaged 30. My point is, point. is I don't care what the freaking pace of the game is. If a nigga can average 30, he can average 30. I don't care that his pace was 106 in the, in the 1980s, oh, no. and all of a sudden it's only 101 today. The nigga Bird is still going to be Larry fucking Bird. That's not true. Easily, I, I bro. Easily. Larry you bro. niggas are stupid. Hundred, the 80s is 106 possessions per 100, and today it's 101. And all of a sudden, on. Bird ain't going to be Bird because of five I, 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 less possessions. You, you, Shut you, up. You cooked yourself though. You cooked yourself. You said that Larry Bird would still be Larry Bird in his air. How would he be Larry Bird in his air with one? He pace is slow. Two. Okay, let me, on, 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 let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. Let me no no no. Let me finish. Go ahead. How Larry, if you're not done with the question, I'll how answer. Would Larry Bird be the same Larry Bird if he's playing today and the slow and the pace is slower one? The defense is better too. The players is more skilled and talented mm-hmm. three. The players is more mm-hmm. athletic and so What's so mm-hmm. better about the defense? <laughs> okay, so can I answer the question? No, 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 no. Can I answer the question? It's the num- the number one, the number one, the number one reason is a he's more skilled 
than Jokic. That's not that's true. true. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, yes it is. No, that's not true. <laughs> yes he is. is. What are you talking about? Oh, like, 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 hold on, time out, time out, time out. Are you are you trying to say? Are you really trying to tell me that Jokic is more skilled than Larry Bird? Yes, 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 yes. That is first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all. Why is it so hard? Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down for you. First of all, number number one, as far as shooting and scoring is Bird. Hands oh, down, it is no, it is no, there's no debate. <laughs> passing, it's close, but Bird has him over passing. Number one, is Bird is a better, better passer off the Bird's dribble. That no, is a fact. Bro, bro, stop it, bro. Number this two, is, this is, bro. Oh, number two, two hold on, hold on. Number number two, like I said to LeBron, what metric it, are you using to say Bird's a better passer? Just your eye test. Yeah, yeah, bro, this is crazy. Well, they average the same passer, amount of assists for their career. He's a better passer. Don't, matter. Bro, don't do career, bro. Don't hold do on, career. On, He's averaging ten assists this year. On, He's averaging ten assists. Thank you. I'm not going to do that, bro. I hate when people do that, bro. Hold on, y'all yelling, y'all yelling, y'all yelling. Hold on, I want the guy for the guy that said. The assist averages. I don't know who said it because everybody was yelling. What I'm saying I is, I said it. I said it. Okay, so would you put Russell Westbrook on the same level as a Magic Johnson passing? In terms of skill, no. No, 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 no. If we're going off the numbers, because if the numbers put you on the same level as a passer as someone else, so we could just take all the guys that were able to average ten assists per game or more, and we put them all on the level, same level as passers, right? Well, hold up. All right. So, so are you talking about no. flash? Or playmaking. No, because what I'm saying is no. That's not uh, what I'm asking. I'm gonna put Russ no, up there because with, um, no, magic. Yeah. because when you when you brought up the stats, you said they averaging the same number of assists. We didn't talk about the style and passes, how they're getting the passes off, how they're breaking down defenses. And when you look at the way Jokic gets his passes off, when you look at a guy that's actually taller, so it's the the, the philosophy even works in football. Bird is six nine six ten. When you the philosophy works in football, the taller you are, the better passer you can be. Who's the taller player? Jokic, the taller player. Now, who have we seen make a higher degree of difficulty with regards to passing? not true. Jokic has. Jokic. Jokic has made a higher degree of difficulty. First of all, Lamont, don't ever do a football analogy. That was horrible. Don't ever do a football analogy. Okay, so hold on, Mac Def. Let me ask you a question. Hold on, Mac Def. Hold on, Mac Def. Let me ask you one question. Who's a better quarterback, Doug Flutie or Peyton Manning? Who's the better Boston quarterback, Doug Flutie or Peyton Manning? <laughs> Lamont, you're picking the weakest Who's the better little quarterback, quarterback man. Bro, I hate it when people, when I give them, you say it's a bad analogy. Lamont, when that's give, a, we, you. When, hold on, when I give you the example of Doug Flutie, who's a short quarterback, and everybody knew his height is what stopped him from being even greater because you have to be tall to be a better passer. And that goes in most sports where you have to pass the ball. The taller you are, the easier it is for you to see over the defense and make the right reads in football, basketball, all of these sports, right? So again, when you could be seven feet tall and pass like that, Shut, who's a better quarterback now, Josh Allen yeah, or Patrick Mahomes? Who's taller? Six two, Lamont. Who's taller? Shut up. Who's I, a better? Who's a better I quarterback, helps. Josh the Allen or Patrick helps. Mahomes, nigga? But I they asked you about. Both, they both I asked you about Doug Flutie and Peyton Manning because we're talking about. Two you guys. asked me about a top and three. No, and we know, and we know that Doug Flutie, if Doug Flutie was six six. What type of quarterback would he have been? I mean, bro, Paxton Lynch is 6'6", six, six, and he's trash, that bro. Is horrible. I didn't ask you about that. I said, if Doug Flutie was 6'6", six, six, would he have been a much better quarterback? Hypothetical. And I'll say no yes because no. you don't have the intangibles. Okay, now you're going to say no. Now you lie. Why you ain't use Drew Brees? <laughs> yes, I'm <laughs> saying no. Lying? Now answer my question. Now answer my lying. question because you – hold on. You First answer. of all, you went you from Peyton Manning to Doug Flutie. That's horrible. Okay, Let's talk what, about the top three what quarterbacks. What hold on. Let's talk. there's no hold on. What is one of the things that helped make Patty, Peyton Manning? Lamont, you know what? You know you're about to get cooked. That's why. It's the height. You know you're about to get okay, cooked. On. Number one. Hold on. What is, what is one attribute that college scouts look at when they're trying to recruit quarterbacks? It's the height. The, yeah, for they vision. love yeah, clearly. They yeah, love the tall prospects. Even if they haven't seen you throw in college ball yet or even in NFL, one of the intangibles that they want you to have is that just natural height. It that's just, true. Okay, it always projects it, whether whether you actually pan out to be great or not. It's just one of the most 
natural attributes that good passers in football have. And when you go to basketball, what made Magic? What helped Magic Johnson become the greatest passer of all time? The fact that he was six nine, could see over the defense, could see over six two, six three, six four point guards. He could see the floor. It made him one of the most elite passers of all time, and it was because of his height. When you look at LeBron James, what made him? Even though it looks funky sometimes. What made him one of the best playmakers of all time? It's his size, the ability to see over the defense, right? Good. Some of these other smaller guys were good at it, Stockton. But again, if Stockton was 6'9", imagine what type of player we would have been talking about. Look, look, let me, let me, let me, you tripping, bro. Mike Delph, you tripping, bro. I just hate when people play stupid all of a sudden. They want to be dumb with it. Like, like, Mike Delph, Mike Delph, you just said, you had just said, bro, when we was talking about the pace, bro, and all this, bro, then, like, you really tried to compare Larry Bird and Jokic as a passer, regardless of his height, bro. The passes, the difficulties that how he be passing, the way he just, he flicks the ball, bro. The way he just creates, Larry Bird is a better, I mean, Jokic is just a better passer than Larry Bird, bro. Oh, SFM. That's, Here's the good thing, SFM. It's a good thing about what you said, SFM, is, you know what? Those two, it can be argued. I'm not saying it's not arguable. But what I'm saying is, why when people make these comparisons with players of the day and with players of the past, it's just so far-fetched that it ain't even comparison. Like, with, to compare anybody to Bird is just unfathomable. Even, But, but how? When Jokic, numbers wise, by the eye test, whatever metric you want to go on, is just as good, if not better, than Bird in all of these categories, other than probably defense. Hey, Lamont, what's up, bro? How you doing, man? What up, Mahar? Hey, bro, I never seen you get this mad in a in a while, though, bro. No, it's just that I didn't. I, I, I I'm I'm not even gonna be live live that long. But yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, I be going to these other channels and I be hearing people like Herm and they be coming up here saying the same stuff. And the only objective, the only objective is to find ways to denigrate what we see in the day. They try to talk about and try to lie and say there's no defense played today. And guys got these open runs to the rim and they could just score really <laughs> nilly. And threes are just getting shot at this rate that nobody can get. Guy, you know, they try to make it seem like. There's no like this game is just complete garbage. But yet none, well, of, them, gonna... none of them can make it. Ninety percent of them got cut from the JV team. None of like none of them. Most of them don't understand the game. Like like Herm said, Herm talking about the Spurs was out there playing two three zone on LeBron and whatnot. Man. Man, <laughs> hey, hey uh, Lamont, Lamont, I was hearing the whole thing while I was working though, bro. So I I I, I know what was said, but I'll say it like this though. Like here's the deal. Like uh, what I hear a lot of those same familiar takes, it come it comes across as people refusing to let go of what they saw as as kids. You know, I'll take two raw for example. His favorite era is the eighties and nineties. Why? Is because he grew up in that period and that's what he admires the most. And the problem here is that when you admire a specific era of basketball, you become narrow minded to the fact that there are better players today that could do more skill, that have more more abilities and have a smarter basketball IQ than the players that you grew up admiring back then. So the other problem I'm seeing here is that what Gil Arena said is correct. A lot of these guys in the 80s, unfortunately, wouldn't be able to survive because the evolution of basketball has changed. I look at sports as an evolving organism. It doesn't stay stagnant. It continues to evolve over time. A lot of coaches will tell you that all the stuff that they learned in the 80s doesn't work even now. So you have to find a way to keep changing and adapting. This is what we talked about a couple weeks ago. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of the old heads, you know what I mean, can't let that go. And unfortunately, it dumps down to how they talk about it basketball. When you talk about, oh, I can use a 2-3 zone in the NBA. No, you couldn't. A lot of these, a lot of these players are so super smart to figure out the weakness points of a 2-3 zone. It would be just completely ineffective. That's what I let, That's what I know. You don't know basketball, and you're just talking out of your out of your, your rear end. But that's all I have. And one, more, and one more thing, too. One last thing. One last thing before I, before I pass the mic up. Um, Nikola Djokovic is better than Larry Bird, and Larry Bird wouldn't play in today's league because the fact of the matter is Larry Bird wasn't athletic enough to play in this style of basketball that we're seeing today. That's all I got to say. Yeah, so we got uh, we got Grayson Allen in this era, but Larry Bird can't be in this era. That's Bro, nice. is, Larry, is Grayson Allen a superstar? 
Or is just a role player? Bro, but he said that Larry Bird couldn't play in this era. That's all I'm saying. Okay, but he I, I don't think he said he couldn't Hold play on, in the NBA. Oh, I just don't think he would be a, a superstar in this era. That's all I was saying, bro. I never said I never said Larry Bird couldn't play. He was so a great player. Explain to me why I'm, Larry Bird couldn't be a superstar in this era then. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you again. Oh, Larry really Bird good. is an all-time great. You understand? We respect what he did. What I'm telling you is, is that he could not play too well in this era because the fact is today's players are more skilled. They have different mm. abilities than what Larry Bird brought into the game. You put right. him in there against Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum would roast Larry Bird nine times out of ten. Right, okay, yeah. Okay, so sure. I think I know what the discrepancy is actually coming from. So I guess coming from both of you guys, what the other brother was saying is if Larry Bird – you know, came up in this era, you know, grew up in this era. Thank you. Know, you. Still became the player that he became, you know, he would be even better than what he was in the 80s. Know, thank thank you, brother. Thank but you, my brother. But here's the problem. Here's the problem, here's that the problem with that logic. Here's the problem with that logic. You said that if Berber was born in this particular era, he would be far better. The problem is he was not born in that particular era. That doesn't that doesn't work that way. You can't apply to that when he was never born in that particular period. It doesn't work that way. That's an illogical fallacy. Right. So right. So and that's my point, uh point to you. So that's why you two are never gonna see eye to eye. Because in your logic, you're dropping Larry Bird from his skill set, what he did in the eighties, and just saying, yo, drop him in his prime in this version. But the other guy is saying, hey. Give him time to develop in this era. And once he's, you know, 20, 21, 22, you know, I, I can see him being a better player than that. So I just think it's one of those things where neither one of y'all are going to agree. I just think that it's just a passing of two different mindsets. I just. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fair. Fair enough. I, I can respect that. No problem. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, that was a good breakdown because that's true. Because I think, I think. I think Larry Bird would have had the same IQ, but with improved skill, improved ability. Me too. What makes you think that, though? Because bro, he has bro, high IQ already, bro, It's bro. only a few hand of them, bro. Look, bro, listen, if I – let me tell you something. I don't have Hakeem Olajuwon over Larry Bird, but I'm talking about off the way he played and his physicality and all that. Well, I say, well, Hakeem, could he be the same in this era or a little bit better? Yes, because the point is – you don't have nobody to guard him down there. You feel me? And really, there ain't no big man to guard him. Uh, the way that he just moves, the way that he just plays around the mid range, and he plays his his physicality is gonna make it, it's gonna be his advantage in today's league. You bro, you feel me? Now I have Larry Bird over him all time. You feel me? But I'm not gonna say Larry Bird. Larry Bird is gonna come in this era and have the same results as Hakeem, bro. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna say his numbers are gonna get better. I, I believe that his numbers are probably gonna drop down to like 14, 15 points a game. Not gonna lie to you. 15 points a game? Hold up. 14, 15 Gordon, points hey, hold a up. game. Hey, hold 14, Harris, 15 a game. Gordon, Harris, Gordon, Harris, Gordon, Harris, what's wrong with that? That's solid. 20, bro. That's, that's terrible. That's solid. That's, that's solid. terrible. Oh, no, no, bro. That's some, bro. Like, that's disrespectful, honestly. That's a bro. What was that? All right, right bro. Y'all got it, bro. Y'all got it, bro. I, I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing. I'm more skilled, more athletic players in a different era. Of course, his points are going to drop. It's not like the 90s. Y'all got to let go of the All right. Okay. Then that's what I mean by saying, okay. If that's what, listen, I'm not saying that Bird wanted to come in this era and be good. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying that he's not going to come in this era. He's not going to be no top five. Player, he's not going to be the fifth. He's not going to be top five in the NBA if he was to come in this area. Sorry, that's out the question. He's not. No, he's not going to be a top three small forward. So what is basically saying that is that Bird is not going to be the same Bird. That's basically all we're arguing about. And that point off of right there that he's not going to be top five, and we could agree to that to a certain Wait, point, and not going to be top three small forward. That. Uh. Only dummies would believe that. KD, Giannis. Only dummies like Jermaine Berry would believe that. Jason Tatum. Yo, get Jason Tatum. Who else? Who else? Jimmy. I think Jimmy Butler would be a better player than Larry Bird. Lamar <laughs> okay. the like, it's, it's any player that Crazy, would be better bro. than Larry Bird. This is crazy. This is crazy. Come on now. Yeah, but Lamont already told y'all. Lamont already told y'all, but last year, DeMar DeRozan, this this, this generation, Michael Michael Jordan. Lamont already told y'all we got Michael Jordan in this right now. It's DeMar DeRozan. It's like, not going to be better than DeMar DeRozan. Oh, gosh. Okay. 
So the Martha Rosen is the MJ of this era? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> bro, yeah, 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 I remember yeah, that yeah, stream, yeah, bro. Yeah, Hold on. But my thing is, why do you think, Lord. as the game has progressed, why do you think that same style of play, which when you're dealing with athletes who are just as athletic, we got guys who are 15th men on the bench, just as athletic as Michael Jordan. That was unheard of in the 90s. A anybody as athletic as Michael Jordan would have definitely been it a star in the league in the nineties. Yet we got guys who are sitting at the end of the bench today that can shoot just as well as MJ and are just as athletic, but they're struggling to get on the floor. But yet y'all think that Jordan could come into this era and not just come into this era, but just take that same mid range jumper against teams that can zone up with bigger defenders in the post and at no, the high post but, and still have the same impact. He was. What if separates not, players, Lamont? Wait, but Lamont. What separates players? Wait, but Lamont. I don't the know. One thing you're you're probably about to say something that's imagined. You better IQ. say evolution. That's what. Well, that's what you're about to say. Nope. Hold on. Yeah, you know what? And if you actually use your IQ, wait, it was Jordan himself who said wait, I was struggling Lamont, versus um, zone. That 15 men on the bench. Jordan used his IQ. Jordan used his own IQ and said I would struggle versus zones. But yet you were trying to convince me that he would be even better against zones when he didn't even believe he would be better against zones. <laughs> you never heard me say that Michael Jordan. Would okay, be but zones. why are you trying because, to convince me that nah, he would like, be better in this era when Jordan has already told you out of his mouth he would not be better in this era? By default, he said I would struggle statistically versus zones. So hold on, Donovan Mitchell. No, Dominate there's no hold on. Era, don't put Donovan Mitchell Jordan into a conversation. Donovan Mitchell why don't, is much more. Why, why do y'all have such a hard time? Why do y'all have such a hard time of taking Jordan's words at face value? Nah. He's the. I've never heard Donovan Mitchell say I struggle with zones. I heard Jordan well, say Jordan that. one of the most competitive. Well, Mark, don't matter how competitive he is. He's a much better sport. He's a much better, he's 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 a much better sport zone than Jordan. Jordan. Okay, hold on. Stop I didn't say Jordan that. was Stop scared it. of the zone. Stop it. Bro. Jordan yeah, said. Better, the, hold on. Hold on. Uh, with, the wisdom Warriors, before you proceed. Okay, how, would you feel comfortable as a coach if you had a player that came up to you and said, hey, coach, man, I'm. I struggle with the zone. I struggle with them zones, man. <laughs> but you going to proceed to go start him or go against these zones? Oh, man. Nope. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah, I got it, man. Michael Jordan will be clamped down. No, I didn't say he would be clamped up. No, he would not be crazy. crazy. No, the time for this era is crazy. crazy. Because we're not saying DeMar DeRozan is clamped up, but we're, we're not acting like DeMar DeRozan is this next level player that just can do it to everybody. We see the struggles that he's having. He he His scoring ability can be stifled somewhat because he's a mid-level scorer because he scores in the mid-range of time. He's a good three-point shooter. And, and, and it, 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 it leads to him struggling in the playoffs because teams can load up in that area now because there's no illegal defense. So when y'all say DeMar DeRozan is choking in the playoffs because y'all love calling these players chokers, but y'all don't never def DeMar DeRozan, whose game is very similar in style to Michael Jordan's, y'all don't ever give him any benefit of the doubt saying, well, since Jordan said he would struggle against zones, y'all don't say, well, I understand why DeMar is struggling. He's not choking. Y'all just call him a choker. Y'all ignore like the mental aspect of the game. Okay, uh, what I mental aspect? Hold on, you, you hold on, Michael Jordan. Jordan hold on, Arthur it's Rosen, mental. Arthur Jordan Saints. mentally. Oh hold on, Jordan like said like using his own brain, I would struggle against zones. That means he was mentally stifled by zones. If he's willing to say that out of his mouth, what do you think's going on in his head when his when his zone happens? So do you understand the mental aspect of his own? When a player sounds defeated, when a player says, I struggle against something, he's oh defeated. He's defeated. Jordan Jordan word. didn't say, Jordan didn't say, you know what, David Stern? I welcome the challenge of zones. Bring him on. I'm still going to get my 30. Did he say that? Because y'all said he was the ultra competitor. He didn't say, David Stern, come on, bring them zones. I don't care. They can do whatever they want. We still gonna win championships. He's the ultra competitor, right? How come he didn't say that? If he struggled against zones, no, so no, 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 no. I didn't say he struggled against anything. Well, we know he could have been better against zones hold on, hold on, in the nineties. That's Mr. the league defense, dummy. He didn't. He didn't get an opportunity to struggle against the zone because David Stern took Jordan's advice. We not gonna put the zone in. We're gonna wait and delay it until you retire. And that's exactly what they did. Wait, hold on. Like the guy that says zones is um illegal defense, so no teams play zone back then. No, oh. they was not playing zones back then. Oh, okay. Hey, Lamont, is that true? No, no, no played no. zone back then. No, the only thing you could do is fake a zone, and a fake zone isn't a zone. 
How can you be completely effective as a zone when you have to try to run it in a manner to hide it from the refs? Now you're trying to combat two different things. Now you're trying to defend Jordan and you're trying to beat out the refs at the same time. That's not an effective zone. You're just trying to run zone coverages and certain for a few seconds here and there, hoping that Jordan don't burn you. That's not effective zone coverage. So the three second violation, if the opposing offense is in the key. There was no defensive three second violation. So why wouldn't they be able to run his own then? Because with the illegal defense, you you, you can only you can you had to be had within to two commit. arms lengths of your defender. You had to fully commit or just play man to man. And, and this is why y'all saw Jordan dunking on a ton of bigs under the rim. Is just like I tell y'all all the time: if you let a great player into the paint, you're cooked. I don't care if you have Matumbo at the rim. And this is why we saw Jordan, who was a great finisher. Well, you allowed them in the lane. This is why the Pistons are great defensive team with the Jordan rule set. Well, the very last rule of the Jordan rule was if that motherfucker gets in the lane, wow. that's when we foul him because we can't defend that. Y'all be thinking guys standing under the rim is great defense. That's the worst defense you can play. You just going to get dunked on and even more so in this era. You got to stop people outside of the lane lines. That's what a, that's what a zone defense is built to do. Keep them out of the lane by all means possible. They say I'm capping, but ain't nobody proved me wrong. Everybody want to keep saying this is cap. Jordan said, y'all talk about mentality. Jordan said, I would struggle against his own defenses. What type of mentality is that? But y'all say he's the ultra competitor, and y'all trying to convince me he would excel against zones. How? I mean, I don't see why not, though. I mean, he said on his own. He told the league. Not Hold on, Robert. Hey, Robert. How about I don't know the rest of the story that you're talking about. How about you come up here and tell the story? I'm gonna drop the link for you, and you can come tell these imaginary stories that we all have heard before that we already can call cap on. And you can come up here. I'll drop the link for you, Robert. Oh, hold on. You man, you're, 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 like, you're acting that. like this is so complex. Hold on. You trying to say that somebody? Yeah, hey, let him up here. Let game, him up here. You saying crazy. somebody? Who hold on. So you saying out. you saying a one three one zone ain't complex? Nah, it's a, bro. It's a good defense. But I'm saying though, like yeah, acting like this man couldn't figure out. Or the coach staff. Hold on. I didn't. Hold on, bro. I didn't say he couldn't figure it out. He said that out of own I didn't say that. I didn't say that out of his own mouth. I I know that you can beat his own defense, but Jordan's the one that said he would struggle with it, not me. Why y'all acting like I I I I didn't give this to Jordan? Jordan said it. Tracy McGrady said it. Grant Hill said it. These ain't stories. These are facts. Why why all of a sudden when it comes to something negative with Jordan, you automatically claim it's just a story there? No, this has already been reported to be look, fact. If it's true, it's true. You know, I'm not gonna argue it. It's already you know, true. I just I just I, I just have to look it up to see exactly what yeah, Jordan yeah. said. Bro, word it's very word. easy to find. It's not I'm gonna put, put, put the link in the private chat. I'm gonna put the link in the private chat. Bro, put the link in the private bro chat. it's so yeah. easy to find. Hey, Y'all be acting like we just hey, I'll take a look at it. You know, hey, I got no problem seeing something. I'll put it up, I'll put it on the screen. I'll put it on the screen. I got I got no problem learning something new, bro. I ain't one of those people that want to be right. I want to get it right. So that's all. Hold on, he's hold on, hold on. He says it right here. If teams were able to play zone defenses, I never would have had the career I had. Mm. I'm gonna pull it up right here. I don't want to be It's in a private chat. All right. Let's see how we we'll change this. Shit. And then not to mention, you could also use what you call it, uh, Tracy McGrady, because when the league put the zone in, the, when the NBA implemented the zone, the first person Tracy McGrady went to ask was uh, Jordan. And Jordan basically told him, like, you know, he, he couldn't do anything about it. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what more proof you Bro, the first per the first person to be on a perimeter just be successful with the zone. The first person to show them how to be efficient and be successful with the zone for the perimeter players was Kobe Bryant, bro. 
when it was on first. That's not even – Kobe wasn't even – he's one of the most inefficient players of all time, so that's not even true. This Here nigga we go again stupid. with the Kobe disrespect. Here we go. Here, this sounds stupid. So let me – so, uh, let me ask something. What is, uh, let me – okay, okay. Let me ask something. Let me ask something. Bro, let me I'm tell you something. To, I'm, I'm, I'm going to name the – bro, be quiet, bro. You always talk right after you make a hard-ass statement. Be quiet, bro. And let somebody respond, bro. I don't want to debate about Kobe. Listen, nobody debating about Kobe. You made a statement that somebody's going to correct you on. Tracy McGrady. Bro, 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 be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Tracy McGrady, Paul Pierce, uh, Allen Iverson, Vince Carter, um – some more other people, bro. I'm the people. They shoot a lower field goal percentage than Kobe Bryant. Allen Iverson was winning scoring titles at shoot, with a 39 percent field goal percentage. You feel me? Field goal. He didn't shoot a higher field goal percentage. It wasn't that many guards shooting a higher field goal percentage than Kobe Bryant. I didn't. I, I don't know if you know. No, in his era. And well, Kobe Bryant field goal percentage you, is efficient. Forty four point seven ain't never been inefficient in I, I NBA. Know, I don't know if you know, but it's much more to just field goal percentage to being inefficient. But okay, I'm not debating about. That well, then what is you talk I'm about debating, inefficient? What do you talk about inefficient? Because you can't talk about. Because you can't. Because you can't talk about. Because you can't talk about prom. Because you can't be talking about prom. I mean, because Kobe Bryant got the most first team All NBA selections of all time from defense, and got the and got the second most first team All NBA selections. So what is you talking about? You just talking, bro. You are just a stranger on here that nobody knows. Just trying to find out basketball, bro. You don't know basketball, bro. You hold on. You said I don't know basketball. No, you, you don't. don't. You don't even know what efficiency is. You got cooked on your point, so you tried to make a different point that sounded actually, even dumber. You know what talking over me. Well, Lamont, so what is so so what well, so Lamont, explain to me on, more efficiency well, than this field goal percentage? Explain me what efficiency is besides the field goal percentage. He asked you what defense. Explain me what efficiency is besides the field goal percentage, bro. Bro, yeah. that's 45 minutes ago, bro. That's damn near an hour ago. Like we was on that an hour ago. ago. Jordan, Jordan kind of tripping a little bit. I don't know why. That, that's that. over there. Man, that's an hour ago. Tell me what is efficiency, bro. Tell me what is efficiency. You a clown. This Tell me what is the fantasy. I ain't gonna lie, that was what, crazy. What, was what is consistency? What is consistency as a player? Jordan. What is Jordan. consistency just, as a player? I just, um, I, just, I just finished reading the article. That shit was crazy. Yeah, I mean, wow. Hey, it's true. That's what I was Man, saying. what is efficiency, bro? I do not want to be debate about that snitch. What is consistency? We're not talking about that. We just named what is efficiency. You said it's other than just field goal percentage. So it is. So tell me what it is. I'm not debating with you about this man, You don't know. Really well, just shut up. You don't know. He's ducking the question. I don't want to debate him. You don't know. You don't know. They say you don't know, bro. players cannot compete with today's NBA players. I'm trying to talk about that, not about Kobe. No, no wait, I'm not talking about that, Kobe, Kobe, bro. All right, bro. You I just said Kobe I was talking. The first person who was effective against the zones is Kobe. Like, yeah, take the sometimes off. No, it's facts, though. It's facts. You a cheerleader. Take them. No, 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 no. It's facts, though. It's facts. It's facts. It's not facts. He has the that's most. Not, that's not enough. When, when, what year did the zone drop? The what, what year did the zone drop, sir? Since People you know so much. Oh, oh, one, oh, what two. year? Oh, huh? one, again, oh, that the defense back then. Okay, oh, one, oh, two. Yep. Okay, go look at, go, go look at call numbers, oh, one, and oh, two. Go look at 2001 and go look at 2002. Go look at his field goal percentage compared to Allen Iverson and all that. Hold on, I'm saying all that, and I also saying that he got the What is you saying? I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying, bro. I think you just better off being quiet, bro. You just running your mouth. I'm not trying to hear it no more. All right, then get the fuck off the panel then, bitch. Fuck me. Hey right, man, hey right, man, this man picked me up. All right, all right, man. See, all right, man. Right, man. Man, get man. emotional. Man, they get emotional. My bad for the customer, man. But it is like he talks to me. Right, man. Right. Man. Wow, wow, hundred dollar phone. Who is, bro? Hmm. Oh, wow. Hold on, we got Chris coming. Man, I heard everything today, man. I couldn't believe MacDuff, MacDuff out of all people. Really? You gonna try to say Larry Bird? Bird? You was even speaking sense when you were saying that Larry Bird wouldn't be good. That was the only time you were speaking sense. Man, I'm not even talking to you no more, man. Every time else, you was just a clown. Man, every time, man, I was making sense to what you wanted to hear, bro. Be quiet, bro. All right. All right. All right.
you might learn something, man. God, it's a pain, man. People that actually know basketball around here, man. Bro, you don't hold on. L Lamont literally asked you what defense that the, uh, the Mavs is playing against LeBron. You can't even answer that. Lamont, they just say like a three. I said a two. I said a two, three, one, three, one. It didn't matter. They was running nah, basic you zones. You want you learn, bro. You can't even answer the question. One, three, one, and two, three, and three, two. Them one of the first zones that you gonna learn when you coming up as a basketball. Yeah, we not. So them ain't shit. What defense the Spurs playing? What defense the Mavericks playing against LeBron? Then exactly hush mode. Get on here saying anything. I don't know basketball for real. All you just do is get on here and just run your mouth. Hello, this nigga. Dick Rock Kobe more than his wife. This shit is. Oh my god. Man, I ain't got no wife, man. Nah, cause y'all disrespecting him, bro. Bro, nobody cares. No, you mad emotional, man. I just had a whole um, what's it called show? Yeah, wow, man. Say Kobe one fishing. Field goal percentage take otherwise. He got the most missed shots in NBA history, and LeBron got a higher field goal percentage than Kobe. Bro, who, bro. Oh, let, me, how, how, let me ask you something. What's the distance from fifty percent to fifty percent and forty-four? LeBron also got a higher true shooting what, What's percentage. the what's LeBron the missed also, shots between forty-four percent and fifty percent? You don't, you don't even know. And LeBron mm -hmm. got a higher field goal percentage than Kobe and the like. I, I can really break all this down. I just don't it's like easy in a weak defense. Man, we done heard all about? this before. Man, I'm not finna debate who with you, said, man. I don't even know you. Who just said it's a weak who defensive said, error? Who, who said it's a weak defensive error? Who said that? Who said that? Be a man. That was me. That was me. Okay. That was me. Okay. Well, right, so what, what no, Pudi. Uh, yeah, explain. Explain like certain defensive concepts that you consider to be weak. Okay, right. Y'all say the zone is good for certain things, but there's but think about it. If there's two people near the paint, someone's gonna make a pass for the three pointer, and then he's not gonna get there in time, and then the shot's already gonna be off. Okay, no. What I'm saying is, give me a real world uh, example. Give me a, a team, and give me an example of a defense that a certain team likes to uh, utilize that you consider weak defense. Or Bro, is it lazy? Is it's, their team it's not, lazy? What it like? What is it? He can't name a team. He just it's saying, not a specific it team. Shop. It's just what it is. Like, yeah, he, he heard that he, 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 he heard at the barber shop and he's trying to regurgitate it. He don't know. No, what I'm like saying you, say oh, you don't know basketball. Bro. No, but 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 Pootie, if you're gonna say this whole era defensively is weak, explain to me how it's weak. You you said something about guys skipping it to the weak side out of the zone. Obviously, you, you can't do that out of the one three one matchup zone. That's the most common zone in NBA because there's too much ball pressure on ball. You're actually going to have to have some level of ball handling to break the defense down before you throw a skip. So when you say that you can't just throw random skips across the court on an NBA floor, you get the ball gets stolen. You have live ball steals on every possession. That's not true. So what defensive strategy, what teams are defensively weak to you? Every team has weakness on defense, bro. But oh my there God. are teams that are strong on defense. Okay. So but, you the said, but you said this the error. Celtics that. Give me this error. What, what's so weak about this error? Defensive Think error. about it. They are seven put, They are at least seven or six players last time I checked right now that's averaging th over 30 points per game. That's because they're more skilled. Can't... That's because they're more skilled. Oh, now they're more skilled. Crazy. That's because they're more skilled and more gifted. Like some of the shots, hold on, this is the thing. A lot of the shots don't even be ba bad defense. It's it's contested. Just that they the same shots that they make in the game, they practice this, that all in the offseason. They've been practicing that since they was in fifth grade. What is he talking about? They more gifted and they more skilled. You can't, you can't, well, let me ask you this, right? What would Ben Simmons average back then? Ben Simmons would be a superstar in the 90s. Get the hell out of here. Get the yo, bro. Hold nah. on, hold on. Not with his mentality, bro. bro no, 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 he wouldn't, bro. Wrong, wrong explain, example, bro. Wrong how, club, bro. Explain how he wouldn't be a superstar in the 90s. Explain. His mentality, bro. He ain't got it in, though. He's, he's mentally weak. He's, he's mentally weak. What are you talking about? Tell telling me that Ben Simmons, he's faster than everybody in the 90s, more athletic. You don't, and, His meant, uh, he he's cry, mentally bro. weak. He more he's athletic than a lot of people now. He more athletic than a lot of people now. It's not in him. It's not in him to be that type of club, bro. Ben Simmons is a bad example, bro. If you're playing one of the most slowest, weakest areas, you trying to tell me that he wouldn't 
He's y'all talking about right now. No, bro. If you put Ben Simmons with his same skills in the 90s, he would be a superstar. Man, this man, yeah. he, 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 you okay, said in the 90s. Bro, we, though, bro, right? bro, bro, listen, 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 bro. We're talking about the but listen, the eighties is the worst era than the nineties, bro. The nineties is moving on up, bro. Yeah, 90s is the worst. Nineties is the worst era in basketball. Bro, no, it, man. I'm sorry, it, it, bro. It, no, it's it, not. Bro. We got the expansion no, teams. Not, like Jordan, he was able to retire. Went, went three rings, retired, and went three rings again. Then you got because he wrote like that. Because he just liked it. Because he just liked it. Hold on, it was one season. I think it was like five mm-hmm. teams couldn't even win past twenty. Games. Like it's so much with the nineties that y'all don't even know. Y'all just listen to y'all old heads and where well, y'all head in the barber shop. And then, oh, man, the nineties is tough. Nineties is physical. Oh, listen, I'm twenty one, but I'm not one of these youngsters that's gonna cap. For I'm, 20, I'm, 24. I'm 24. I know basketball for real. I'm, I, I just turned 22. I'm 24. I'm going to talk about 2000. I've been, I've been knowing oh. about basketball since I was like three or four. Like, I actually like steady this shit. Like, like, I know what I'm talking about. Y'all just listen to old heads say, oh, man, the 90s. You know that. Yeah. 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 If Jordan playing in this era, I went back and watched film. Man, the yeah. film proves that. So the film you, proves so, that. So if, you, so if you watch all that film, like, how come when he actually was the uh, – it was the one with the defense and today. You couldn't you couldn't say anything wrong. You just said, Oh, players averaging 30 points. Why why couldn't you break down none of the defensive schemes? You couldn't break down help defense. You couldn't break down anything. I don't gotta do all that. Listen, the proof is oh, man. Shut up, man. Shut up, man. Shut up. But you watch film though. Shut up, nigga. But you watch film though. No, not you, nigga. I'm talking about that nigga, man. That nigga tripping, man. That nigga talking about Ben Simmons, man. We're not finna do this, man. No, but, but, but hey, y'all, y'all, y'all see where the conversation is going now? The conversation now just goes to trying to take some of the, the weakest from this era and say, oh, that wouldn't work. And Well, I, I, obviously, we know there's certain players that this era that would struggle to adjust to any era of basketball with Ben Simmons is all mental, has nothing to do with talent. All the intangibles and talent is there. It's just all mental with him. You know, and there's other players that just don't have the mental makeup to survive throughout the NBA because of for whatever reason. So we're not, we're, you I mean, you can do that with everybody, but my biggest thing is with trying to take stars from other eras and just try to act like they could just come into this era and just walk over all the stars, you know, and, and when you compare players from this era to those guys, you just get laughed at. Like you can't compare Jokic to nobody. Jokic, you know, and you can't compare nothing. We can't compare KD to these guys. We can't, to me, that's just crazy right there. But, but uh, Lamont, let, let's be real, right? Because I'm talking about this office skills and, like, everything he can do, right? Yes, we understand Ben Simmons. He wasn't a good shooter. But the 90s, that wasn't a great shooting error. Then, then, then the mention, no zone defense. So they guarded Ben Simmons one-on-one. Ben Simmons, he's already taller than most of them. He's faster. He's more, more athletic. You don't think that he would have his way in the nineties? Like, let's be real. No, no with that mentality. No, 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 no. We're not, not talking about, about no. See, y'all keep talking about all this, bro. But he has his brain bro, too, bro. Like, he can't have a no, fantasy, bro. Talking about technology. Now y'all talking about mentality. We talking about strictly off of skills and talent, bro. You still got to no, use your you brain. You needed bro. a certain mentality. We talking about off of skills. What would Andre Drummond do in the nineties? What would Andre? We You know what would he Andre Drummond? His playing style actually fit the nineties. That's the crazy. Yeah, Andre Drummond. He'll He'll do the same shit, get a lot of rebounds and rim run. I mean, the same shit. Mm, But (laughs) when we talk about Ben Simmons, like, we can't use Ben. No, because Ben Simmons doesn't have the mentality. We're talking about his Hold on, y'all. They will mentally break him. Well, hold on. But you also have to put into consideration. You also have to put into consideration. Back in the 90s, it wasn't as much criticism from social media as well. We no, know a lot of the social media. We, we know a lot of the Ben Simmons breakdown. But floor. we can we can directly connect Ben Simmons mental breakdown with a ton of backlash that he's received from the media and social media. In the 90s, that wouldn't exist. Players didn't receive the same level of criticism. So there's a potential that we could have seen Ben Simmons at his best because players didn't get as much criticism back there. Wouldn't that right, be but- fair to just assume? Right, but Ben, but Ben Simmons gets pissed off when you when his teammates say any wrong, any slight little thing about hold on, him. Hold on, you, you talking about mentality so, though, right? Hold on, hold on, you talking about mentality though, right? I'm, I'm a who, who do you, you think you think Jordan the goat? Michael Jordan is my goat, yes. But hold on, his mentality. You talking about Ben Simmons' mentality? 
Michael Jordan's mentality, like he said out his own mouth that he couldn't play against the zones because he wouldn't have this man, 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 this that's man. The, that's the worst man. That's a that's a defeatist mentality right there too. Oh so, my man, man, this bro. man here, man. Here, I, here I, he I, go. No, that's, what, bro. No, that's, but, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not. Bro, I can't you, believe I'm this. Talking man. about no. athletic, how offer they athletic. Talk. I don't care about no none of that extra. Oh. It's not all that. No, no, you physically, no, nah, listen, you, no, you, listen, you, you, you too much, bro. These guys got you, away you with much, saying because these guys you were clown. They would have made Ben Simmons quit. They would have. That's what yeah, like he would have got punked, punk, bro. How are they going to make Ben Simmons quit? Because ben Simmons would have got, got punked, bro. Right now. What he's do you weak. Mean? And he's soft. He's soft like a Twinkie. Kid, he's bro. soft like cotton nail tissue. What are we saying? And you soft like a bitch. Oh my Nigga, God. What you call <laughs> Wait, what? The yeah. fuck what? What? Man, this thing is tripping. Y'all do realize nah, Ben Simmons, he's 6'10, 240, and he's faster and more athletic. Than... Yes. He, 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 he passes under the, the rim instead of sneaking the shoe. I'm getting scared. I'm retarded. Exactly, bro. Like, he's 6'10, 240. He's scared to go up against Trey Young in the paint. Exactly. Stop it. Stop it. Stop the cap. You trying to tell me that somebody who's bigger. Faster, quicker, more athletic, and a lesser athletic and a lesser skill era wouldn't be able to cook. Like y'all just retarded. Like dude, he's six ten two forty. He doesn't have a check shot. To... What are you talking about? <laughs> you sound foolish right now. Oh my god! I'm gonna eat you, bro. I'm gonna eat you. Oh my god! You're eating six ten two forty and didn't want to go up against Trey Young. Only hey, yeah, but why are we talking about Ben Simmons though? Like, be for real. Oh, yeah, Cause this man, bro. Yeah, like y'all are picking that low hanging fruit. Like it's so easy. Put, it's so easy right now to take shots at Ben Simmons. Wait, y'all hold really up, Lamont. Like y'all eat weren't you the device. same person that also said that low hanging? Fruit yes, yes, yes. yes. They ain't really, the really making nothing debatable. They just going to the weekend. Did you not say that? What did I say about him? No, I'm saying, did you not say that the Bulls would consider trading Zach Levine for Ben Simmons? Did you not no. say that a couple weeks ago? I did ago? not say that. No, no nobody said that. I didn't say that. I just, just, yes, you did. I just, Stop I just, he didn't say that. No, he, he didn't. Hold on. I just posted what a media outlet reported. I didn't say it. I'm just showing you what's being reported. I, so I, do I agree with it? I'm just saying no. it's, it's an interesting trade idea. Y'all take a look at it. This is what's getting reported. <laughs> Y'all be acting like the community post be just my direct words. No, I just tell you what's getting reported. No, Don't get mad at the messenger. The, I'm the messenger. Don't kill the messenger. That was someone we were talking about no how the best not basketball was back then. He's untradeable. I and one of y'all, hey, he like, might be untradeable. Obviously, he didn't get traded. I one didn't one say what happened. I just reported the news. I was like, he would be a superstar. The, the news was the the news was that Ben Simmons was on the trade market. That was a fact. It was the Nets were shopping him mightily. They couldn't get him off. It happens, and it's a well. No, they stuck with him. They stuck with him for the next for the next couple years. <laughs> I don't believe they're going to be stuck with him. I believe they move him this summer, but you know, it, it is what it is. Hey, hey, Lamont, hold on. I got a question. You know how like these old heads be saying this air is soft and all that. Did you see the clip with uh, Jordan? I think he got fouled, and the ref was like, he believed he, called it, he believed that it was a foul because Michael no, Jordan told him it was a foul. It was. What, was what are you talking on. about? It was. Whoa, he was what trolling. you saying? Like, come oh, on, God. Like, yeah, he's talking about, like, when he was on the Washington. The at least, like, the at least my boy Jordan. Why are you trying to with the Celtics? The bro, bro, why are you? Bro, the ref literally you, saying that I believe you because you Jordan. Like, come on, man. Bro, bro, why, listen. Bro, listen, listen, listen. This, 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 this is crazy to say about Michael Jordan. Y'all know when people be like, well, oh, he quit and then he came back and won three. Bro, that's I, sound, I don't think he quit. I ain't gonna lie. I don't think he quit. I think he, he did sick. quit, but he said, but he whether he took a break, bro. Do y'all know I how said, like, I, good, I, I, good I that he, sound he was, he was for somebody to take a break for one year and come back, bro, and win a title? He, he, he was suspended. He was still suspended. Or what? He came back and won right then. He, <laughs> he, he came. Hold on. He lost the first year. He came back. What are you talking about? He yeah, it won right. It won right after that. That's right then. Like that's right. Two years. That's two years. Seventy-two and ten, baby. It's two seasons. It's two seasons. You got two different dynasties. You got weak, one with Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant. That's how weak the air is. He came. It took him. It took him like what? Almost. He came back one. The first year he lost, and the next year he came back. They went seven. That shows y'all how weak y'all base. And not the they Memphis were good. They were what? good. Hold on, hold on, what are you saying? He's Michael Jordan. They, hold on. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna quote uh, Dennis Rodman's own words. He said that the league was so weak that they could beat everybody with his with their eyes closed. He said out of his own mouth. 
That's what he's being confident. As a matter of fact, I'll put That's it. just his confidence talking. What do exactly. you oh, my boy. He didn't have that confidence before Michael Jordan. <laughs> he oh, wasn't winning. Man. Like, he was struggling with the Spurs. The fact that no, he, said he was it, winning with the Pistons. Pistons. Not with the Pistons, yeah. but that was in the 80s. He, no, he said that yeah. was the Bulls. No, no, they won in 1990. No, I'm saying he wasn't saying that before he got on the Bulls. He was on the first. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you. What team was he on before the Bulls? It don't matter. You don't even. This what I'm talking about. He don't know basketball. You don't know basketball. You got too much background noise, man. You got a lot of background noise. So that's not SFM. Who has the background noise? Like I said, that's not me. It don't matter what he was playing for. It don't matter when he said it. The fact that he still said it, it holds. Hey. Hey, before we get out of here, y'all, let me ask y'all a question. Y'all thoughts on, um, and uh, let me give a shout out to uh, everybody that hit the cash app. Salute to Eric in the cash app. Appreciate you. Um, or oh, that's actually Chris, man. Salute, Chris, man. Definitely appreciate that. Yeah, what's good with it? Salute to Double E, man, coming through, supporting the show. And then salute to Best of Seven Sports Talk, man, coming through, hitting the cash app. Appreciate you, man. Make sure y'all check out Best of Seven Sports Talk, man. I was actually checking out one of his live streams the other day. He got a he got a good show over there. I ain't gonna that 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 is no cap right there. He got a really good show. So y'all check him out. It's called Best of Seven Sports Talk. Um, so y'all see him in the chat every now and then. So when you see him, make sure you click his name and, and follow him, man. He had a he had a good guest on the other day. Did a good interview, man. Uh, uh, salute to him as well. But uh, my last thought before we get up out of here, we got about eight minutes to cook on it. Um, you know, I I hear a lot of people because I've been talking about Scottie Pippen a lot lately. I hear a lot of people using 1998 as the base example as to why Scottie Pippen was overrated. And, and the problem with using 1998, because people say he was injured, he only played, I think, a little over 40 games, and he was battling that back injury. But at the end of the day, he still managed to be top 10 in the MVP voting in 1998. But yet people want to push the false narrative that he was just invaluable and Jordan did all the work and the heavy lifting by himself. How does somebody who plays 40 games, a little over 40 games, find a way to stay in the MVP consideration, but yet the fans give him so much backlash? Like I said, like as far as like Jordan fans, like what they do is they try to bring down Pippen or anybody he played with just so that they could bring Jordan up. So they got to say, oh, Jordan, he was doing no this. LeBron fans no, try to did. elevate oh, these God. players. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I didn't let's talk about it. it. I didn't say nothing about LeBron. No, 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 no. You didn't hear me. I said LeBron fans. Y'all were trying to nowadays. Y'all were listen, listen. Y'all were elevate. Y'all were let me okay. Listen. Okay, whoever, whoever, whoever. Okay, whoever. The dude, the dude didn't even finish Bro, this nigga don't this nigga don't shut the fuck up, bro. Like he really don't shut up, bro. Hey, y'all go he one don't at a time. shut up, bro. I was talking and you cut me off. Bro, right. you th- bro, go ahead. Go ahead, Dale. Go, no, let him go. Let go him ahead. Go, go ahead, Davion. Man, all you do is talk like a Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, 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 go Davion. You, go. you would not do this in a real life. But like the fuck? Oh, my yeah, God. I ain't even opposing no three. I ain't seen it. Can I go there, please? Yeah, you go. You go. Okay. Like I said, let me finish with him. Let me finish what I was I'll, saying. I'll man, like come on. Not, man. No, man, no, man. Bro, it's not that hard of a question, man. Can one of y'all just go, man? Like, like my, my thing is, like I said, Scottie Pippen, he's a, like I said, he's a top five player in the 90s. The main thing why Jordan fans try to make it look like, oh, he wasn't this, he wasn't that, because they just want to bring uh, Scottie Pippen down and boost Jordan up, even though Jordan said out his own mouth that if it wasn't for Scottie Pippen, he wouldn't have those rings. In certain situations that they was in, they would, he wouldn't, uh, the certain situation that the Bulls was in, Without Scottie Pippen, it would have been hard for them to get out of those situations. And that's fact. Scottie Pippen was the best defender on that team. Jordan, he was the one that was handling the weight with the scoring and everything. But as far as like doing all the hustling plays, defending the other team's best player, it was Scottie Pippen that was doing all that work. So just as how Jordan was important, Scottie Pippen was a major key piece of that team too. But a lot of these JDRs don't like to admit it. That's all I got to say. So, okay, whatever, okay, and this is what I'm saying. And this is what I'm saying. The LeBron fans, y'all just want to oh, admit not that. Oh no, okay, no, about about me. Look at this LeBron getting emotional. No, okay, okay. Look, we're just gonna say, we're just gonna say this. We're gonna say, okay, that that the the fans, the fans of those people, y'all know, they have started narratives 
to try to elevate, even though we already knew these were great pairs to roll, but they're trying to elevate Scotty. They're trying to elevate. They're trying to make these yeah. dudes seem now more than they're what trying they to elevate are. Steve we're Kerr. not. And we're not trying. Yeah, they're trying to ele even like elevate Steve Kerr. We're not. We're not saying Steve Scotty wasn't great. But y'all try to make Scotty no, just seem no, like but, but Scotty was too hot. Like it's Scotty just the whole SFM. I asked you about Scotty Pippen, and I said specifically about 1998. <laughs> and people specifically try to use 1998 as the year to showcase that Jordan didn't need Pippen. They try to say Jordan. They they try to make the argument that Jordan won the chip basically without Pippen because Pippen was injured, or they don't like to even mention he was injured. They just say he underperformed for whatever reason. At the end of the day, when you go back and revisit 1998, it's very odd that even with a little over 40 games played, Pippen was still top 10 in, in the MVP votes. So I want to know, how did a guy that the fans claim was so insignificant still manage to be an MVP candidate with only 40 games played? And then I have to trust and believe you guys that you say he didn't have an impact in the playoffs as well. That don't make sense to me. Why is that logic getting pushed? And how did it, Scottie Pippen, if he was so bad, sneak his way into the MVP vote? Wasn't Scottie Pippen the best small forward in the league for the whole 90s? Well, yeah. I know that. I just want to know why people pushed oh, okay. this logic in 1998 specifically. Because he was I've hurt. Been, I've been no, but at, but but even with him being hurt. He was top 10 in MVP voting. So that means when he played to still maintain to maintain a top 10 status in MVP voting, and you're not even playing as many games as some of these other players, you have to be playing really good basketball when you're on the court. I think everybody would agree to that. To still be in the MVP conversation and you played half as many games as everybody else, you got to be playing some really good basketball. But why – our fans trying to sell to us that Jordan did his on his own in 98. No, but Lamont, can I ask you an honest question? Um, yes. AD, AD in 2022 last season, he played about 40-something games. Was he you anywhere close? Like AD. Oh, my God. Yeah, man, man, what the man? That's a man. Oh, come on, oh, man, Hold on, y'all. Let him ask this. Hold on. Let, me, no, no. I, let him ask this question. Is, I can answer. Go ahead. Okay. No, so I was asking. So oh. – when AD only playing like 40 something games, like just this last season, and he was averaging like 22 and 10, did you think that's anywhere comparable to what Scotty was doing? Did you not just hear what he said? No, oh my god, y'all just be running y'all. I don't I, hold on, ask your question one more time. You said, Why, why would I compare a Laker team that was no, 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 out no, no, of the no, 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 Laker race. team? I just said strictly AD, so we're saying AD played 40 games, but he was – we can clearly tell he was not the same player he was before. It's the same thing with Scotty in 1998. So when you say he was a top 10 player – No, like, but, when, hold on, but how was it clear he wasn't the same player? What, for AD? No, nah, Pippen, Pippen, Pippen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. In 1998 – Yes. What do you mean it was clear he wasn't the same player? He he averaged dang near 20 points per game and had similar numbers to any other season. The only difference was that he was injured. Right. And, Again, and he actually – Right. No, but I'm going off of his production from the postseason. Clearly, clearly, he would, clearly he had declined is what I'm saying. Like, going into those postseasons, even in the finals, like, he was clearly hurt. Like, he clearly wasn't playing, like, a top 10 – MVP seat caliber dude by the time the playoffs okay. rolled around is what I'm saying. Yeah, but but you answered it yourself. If he was clearly hurt, then how if you're clearly hurt, how can you play like a top 10 player? Right. So especially if point. the injuries what? nagged all season, if especially if the injuries nagged you all season, it's only getting progressively worse. Because you remember even going into that next season, he only played 50 games, and that's the season where he cashed in and got his big payday. I'm sorry, go ahead. My fault. I, I had something to take care of. But um, that's my point. So if he's injured, why even say he, he's a top 10 MVP? Like, I don't As he was in the top 10 voting for the oh – Okay, so hold on, hold on. So when, hold on. Actually, so when we go to his – when we go to his playoff numbers, okay, the only thing that declined his was points. his points. His points went down by three, but his rebounds went up. His assists stayed the same, it and his went steals up. went up. So he averaged more steals, he averaged the same assist, and he averaged more rebounds. He only declined by three points, actually about two points, 
um, in the playoffs. So he went from 19.1 to about 17 per game in the playoffs. He creased his rebounds by two. Assists were still five a game, and he went up in steals to two steals a game from one in the regular season. So what do you mean he wasn't the same in the playoffs? I'm just talking about in terms of just his impact and just what he was doing. I'm just going back to game six to when LeBron is just, I'm not talking about not LeBron, fucking um, Jordan is just going crazy with 45. He's basically carrying the team. And he was basically carrying that entire finals like going into that for that Utah Jazz series is what I was saying. Yeah, but so there was a whole just, playoff run before that one game, though. There was a whole okay, playoff okay, run. Okay, so hold on. Well, when we go into that game, playoff clearly, run. Hold on, hold on. We can go into that playoff run. So the only two games you can talk about are the last two games of that series where Pippen struggled. Like, why don't you go to that game four when Pippen scored 28 or games one and two when he had 21? Why do you always – why does everybody run to that game six where Jordan played really well, Pippen struggled, and even in that game five, Pippen struggled, but you don't – when they actually won – that game four, you don't give him credit for dropping 28. Dang near having a triple-double, and he played damn near 50 minutes that game. They don't do it because they don't help their narrative. That's why. So he had in that series, he had three 20-point games, close to a 30-point game. And then even in the game, in game five, where he scores six points, he still gave you 11 rebounds and 11 assists with three steals and a block. In 45 minutes. So he might not have been contributing on the offensive side, giving you all the points. And that was a low scoring game as it was, but he was giving you the rebounds, the assists, and the steals. Why are we complaining? Just because and he's that's it. And listen, I'm not here to completely slander Sky Pippen. He's top 50 all time. Only issue I have with it is when we start saying he's top 25, he's top 20, he's top 10. That half of the guys legitimately. Okay, why is he not top, top twenty? So, so, so I have him top twenty. Nineteen ninety eight. No, no, I have him top twenty. He's six and zero in the finals. Why can't I have him top twenty? <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want me to answer that? No, but he's six and not only on. yes, he's <laughs> undefeated in the finals though. Not only is he six and zero, thanks him to and who? Jordan. Thanks to who? Him and Jordan three peated with two different teams around them. <laughs> And and, 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 and and so what I'm saying is, and, and and we know he played a major role in those championships because from 1990, from 1994 to 1998, he was top 10 in MVP voting. So Jordan was playing with an MVP candidate all those years. So so just like Kobe and Shaq, Pippen was a 1B because he was an MVP candidate all those oh years. Oh, my God. Mm. Okay, listen, if you... Listen, nah, Lamont, okay, not Lamont, come on now. Nah, don't go there, man. Come on, now. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. You can't tell me... Uh, when I say MVP candidate, I'm talking top 10 in votes. If from 1994 to 1998, Pippen was top 10 in MVP voting, why do I need to... Why, how can y'all tell me he was a role player? Nah, nah, he was the 1B. That's fair to see. Nah. Right. Hold on. 19. Hold on. First of all, he spent the majority of his time in the 90s. You know, he has more MVP votes in the 90s than Hakeem Olajuwon. Total. And who is another better MVP small forward than Pippen? He has more MVP votes than Hakeem. He had he was top 10 in MVP votes in 1992. And then from 1994, Does that make him he was top 10. No, what I'm saying is we're talking about how significant of a player he was. And, hold on, and, Lamont, you and there's no that. way y'all can tell me he wasn't as significant as you might think. How you know, is he continuously in the top 10 and he's top 10 in MVP votes? You know what's crazy? So, is, even <laughs> in the year that y'all claim he wasn't himself. They said they say that, oh, that uh they'll bring up game six in 1998, but what they don't tell you is that they'll bring up the eight points, but, but what they won't tell you is that because since they don't like analytics, that he had a plus minus of plus 16. Man, man, bro, you sound so random, bro. Oh like, my god, bro. Bro, this man He's stat whoring <laughs> at this point. Bro, like I'm the, hey, bro, you so a casual, bro. It's crazy, bro. No, no but look, y'all. <laughs> uh, look, 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 the point is this. Man bringing up Dizzy Snap. Why why are people yeah, trying to, like Andy why Andy are people trying to convince us that Scotty was lesser even in ninety eight when he was injured? When there's nothing that supports that. 
Everything that I'm seeing supports that he was still an elite player in 1998, even when he was injured. Yet people are continuously pushing this narrative that he was hurt and Jordan had to carry the team the whole year and Jordan had to carry him through the playoffs because Pippen wasn't doing anything. Yet when I look at Pippen's playoffs numbers, his playoffs numbers are just as good as they were in any other playoff run. The only difference that, that's, is two points. That, that's because Pippen then wrote this book and started hating on Jordan after he made that documentary. Yeah. And, and, and that's exactly why. Bro, but how, Bro was but how come no one says – that he he Jordan, better of his how, how come no one says Jordan was hating on Pippen in his last Pippen dance? Because Pippen is clearly document. better. How better. is he hating on better. Pippen? He's, he's, he's better. better. He's 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 better. He quit on his team Made in that year bad. versus the Knicks. And they, and they emphasized that to the T. Oh, they they wanted to make sure that that was no. And a lot of people walked away from that thinking that Pippen was a quitter. Nobody walked away wa after watching the last dance talking about how great of a player Scottie Pippen was. No, they, they did not mention, they never mentioned in the last dance that Pippen was a top 10 MVP <laughs> candidate for about oh, six God. years of the 90s. They didn't mention anything about Scottie bro, Pippen dominating. You had like Pippen never got his credit. You had like Pippen never got his credit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bro, the oh, last bro. dance kind of ruined Pippen's legacy, bro. So, so Pootie, who gave Pippen his credit? Jordan clearly said that he don't win no, no, no. sticks without Outside of Jordan. Jordan also told Pippen down, too. No, no, Pootie. Huh? Who gave Pippen credit? Who gave who, what? Who, who gave Pippen his credit, Pootie? The cold. <laughs> well, we know on, those now. people are. I'm talking about somebody outside of the Bulls organization, not named Phil. But we know, though, we know they appreciate Pippen because Jordan couldn't win nothing until he got Pippen. So we know he appreciates. Man, Pippen. Jordan was one and nine in the playoffs without Scottie Pippen, and, he had and LeBron record. was zero and two in the finals. Why are you talking Dwayne about Wade. LeBron, Pooty? Oh, <laughs> no, because why is he talking about what? Why? You see, for every time that's why I keep coming at him, bro. He always got something Nobody smart said. to say, bro. Nobody said yeah. that. Shut up, Demetrius. Shut up, Demetrius. Nobody said Demetrius. Nah, oh, every God. time you say Jordan won and not, I'm gonna rebuttal that argument. Nobody's bringing up LeBron. Why, hold on, this is my thing, right? How come whenever somebody says something about Jordan, right? How come you don't bring up Kareem? How come you don't bring up Wilt? How come it's always LeBron? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, like, I'm my God, God, bro. Listen, y'all brought up sexuals, man. Hold on, but Rudy, you brought LeBron up. I just heard about Pippen. Nah, because he listen. You can't listen. I, I get it. Jordan was one nine before Pippen. I'm not gonna deny that, that at what all. What does that have to do with LeBron? What does that have to do with LeBron? But I can use the same argument for him. What are you talking? We're not, but we're not talking. But about what's the point LeBron. of bringing a man up, though? Nah, because he listen. He can't sit here and try these to LeBron cook haters, us When I can make not, an argument, these LeBron haters the real. You, I, I, I hate LeBron. LeBron, LeBron. As I never said you, that. You, I hate but Pootie, can you answer the question, Pootie? He can't because he has no basketball knowledge. Pooty, we were talking about Scotty. And, and you have a brain. You don't have a brain. Okay, so Pooty, you don't have a brain. Pooty, let me ask you this question. Man, that man is retarded. Pooty, why, why, why are people trying to, why are people trying to use 1998 to make it seem like Jordan won a championship by himself with no help? Listen, Jordan had, no, we had, they had a no, good no, team. No, 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 he no, had no, help. He had help. He had a good team. He had help, but Jordan was doing most of the heavy lifting. Okay, what do you mean, scoring? So you can you consider scoring the heavy lifting? No, and he was the best defender on his team. That's he was the best. Oh my. <laughs> how, how is he not? What are you talking about? Scotty Pippen wait, was wait, the one guarding. Demetrius, right? That's your name. Demetrius, that's your name, right? He wasn't even the best. He was. Hold on, Jordan wasn't even the second best defender on his team. Like, come on, now. No, Demetrius, I want to ask man, you a quick question. Man, in the 1991 Dale, NBA it's Finals, Dale, it's Dale, finals not who was guarding Magic? It's Dale, not Demetrius. Oh, I'm I'm, Dale. Scotty Dale. Pippen oh, was guarding Magic. Scotty Pippen was guarding Magic. That Pippen? man named oh, no. Demetrius. Uh, MJ, MJ, MJ actually guarded Scotty Pippen more. I mean, guarded guarded Magic more than Scotty Pippen in that finals. No, he did not. Magic Johnson was his primary defender. Magic Johnson was guarded by Michael Jordan for most of that series. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Incorrect. That's incorrect. 
What? Nah, that ain't true. I mean, I can't really just say it one person. They, they, they switched Pippin, they switch Pippin they on switch uh, Magic Pippin after the first game, game man. The Lakers won the first game. Yeah, Magic had the triple double. And then they switched Pippin onto him to cover him 94 feet. And then Pippin and Jordan, they, they kind of switched back and forth. That's what I'm saying. They was, it's not like just one player with this guard. They, they was uh, switching. My whole point was majority, it wasn't primarily the majority of the series. I can't really say majority. Like I said, I can't hey, really look, say Hold on. We going off, we going off tangent it. again, talking about stuff that it completely went away from what I asked because nobody refuses to give Pippen his flowers. And I'm all I'm asking you. is when we're talking about Jordan, when I made a post where Larry Bird, a man who played in the, in the 90s, a man who coached with against Jordan and Pippen, a man who played with Jordan and Pippen on the Olympic team, out of his own mouth, the man said the second best player of the nineties was Scottie Pippen. That's not me. Once again, y'all can he get also mad said at that. Hold on, Jordan hold on, them. one second. I don't care what he also said. I'm talking about somebody who's credible. Somebody who I, I gave you what made him credible. Played against Jordan without Pippen. Played against Jordan with Pippen. Played with Jordan and Pippen on the dream team. He coached against Jordan and Pippen when he was with the Pacers. He knows all about the 90s plus some. He knows all about these guys as teammates, coaching against them. He saw how they were. He saw how both these players were when they didn't play with each other. And he said Scottie Pippen was the second best player of the 90s. Okay, when so he was playing next to Jordan. Oh, 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 don't, don't matter. But that, that's what he spent most of his career with. And so when Larry Bird says that, Where's all the talk that Larry Bird's out of his mind back crazy? What was Larry Bird seeing on the floor about Scottie Pippen that something ain't registering the same as what y'all seeing? Hey, so, I, I mean, the same story. person that said he, he saw God me. disguised as Michael Jordan. Okay, so let me are ask you telling me? Oh, oh, so that, that means, are you saying Larry Bird is not credible? I'm not saying that, but I'm, he also said I'm that he didn't play next hey, to Michael but, Jordan. Chris, that means, we're not having a conversation about what he also said. We're having a conversation about Scottie Pippen. I'm just asking y'all to stay on topic. That is about just... Scottie Pippen. I was having my own topic. Yes. Hold on. You somebody got some background going on, man. Yeah, somebody got it's some me. noise. It's not me. It ain't me. I think it is it you. It's me. Either. It ain't me. All right. No, so what hey, all I'm saying is there was a multitude of people, and it wasn't just Larry Bird, because Dennis Rodman said the same thing. And then Dennis Rodman even did an interview, um, as I already played on his channel. Where Dennis Rodman said, we had a player poll right before the All-Star break. A player poll asking who was the best player in the league in 94 when Jordan was gone. And all the players voted that Scottie Pippen was the best player in the league over Elijah Wan. And this was the year that Elijah Wan won the MVP, which was voted by the media. The players felt otherwise. So what I'm saying is there was a consensus amongst the players that Pippen, when Jordan was gone, was the best player in the league. Larry Bird said that Pippen was the second best player of the 90s. When we go to the MVP votes, Scottie Pippen consistently stayed in the top 10 in MVP votes. And then there were multiple years where he was top three. And then even in 98, when he only played a little over 40 games, where everybody says Jordan did all the heavy lifting, Pippen still found himself top 10 in MVP votes. He still put up 19 a game and did Scottie Pippen numbers. And even when he went to the playoffs, his numbers were just as good as they had been in any other playoff run. And his points only went down by two points, but he did the same, if not better, in all other statistical categories. Why is this narrative? I need y'all hey, to answer. Me, Why is this narrative I, getting pushed about Pippen? Can I? Let me ask a question. And the only let difference me, is points. Can I, let me ask Lamont a question. Because it exposes that you guys only watch guys that score. Can I have a bottle, please? Well, how you figure he ain't get his flowers? He's top 50 and he's Hall hey, of Fame. So what else you want, what what you want to do? What that Elijah won one MVP. Oh, Kane, he didn't get his flowers because he did top all of the things. Hall of Fame? Hold on, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. He did all of the things that I said. Hello. All of the accolades, all of the MVP votes, all of the defensive accomplishments, all, all of the NBA – first and second teams, but yet somebody came in here and said, and then on top of that, he's six and on the finals, but yet somebody came in here and said, it's crazy to put him top 20 all time, even with all of that. Yep. What did, uh, I have a question 
about Scotty Pippen? Yeah. Okay, so what was his numbers game seven, 1990 against the Pistons in the in that uh, Eastern Conference Finals? Y'all. Yep. I don't know. Hold on. Who asked the question? West asked the question. And you okay. muted me. Asked, I'm trying because <laughs> everybody was talking. That was my fault. I'm trying. I'm trying to right. mute everybody. I just need to know what was your question. My question was, what was you got the computer? So what was Scotty Pippen's numbers? Game seven, Eastern Conference Finals, 1990s, against the Pistons. Oh, you want me to go to one game for you? I'm just asking that. Okay. I'll That's a big game. game. That's okay, a big game. One game. Yeah, I game, one game seven. Jordan showed up with 31 points. Okay. I, you said game seven. What year was it? 1990. Reverse the Pistons. Yeah. Uh, game seven. 80, my game game. Forty minutes and two points, crazy. Dang, that's crazy. Okay, two points minus nineteen. That's crazy. Okay, third year, third year play. That's that one. Bad okay, game. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now West. No, but y'all say you was the big. No, no, no. I just, I just asked the question. See how they move the I'm not saying nothing else. I just asked the question. That's all. Is this a question? I can bring up plenty of bad games from Jordan. What does that mean? No, no, okay. West. Wait, who West, won West, bad games? Hold up, hold up. Bro, everybody has bad games. What you saying? All right, so why y'all bringing? Gotta shut up, man. God damn, y'all don't know how to shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ! Can't two people have one conversation because y'all just running your mouth? Like, y'all act like y'all fucking all special ed. Man, y'all act like some retarded kids sometimes. See, y'all wonder why a lot of white people stay away from these goddamn panels. They don't want to hear all this nonsense. God damn, we and this, I got to put this shit on Spotify. Y'all motherfuckers just run around, act like these podcasts is y'all's. Y'all can't shut the fuck up and let people have a basketball conversation. Y'all be wondering why people want to shut this shit down. And just leave this shit as one person and just record videos and just make their money off the, off the ad revenue when y'all get up here and act a damn fool. Y'all can't shut y'all fucking mouth. God damn. Just shut the fuck up sometimes. Now, I don't, I'm not surprised why Ticket be banning the fuck out of some of y'all idiots. God damn. I told y'all I got this shit on Spotify. I got it on Twitch and I got to try to find a way to clean up this audio. And every time we start having a good conversation... Everybody want to start yelling and sounding like some little fucking kids. Shut the fuck up sometimes and we're going to let you on the panel. That's all you got to do. And when it's your turn to talk, talk. It's just basketball. God damn, y'all act like some fucking retarded fucking kids. Told y'all this shit. And y'all don't, y'all don't send enough cash app donations for people to really be donating this shit. Y'all really don't. It's only a handful of people that actually are willing to donate. And for the people that are d- actually donate, they ain't trying to hear this retarded. You got people with fucking babies in the background. You had somebody on here playing 2K and shit. Y'all motherfuckers come up here disrespectful as fuck. Y'all sound like some fucking idiots half the time. And it's not about what you say. It's about how you come up here unprofessional. Y'all don't give a damn about the platform. When I ask you not to cuss, you cuss. Y'all t- over talk people. Y'all do some retarded shit up here. And then you get mad when LVZ and all these people get to blocking you doing all this crazy stuff. Y'all just shut the fuck up. This is why I do reactions and stop going live as much. It's annoying as fuck. Come on. Wes, what's your question, man? You already answered the question, bro. But in fairness with those numbers. No, no. Just cover it. Here's my question to you. You asked one question about one game. Yeah, but I just want to say that. No, you asked me about my question to you is you asked me, you asked me about one game of his entire playoff career. My question to you is, what was the point about bringing up one bad game? When, if you look up his stats in the playoffs, he's overwhelmingly a very good playoff performer. What did the one game prove? You going to let me answer the question? Okay. So a lot of the bad rap that Scottie Pippen got started from that game. That's where the narrative got built about Scottie Pippen. In fairness to Scottie Pippen, he said he was suffering with migraines. From that game, Scottie Pippen got the rep of being a soft player. 
That's what the narrative got built around Scottie Pippen. So when you ask questions, that's the answer. That's the reason why I brought that up. Not to say Scottie Pippen wasn't a great player. Scottie Pippen was one of the greatest small forwards of all time. That's a fact. But that game right there built a narrative that Scottie Pippen is a soft player and he doesn't show up in big games. And it got proven later on that that is not the fact, but that's where that started. Okay, I understand where it started. I, 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 again, okay. I, I know everybody has one bad game. Again, I, I just, I just, and I, I tend not to believe that because people didn't define Larry Bird for some of his poor finals performances. People didn't attach any weird stigma to Magic Johnson for his tragic Johnson moment because there were things that these players did after the fact that completely made up for it. Plus, I don't think fans were that stupid back then. They, I think fans back then understood it was a bad game. I think now it gets pushed and there's a stigma used to say Kobe could choke in big games because of that. But I don't know if that was a true sentiment back then that was held on to. And the reason why I, I know that, the reason why I know that is because going into 1992, if there was some stigma attached to him, he wouldn't have been top 10 in MVP votes. From 1993 to 1998, how is he top 10 in MVP votes if there's this big media stigma attached to him that he solved? How is he getting all of this? How is he making first team all defense eight times if people think he's soft? How is he first team all NBA multiple times if people think he's soft? He was first team all he was he was he made all NBA teams the major almost every year in the 90s. So all these weird stigmas keep getting thrown out there that where you said people yeah, think he was this and people think I he was that, an but there was that nothing question. that supports that. And then we even have an when you go to his question. playoff. Even when you go to his playoff numbers, those numbers don't reflect how he performs in the playoffs. So that so that lends more credibility to Pippen actually having migraines and not playing up to what he normally does. Because from that from every other game suggests that when he's fully healthy, he's giving you great defense, rebounding, assist, and points. But because that's what he normally does when when all things are normal, when there's nothing wrong. So when Yao started to say he was faking migraines. Well, if you can only Who give me one, but you brought up this game and said, this is, I'm only assuming that people said he was soft because they thought he was either faking or they didn't think his headache was as no, serious. This, as what no, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. From that point forward, the next year when he showed up against the Pistons and they swept the Pistons, that got swept under the rug when he swept the Pistons with Jordan. I'm saying so if that away, reps, if it went away if, that if, quick, if, 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 let let me let me finish what I'm saying. I'm saying that's where that started. Some people let it go when he came back the next year and he beat the Pistons. Some people didn't. Some people kept saying. Some people kept pointing back to that. Well, where was Scottie Pippen at Game Seven against the Pistons? I'm just saying that's where that started. And then the next year when they swept the Pistons. The Pistons admitted, Mark Aguirre, John Sally, both said, hey, man, he showed up that game. He wasn't weak no more. We tried to do what we did to him the year before, and it didn't work. Some people said that game seven, he didn't have migraines, that he just didn't want to deal with the Pistons. That's what some people hold said. On, That's on. what the Pistons but Again, said. You, you went to one game. Because like, the thing is, if you look at his performance throughout that entire series in 1990, he was right. having a, a damn good series leading up to game seven. So all, why sure all was. of a sudden, why all of a sudden would people attach this soft stigma to him if he had a great series, even a game three performance that was crazy? And, mm -hmm. and then all of a in sudden, Chicago. but then all of a sudden he has two points in the game seven. Something has to be wrong. If he's if he's if if he's giving you 42 minutes and his production completely falls off. And we know it's not attributed to the, anything the Pistons are doing defensively. Maybe there's just some truth. Wasn't to it. that just, when Bill Lambert elbowed the crap out of him? But that's know. what the Pistons said. The Pistons said their narrative was he was scared and he didn't want it. That's what their narrative was. But, but my, but nobody. Not still my narrative. Me. Not why West. Fans? Not West narrative. That's the Pistons narrative. Yeah, but why are fans? Why do? Why am I hearing from fans? And then you have more fans doubling down and supporting it this logic that pippen 
and Jordan were so far apart that Pippen was just a really good role player. And, oh, and Jordan you. basically did a lot of this heavy lifting, as you guys call it, on his own. And and I think you guys call heavy lifting scoring. Who's you guys? Because, well, I'm just saying that people in general, because somebody said Jordan okay. did the heavy lifting when trying to define this. They said Jordan did the heavy lifting. The only thing Jordan was doing better than Pippen across the board was score. Other than the rebounding, assists, steals, block, if it wasn't the tide, it was always in Pippen's favor. And the majority of the time, every other statistical category was in Pippen's favor. I, I feel like you have to be more mentally tough. You have to be a better player to do all of those things great. Sacrifice your scoring because we know he was a 25-point-per-game score. He showed when he when Jordan left, we know he could score the ball with the best of them. So he sacrificed his scoring to do all the other things that fans. So do you, so do you consider still in – you consider when Jordan retired in 98 or 99 when he played for the Blazers? Do you think he was way past his prime then? I don't think he was past his prime, but it was clear he was dealing with injury and health was a major concern for him. That was clear. Okay. Yeah, his back was so, never the yeah. same. Because remember okay. that first Good. year when he left the Bulls, he only played 50 games. That tells you that back was still bothering him. He was trying to get back healthy, but he was never the same after 98. Wasn't that 40. a strike year? Wasn't that a strike think, Yeah, I was going to say, I think that, oh, that, yeah, yeah, that, that was a lockout year. That was a yeah. lockout year, not a strike, oh, a yeah, lockout year. Well, then, damn, that's that even good. crazier than that he still came back and still played 50 games. Yeah, that was the year the Spurs won. Yeah, it was a lockout year. Mm -hmm. And he played his um, most minutes he ever played in his career that season. Right, but Pippen wasn't – even when Jordan left, Pippen is more of a team-oriented player. So that's why he doesn't really score as much. So exactly. I think when he went to Houston and when he went to the Blazers, I think he wanted to kind of just play the role of the veteran leader who, you know, just settled down the team and got everybody involved rather than try to be the top scorer. Now, do you I think Pippen had do you think Pippen had leadership skills to lead a team to a championship? Yeah. I mean I disagree. It was one bad call away from the conference finals. So, you gotta think. I mean, I mean Again, and I don't know why people discredit the Bulls players themselves. It, a, bit, a, a report came out in Sports Illustrated when they interviewed almost all of the other Bulls players. They all said, we felt the leader of the team was Scottie Pippen. That's who they said. Now, like Now, y'all can, from, from a fan perspective, y'all can go hash it out. I'm just taking what the players say. When, when I'm, no, I'm I heard Steve about say that. I'm talking about Steve Kerr, Tony Coolers, the Bill Winningtons. These guys said we felt like the leader was Pippen. Now, to say he could lead a team to a championship, well, that's really hard well, to Pippen do. Pippen ran the offense. Pippen ran the offense. But to say you can, he could lead a team to a championship, I would have to see him with his own team for a 10-year stretch. Pippen right, was only right. giving his, his own team, team for a year him. and a half. With a he team was only, built around him. Yeah, yeah, and built around him. But he was only giving his own team for a year and a half. And people kill him. Because in that year and a half when he had an opportunity to lead the Bulls, minus the team's best score, they say he couldn't get his team to the championship. And then that second year, they they try to knock him and say, oh, the Bulls started off horribly. But they don't take into consideration that their third best player, which had turned into their second best player when Jordan left, Forrest had Grant. left the team yep. and went to the Orlando Magic. Yep, so exactly. they, lost their, they lost two of the top three players going into that 94-95 season, and Pippen was struggling with the Bulls because he's now struggling to a team without Jordan and Horace Grant. But then he gets slaughtered for struggling during that time frame. I think he just gets such unfair criticism. Right? They say he can't win a championship. He's only given a year and a half to do so on his own. I think he did a really good job in that short time, but he, gets, he just gets I think he did too. But, what, but then why is it so hard that time. if you look at everything Pippen did plus the 6 and 0? How is he not top 20? Yeah, what do you think, think Pippen would have been without Jordan? Don't know. If he never played on the same team as Jordan. Uh, he would have been what we saw in 94. Uh, MVP candidate. Oh, he just would have got to 94 without never playing with Jordan? He would have got to that level? Oh, you ask me what he would look like no, without I'm Jordan. You. We saw yeah, what he looked point. like without Jordan. He was 
no, arguably no, the we, best player no, in the no, league. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, Lamont. If I'm saying without Jordan, period, never playing with Jordan, not after playing with Jordan for five or six years, I know, and then playing without him, I'm saying if he never played with Jordan, the I same Pippen who came from Central of, Arkansas, I can only go off of the sample size that we saw. We never seen it. The sample size that first of all, you're asking me about what he would do if he never played with Jordan to begin with. Well, right. The only thing I can use to even come close to that. The only thing I can use to come close to that is say, well, what did he look like when he didn't play with Michael Jordan? Okay. What did he look like when he played without Michael Jordan? What's the only example of that that we have? 93, 94. And he was arguably the best player in the NBA. And he what wasn't he bad like as a rookie. And he led his team in every statistical category. So that's what I think Scottie Pippen would have been. I mean, and I think Phil Jackson playing with you. And to, I think get, and to get drafted from that team. small school, bro, I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment, bro. Like, he's the only guy in that school's history to ever go to the NBA. I mean, like, the guy was going to be something – with or without MJ. Now, the championships, I don't know about all that, but in terms of his talent, the talent was already there. It would just be on him and his work ethic, and I think he was a hard worker. People say Michael Jordan made Scotty. I mean, like, that's a complete, like, disrespect to a person's, like, individual work ethic and will to be great, like, when you say another guy made him. I mean, Scotty had to be a special look, player to make my, the NBA. I, I, this, is, I, this is what I struggle with. And I know we can talk about how good Scotty was. I struggle with when we talk about all of that, and then you include the six and zero with it. How does the six and zero? Because the six and zero is so we we know the six and zero is impactful because we hear it so much with Jordan. We we know, especially in the Jordan Lebron conversations, if the six and zero is that impactful, why isn't it impactful? With Scottie Pippen, when Jordan himself said this could not have happened without him, I think I think it's because Scotty couldn't squeak out at least one Finals MVP. That's the only thing I could think of, man. I mean, okay, but he played know. during a time where scoring the ball was extremely glorified. No yeah. defensive guy was gonna. What what guy won Finals MVP that was pure defense, pure defensive guy in the nineties? You you had and Scotty, we know he sacrificed his offense to do everything else for that Bulls team, especially when Jordan played, because the bulk of their offense was going through Michael Jordan. I, I just don't know how he doesn't get the six and oh boost. Why is the six and oh boost only given to Jordan? Because I think I think that um during that run, that entire run, the six and oh run. You didn't see Pippen making a lot of clutch plays on offense to kind of pull the Bulls through. It was like, and even when Jordan left, Phil Jackson didn't even give him the chance to be clutch because he let Tony Kukoc take that shot. Do you believe that you can only be clutch on offense, or did we? Well, not no, that's why I said. Did, did we that's not see clutch, clutch defensive plays? plays? I think oh, everybody. Yeah. I think one memory that's burned in everybody's mind is the block on Charles Smith right. against the Knicks. Multiple blocks. right in the mix of that, creating that stop. So again, we he has he even he has memorable clutch defensive stops. That's clutch, clutch defense against Mark Jackson versus the Pacers. The Pacers were truly the only team that really threatened the Bulls and were a few minutes away at eliminating them, killing that three peak. Pippen played a major responsibility in slowing up Mark Jackson, who was the engine of that offense. That's clutch. So it depends on what you define as clutch. That's why am I going back to is Jordan only getting this boost because we favor or 90s fans are favoring the offensive side of the ball and you don't really truly care about any defense. Because if it Well, was the, the thing defense, about America, Jordan, we, we, we saw him make clutch plays on offense and defense, though. But we seen exactly. Pippen do the same thing as well. What clutch Second. offensive plays did we see Pippen make? Okay. Yeah, because I don't how, I don't how, remember how, no, no offensive moments for Pippen either. Okay, I'll pull them. No, up. I'm just asking. No, no, no I, I seen Pippen. Up. Hold on, hold on. I seen Pippen hit some clutch threes in that Blazer series in the finals. I seen him do some things like that. And no, 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 on no, the no I'm talking about with the Bulls. I got it right here. 
it, it right? No, no. I'm saying I'm saying against the Blazers. Ninety two. When he was playing with the Bulls. Well, we, and okay, but that, see, means, that means you remember a clutch moment. I just said that. <laughs> now, okay, but I you also just asked which clutch moments, and then you proceed to tell me I the clutch asked, moments. I asked you, and then I named some. Is that okay? <laughs> Is that all right? Look, hey, okay, hey, so here, we can re- here, here, right here, um, in the playoffs against the Pacers, he did some good things. Scottie Pippen hit uh, back to back three pointers, tying the game, saving the playoff game. Oh, hold on, I can. Pull, I'm just gonna pull the video up. We're just gonna pull it up. So, so. So we can kill the narrative that he didn't have clutch offensive moments in the playoffs, and so you don't credit everything to Jordan. I'm just gonna play the video, and and, and it's crazy because all his clutch playoff shots. This video is over five minutes long. He got a ton of these moments. Yeah, I would love to see it. Oh, let me put it. I'm gonna do it like this so the video don't buffer. Thank you, Khalil. He says the panel does sound much better. But you know, Khalil, I didn't mean to get on him that tough. It just gets annoying up here. Like when, you know, it's not like we have to agree, but man, it just be killing it. Like, and I know people listening don't want to just sit there and just hear a whole bunch of just like just crazy. Come on, you heard you heard some of them ages they said. Yeah, but it drowns out the conversation that every we, nobody can hear each other. It just gets annoying to me, man. I just be sitting here. I be wanting to just click in broadcast. All right, here I'm about to play this. We about to see. You might need to post these, Lamont, Kendall. so people can see them. <laughs> yeah, I think he had a clutch block against Kendall Gill, and they played the Nets. Yeah, he had some good moments. Hold on here. I'm about to share. I'm about to do it right now. I ain't gonna play it too long because sometimes they be trying to hit us with the copyright, man. So I'm, a, but I, I'm gonna definitely play some of it. Hold on. All right, here we go. Right here. Let's see if we remember any of these because I think we forget how good he was on the offensive side. Of the game. This is a guy during the course of the season who has attempts five threes a game. Pippen has 22 to 24 team points. The goal have in the quarter. George lost it. Look at the lost it. Murray. Pippen is driving in. And God damn. And hey, that was a big time play. <laughs> right to the floor, catching his hip. Now just watch it right here. See, as he falls, bam, that is a hard fall. That was almost a turnover. Have the ball. Lost it. Look out. Three on one. Pippen. That was a good pass. That was nice. Scotty Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and Robert Harris are going back door. Finally, for the Lakers, they feel it cost them. Big thing is they got to win it. Pippen to Jordan. He cannot have if they want to win. Pippen kicks it out to Harper. Scotty Pippen, tough fake up and under. Yeah, that's a nice fake. This is called the up and under fake. That is really nice. Can you get the guy up in the air? It's up. 
Brown with the score at all. And he's got it. Pippen able to put it down. Gives it to Pippen. Scotty Pippen with a gorgeous move, hard dribble, quick stop up in the air, and there's the post move by Scotty Pippen. The last here in the second quarter. Morrell, give and go to Pippen, basket, counts and a foul. Yeah, Pippen was slept on, man. I ain't yeah, play the whole thing. Pippen be slept on. Man. That's yeah, that's a damn good ball. Come on, Lamont. You know, you know that was that was decent, but that wasn't like. That wasn't like if we put him up there with some of the greats, it ain't gonna be like no, uh, no. The one, the, I the mean, one thing about it is, moments, as far as the, the one thing, but but the thing is, when like when he when they showed the the, the plays against the Knicks, that was a clutch game, right? all around like, game. Like yeah, like if you want to go to late game, just clutch moments at the end of the shot clock. Of course, most of those are gonna go to Jordan because he had the ball most of the so time. That's but, I think but, that I think that's what everybody focuses on. No, but but that's the problem, and that's I think that's one of the reasons why Pete Pippen gets overlooked. Because when you look to these yep. games, some of these games against the Knicks, it was his defense that turned some of these games around. Y'all know, y'all don't think people realize how close the Knicks was to beating the Bulls. Sometimes, remember they I had do. a format back then. <laughs> they had the format back then a two three, I think two. I believe so. No, when no, the Knicks no, would get them three that's home incorrect. games it, on the road, that, that, that's incorrect. That's incorrect, sir. What was not it? not in the same conference, only in the finals. Only in the finals. Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to a, give you. Yeah, the 2-3-2, two, two, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah the finals, finals used to be 2-3-2 two, 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 with a road team. They, even in the finals when they kicked in, that's still tough. Let's not act like Pippen didn't play a role. When you when the, when the road team gets when the road team gets three games in a row, that's impactful. And people act like it was just all Jordan. But I think when people give Jordan credit, they only really looking at Jordan's points. They ain't really looking at anything else Jordan did. Yeah. That's the people who wouldn't have the money on the game and wasn't really paying attention to it. I, I just I don't want like, so mean, little I credit. mean, Scottie Pippen downplayed himself a lot too, because on national TV he was like, um, like he even said himself that um he don't have a clutch gene and he was glad that he had Michael Jordan taking the shots or something. So I don't know why he said that, but that's what he said. You know, Scotty. Hey, but do you need a clutch gene to be top 20 all time? I can name a ton of players nah, that I don't nah. believe had a clutch gene. I wouldn't say Wilt Chamberlain had a clutch gene, but Wilt Chamberlain can find himself top 15 easy. Yeah. You know? So, Lamont, I guess the real question would be, how many small forwards do you put ahead of Pippen? Oh, that's know. a great question. It depends on what you favor, too. I mean, because you can I, I believe there's an argument for KD, but then it's also then it's going to go down to what do you prefer, offense or defense or a whole bunch of winning and account accolades and achievements or, or individual accolades like what that KD has. So it's, it's going to go down to just favors. And, and, and do you I put think, Dr. J over Scottie Pippen? I think the argument can be had. It depends on who you're talking to and what they prefer. I don't think there's no right or wrong answer there because. If somebody says I'm taking Dr. J over Pippen, it's going to be hard for me to fight with them about that because of how good Dr. J was. You know what I'm saying? Why would I, why would I fight with you about that? Yeah, Dr. I get J, what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? But, but the thing is, if somebody says I'm taking Pippen, well, I would also understand that too because the man can control one whole side of the floor defensively. So it's like, it, I'm not arguing. Like, it's, it's, it's too many cases where it's just hard arguments. Small forward is one what of about, What about James Worthy over Scottie Pippen? I wouldn't take James Worthy over Pippen. For me, that was an easier one. I'm taking okay. Pippen all day over James Worthy. Because I think Pippen gives you the similar scoring production, but far superior defense. If not better. I mean, he might be a better scorer than Worthy. Warrior, Worthy whoa, looked a little whoa, smoother. Whoa, 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 Worthy looked whoa. a little smoother, but... I, Pippen giving you the same production, better playmaker. Pippen, I would say this. Scottie Pippen, I would say that Scottie Pippen has a better floor game than James Worthy. But James Worthy first step in his post game, in his uh, but is him that, on the wing is his is his, his offense. Does it make up? Because remember, their point production and what they gave you offensively was similar. Pippen maybe gives you a little bit more playmaking wise. Does James is James Worthy's offense so great that it supersedes what Pippen gave you on the defensive side of the ball? Nah. Don't 
sleep. Don't sleep. Hold on. Hold on. Don't sleep on James Worthy defense. A lot I'm of people not, don't know. I, I'm not oh, sleeping on. on it. But it can't compare to it don't compare to Scottie Pippens. I'm not saying it compared to Scottie. But what I'm saying is this on those Lakers teams, Magic used to guard a lot of forwards, and James Worthy would guard a lot of shooting guards, and Byron Scott would guard the point guard. Okay. Wasn't that Coop? Cool? Look, look, look. I understand. But defensively, no, Pippen is came off. like when you're talking off defense with Worthy and Pippen, Pippen is way up here and Worthy's way down here. Offensively, Worthy oh, might be Worthy's Worthy might be slightly there. higher than Pippen, but Pippen right under Worthy offensively. They not far apart offensively, but they far apart defensively. Yeah, it's defensively they're far apart, but but Worthy was a man. Worthy wasn't no slouch defensively. No, I'm not saying he wasn't the slouch. Nine, what I'm saying is, like if you if you far. have to start a team, if you start if you draft, and let's say you got the number five pick, and you looking at Worthy and Scottie Pippen, all right, who who you taking? I'm taking Pippen. Out of college? bro. I I'm taking go with, bro. You got I'm take. taking Pippen. Ain't no way in hell I go with Worthy over there. Hold on. Let, 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 now, let I'm me tell you why. Now, now, now I gave you my answer. College, let, me you, let, me, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I'm, now, that's I'm answering story. like that. Yeah. Let me tell you why I'm answering like that. You said, well, who am I taking out of college? Out of college, James Worthy just came off of beating Georgetown in the finals where he was killing Patrick Ewing. Well, that's unknown. And I think everybody would have took Worthy out of college over Pitt. That's what I said. Oh, okay. No, so no, no, I'm I talking about that, that was based on what we've seen in the NBA. If we could redraft. Oh, oh, yeah. We'll if, if after their prime. careers are done, after their careers are done, and we didn't see them play, yeah, I'm taking Pip. That's what but I'm saying. Like, out of what I've seen. But you got to be a fool. You'd be lying in the finals. You'd be lying if you say you're picking <laughs> Worthy over Pippen out of the draft. I and mean, we didn't need to see no, neither one of them I'm play. Saying, I'm saying if you if you watch their college careers, Pippen's coming out of Central Arkansas, and, and James Worthy's coming off a championship that he led his team to. <laughs> Scotty Pippen tells you the, the, the drafting Scotty Pippen or trading for him. That's how you know the, the Bulls scouting department was elite. That's how you know they was elite because they went and got Phil Jackson from a Mexican league coaching, <laughs> right? They they didn't found Horace Grant. Horace Grant, what I forgot where he went. He went to uh, Clemson. Clemson, yeah. But I'm talking about they they in a, in a, in it's, even when even when they were drafting. When they were good, they they hit on some solid picks. So, man, that they had an elite scouting department. I ain't gonna lie. And the and the way they finessed and got Tony Kukoc, bro, they was elite. Dominique Wilkins, Dominique Wilkins, Scotty Pippen. I'm going with Pippen. But and, and, you and again, said it. And, but no, I'm saying it, it's going to be based on need. But again, right. the one thing is. Dominique offensively, man, he gave you a ton. But the one thing that killed them Hawks team is they couldn't defend. And right? they had some weak ass point guards. They, they started getting competitive. Guards. Mookie Blaylock was a good defender, but man, if Dominique they, they ain't have no yeah, other scores when besides Mookie Dominique. Got there, when Mookie got there, Dominique was on the way down. But when he had, I, I ain't never liked Glenn Rivers. I don't even call him Doc. Glenn Rivers was never that. <laughs> Hold on, he, I thought it was him. Lenny Wilkins coaching now. It was. The, no, Glenn, Rivers Glenn, was Rivers, Glenn Rivers was the point guard. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah, this is when he was playing. I'm tripping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tripping. Like, <laughs> boy, that Doc Rivers has been around tripping, for a minute, ain't he? God yep. damn. Yeah, man. I only yeah, remember he, when he was with the Knicks. I forgot he was with the Hawks. That's crazy. Yeah, he was sorry. He was sorry then. <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah, they had uh, Mike Fratello um, that was the coach. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Fratello was solid. They used to try to hype him. Then he coached the Cavs too. He was it wasn't he? Who was the coach of the Cavs in Georgia? Yeah. He over. was the coach of the Cavs for a minute. Lenny Wilkins. Wilkins. Yeah, Lenny Wilkins was coaching them back then. Back when they had yeah, Mark Lenny Price. Wilkins, he won a uh, championship with the. Hey, do y'all think too? Lenny Wilkins was a little mm -hmm. overrated? As a coach uh, or a player? as a coach? Um, just a no. tinge. Just no, like, uh, I think. Nah, I think Lenny he took, Wilkins. He took I, think, some I, think too, I think we're all. I think we're too young to see when Lenny Wilkins won a championship with the Supersonics. Like I seen footage of that team, but that team had Dennis Johnson, Gus Williams, and they had downtown Freddie Brown and Jack Sigmund. And Lenny Wilkins. 
Yeah, and Jack Sigma. Can't forget Big Jack. Yeah, and Jack Sigma. But but those but Hawks teams and good. those Cavs teams he had, he 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 took them to the playoffs and they weren't super talented. Hey, I was he talking to a guy. Player. I was talking to a guy by the name of Dan Palombizio. Really good player. He played at Purdue and then he uh transferred to um was it Butler? He transferred to a smaller school, ended up getting drafted. I'm talking about dominant in Indiana. And like back then, getting drafted and getting to the NBA was just very weird. It was, you know, the, the scouting systems weren't as thorough. Players could easily get overlooked. But he had an opportunity to play for the Celtics, man. And I will never forget this story. But, but basically, he said his his tryout with the Celtics came down to him having to beat Kevin McHale one-on-one in a game to three. Oh, That wow. wasn't going to happen. If he won, Not at all. he's on the team. He said he went up 2-0. <laughs> and, then he, and then he missed. That's it. <laughs> he Hold said McHale hit three hook shots in the eighties. In, in the 80s, this happened? This was um late. This was late towards the late 80s. Yeah, Dan Palombizio. Yep, he <laughs> lives out of Indiana now, man. But he was a really good big. He's tall. He was a big out of Indiana. The whole family of hoopers. All his sons hoop. Not as good as him. He was the only one that came close to the league, but he went overseas and had a long career overseas. But man, he 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 never lets people forget that story, man. He just talks, and and I think one of the guys, I forgot who the guy was that they picked up instead of him, ended up because because the other guy played Kevin McHale and beat him, and that's who got the spot. But the guy that I forgot the guy's name, but he ended up having a pretty solid NBA career. Forget his name, he played with the Celtics. But that, like, that's how crazy that, like, that's how close it was to get into the league, man. You just had to do small, petty stuff like that. It's crazy. Yeah, man. You could, um, you could be an All American and get drafted and not make it. That that sounds like the WNBA. The WNBA it does some of the dumbest stuff I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how you draft a player at number three, and then you wave her a few weeks later. Like Freddie Banks, that, that, uh, he came out of UNLV, I want to say in 89, when the Pistons had won the championship and they, they, they went to the final four and lost to Indiana. And he's all American. And when he went to that Pistons team, they had Vinny Johnson, Joe Dumars, and Isaiah Thomas. And he didn't make the squad. And he was their first round draft pick. Bro, it's crazy, bro. That's why I say nowadays, man, it's 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 I, I would say it's like a two edged sword. It's easier to get to the NBA because of exposure, but it's so many people you gotta compete with. It's just tough. It's tough, man. I feel bad for a lot of these guys because I see a lot of these guys grinding, be broke. I'm talking about guys. Guys who were starters are like North Carolina and Duke. Do you think guys should like struggling lower their pride and and dominate overseas and and and, and no. you know, collect that Where's back the, overseas? Here's the problem. Here's the problem with overseas now. And so the problem with more players being in the pool. So this is the new problem with overseas right now. You got a ton of players so desperate for an opportunity to play pro. Like you'll have a guy who was starting at like. UConn, right? Might not get drafted, but he'll take, instead of hiring an agent, he'll take a horrible contract, getting super underpaid just to get an opportunity to play pro over there because they just think, if I get on the court and show what I can do, I'm going to be in the NBA. I can take this little money. At the end of the day, what they're doing is you have a whole bunch of high-level D1 players going overseas taking pennies on the dollar what they actually worth yeah. in overseas. And so now they've watered down the market so if you a d2 kid coming out and you ain't got a d1 jacket on your name and you trying to go overseas they're gonna be like we can go get a d1 guy from purdue or and pay him a thousand a week why you come why you asking for more <laughs> that's what's happening now so now it ain't worth it to go overseas now unless you got d1 attached to you a high d1 or you got an nba jacket so nba guys that go overseas 
you getting paid. If you got NBA jacket on your name, you're going to get paid. Yeah, you're but getting big money. You, you might got, get a million. If you ain't got a solid resume or NBA jacket on you, you ain't going to make nothing. Like I have a buddy. I, I interviewed him early on on my channel. And uh, I'm talking about this man went overseas averaging 40 a game. 40 a game, man. I'm talking about one of the best guards I've ever played with. Bro, yeah. he was only making 700 a week. $700? Oh, wow. Yes, bro. Oh, wow. It, it got Like, he wasn't making enough money. He didn't switch. He gave up. He, he ran into an opportunity over there when he was overseas where he could go into acting. Where was he at? Now he's, now he's getting into He quit basketball to be an actor. Where where was he at? Like what part? What where did he go overseas and play? He was in London somewhere. I got it. It's on my. I did the interview on my channel, man. But because he played here at GCU, um. But I mean, I'll put the link in the chat. But man, but he was, bro. Because he wasn't even in one of the top leagues. He was in one of the bottom leagues. And um, it's just hard. The market's got oversaturated. Oversaturated. He was out from the one and done. And um, the market now, you got too many good players taking too little money. And uh, it, it's, it's killed. To, so when a lot of people think the overseas market is sweet, it's no longer sweet. It ain't no money over there no more. Yeah, the Guys that's over there sweet, acting man. like they're making money, they just lying. Yeah, they lying. Because when I played college, a guy on my college team went and played in England. I was like, damn. <laughs> I was like, I would have took that action. Went to England. Bro, I got a player on my really club team. It. He just agreed to go overseas and play for a team in London. He's going to be leaving us when the semester ends. Bro, if I told you how much he was going to be making, boy, y'all would crack up laughing, bro. <laughs> bro, they're giving this man $75 a week in food. What? Man, man, I was Hell no. I wouldn't even go, bro. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but hold on. But on the flip side of that, the team that he's playing for, is attached to a university and they said we could pull some strings and we can get your grad school paid for. So in a sense, he's kind of making a little bit more because they're giving him free school and it ain't going to cost the team nothing to let him go through their grad program, but he's basically getting $75 a week plus food and free tuition. So he people be acting like game. they're coming back with a bag. They don't be coming back with a bag, man. Nah, man. It's a grind, bro. Bro, it's, when they say it's a grind, that's why sometimes when people get on ticket about his little overseas stuff, it, they they probably riding him a little too tough because um, it's hard. That shit ain't easy. I ain't gonna lie, it ain't easy. Yeah, back in the day, people used to go to Turkey, man, and they would get like fifty thousand for like six months back in the nineties. And that was it's like crazy. We talking about? Did y'all see uh, 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 what um Dwight Howard did the other day? Drop eighty four points. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I saw that. That's yeah, that was real stats. I thought, Shaq I thought, on yeah. Shaq no, was, I heard he over there shooting three. <laughs> no, no, he, no. Look, look at his highlights. It's keep taking step backs, everything. So, like so what do you, what do you think he's getting paid? Player. Shaq is punching. What do you think the Dwight's getting paid over there? Oh, Dwight's definitely getting seven figures. Du Dwight's definitely getting a bag. So he, he's he making more league, than a million. No, he's making way more than he's that. making. He's, he's probably making five to six million, easy. Yeah, hey, I'll stay the I'm out, man. Great show, man. All right. He just got ejected tonight. This is a brawl broke out. He got ejected for fighting. Yeah, that's that's always a question I've had. Like, I, there was certain guys that went overseas. I thought prematurely, bro, that, that could have still been in the league. But I don't know nah, if it was Dwight, politics or what. Nah, bro. It's, it's politics for Dwight, I believe, because he's he could easily be a backup big man. Because, like, DeAndre Jordan is still in the league. He's better than DeAndre Jordan. There's yeah. a lot of backup centers that he's better than that's in the league. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think, okay, for example, Stefan Marbury, you don't think he could have played another three, four years in the league? I thought, well, I'm younger, so I think he could have. So I, didn't I mean, really he went Stephon to China, Marbury, and all of a sudden, they, they made a fucking statue of this dude. He's over there scoring 50, bro. I'm like, I yeah. think, I think like Marbury got lured. Mar remember, Marbury got lured because they offered him a very big number. They So the China kind of lured him away with the money. And then when he went with all the headaches he was having over here, he was like, why, why do I need to stay when I can get the same money over here? And then when he went over there, it was sweeter than what he thought. I, I don't have to be Jordan. I could just be Stefan Marbury. I'm winning championships. He's literally the greatest player in Chinese basketball history. He's wow. like the Jordan of China. 
And that's I a bigger that's market than the U.S. That's how you do yeah, So how come more dudes China. don't go to China, though, bro? Well, it's going to start happening soon. And it's starting to happen now. Because okay. they're treating U.S. players better than the NBA is starting to treat them, especially the lower tier guys. And I think that's what's happening next. I think NBA, China's going to try to create a league that can compete with the NBA. I think, and then here's the thing. They got the market to, like, they can actually market you. They got all of that, bro. Like, they, they're they not behind in any area, in my opinion. I just don't think dudes, I don't know, maybe the, the marketing over here, or they don't, they don't see it or what, but. Like it's only what four hundred and forty spots on the NBA NBA league per year, mm-hmm. so it's like how do you you got to think, bro? Some million dudes competing for the for <laughs> for four hundred and forty spots, bro. Like imagine if China opens up a league and they got five hundred spots over there, and and they giving U.S. players from the NBA five six million a year, seven million to bro NBA players is gone. And then you you're not even thinking about the G League dudes you got to compete with just to be on a, the 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 15 man roster on the back end. Yeah, there's a lot of competition, especially like it's even even in high school. Cause look at um how many people in high school, high level high school AAU teams. This is a because you got to compete from like when you're young. We're like you guys. So we want to make the in league. You got to start obviously. You got to start young, but you got to start training immediately because hey, uh, you can't. I'm gonna play tell no y'all one sport. thing. I'm gonna tell y'all one thing right now though. When when you on a lower level like high school, college prep, when you do run into the gym and you got one of them potential NBA lottery picks in the gym, you learn real fast why. Because we played uh uh sharp from the Blazers last year with AZ Compass. Hold on, what you mean your your high school team? No, 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 no. It's not. We play. It's he played AZ Compass is prep school. That's oh, like okay. post grad. So usually guys that go to these post grads, they're one year or one or two years removed from high school. So they're yeah. older, but they usually go to these schools because their grades is messed up and they usually go to fix their grades so they get eligible for college. Yeah. That's what he was doing. So I'm at GCU. So I coach college level guys. So we kind of even the playing field when we play them because the guys that I coach are usually 18 to like 23. So, but I'm talking about when we, when he, first, first three plays of the game. I've never seen nobody windmill three plays in a row for the first three points. <laughs> you talking about Shade and Sharp, right? Yes. Man. Yeah, he's, no, he's windmill. He, he he literally was just playing at his own pace. He really could do whatever he wanted. There's nothing our team really could do about it. Um, and if it wasn't for the coach pulling him, then we would have not had a chance to win the game. We ended up winning the game because the coach pulled him. But you right. learn very quickly that when them guys step on the court, when they activate, Against regular people, it's just nothing. You, I, I was, I was playing in a program against. I forgot his name, man. What the heck is his name? He's on TV, Ryan Hollins, right? Oh, yeah, I remember. Bro, this is the worst I ever got cooked in front of my girl, right? Yeah, he Ryan, don't even got post moves. <laughs> for whatever reason, he had his hair cut different, and I didn't. He's shorter in person than what he seems, so he looks more like he's six nine in person. He don't look like a seven footer, like like the NBA has him listed. And so when I walk in the gym, they ask me to hop on their team. I'm just hopping in rusty. I didn't even stretch. I get on the court. I see this tall dude left to guard. We only had five players and nobody was guarding him. So I'm assuming, okay, that's who I got. This month. He Bro, dunked he on there. you? No, he, no dunks. No dunks at all. He out there. Double hezzy crosses, step back threes, all What? That, and didn't miss a thing. <laughs> I've Bro, never seen him ever do that. That's Bro, I couldn't. And the thing is, I'm playing defense like I'm talking about hand right in the eyeballs. <laughs> Everything he shoots is just hitting all net, bro. There's nothing you can do when them NBA players get the ball. Nothing you can do, bro. Not, hey, nothing bro. at all. Hey, do you guys I, went know to, I went to high school with this dude. He got drafted by the Bucks in 2015. Named Rashad Vaughn, bro. Six seven guard, bro. I, I literally am playing this dude in the gym. <laughs> I literally pass him the ball. He misses. Yeah. I, I'm shot. I get the ball. I go back. I, I he didn't even come out. I shoot. I make the three. I miss the next one. He got it. He didn't miss another shot. This dude literally was just mellow me with the hezzy. Just pull up, pull up every time, bro. I'm and I'm literally trying to guard, bro. I'm guarding. I'm sweating. This dude got a hoodie on. He's not even sweating, bro. Cook my ass, bro. I seen Walker Kessler. Me and Walker Kessler were in the same class. We both graduated in 2020. I seen Walker Kessler because I'm down here in Atlanta. He went to Wood, Woodward. Walker Kessler played like he was mellow. Like, he was not playing like a center. He was hitting the step back. He was he had a shot. 
He was just dribbling, had handles. It was crazy how he just dominated high school. He wasn't even playing like a how he played in the league today. He just I did like a two K player and Sharif Cooper. Sharif Cooper, like you see, he he's bad in NBA college right now, but in high school he's he was unstoppable. He his hey, pace. I'm gonna like tell you crazy. somebody who looked like look like Jordan on the floor. Y'all wouldn't even believe this dude. He he barely get any tick in the league. He might be in the G League right now. Uh, but when I played against him in, in just like a, a run, I forgot where I was at. I think I was at like a 24-hour LA Fitness late night run. Um, Luke Luke Garza. I mean, oh, Luca Garza. I Iowa. I Iowa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all know Luca Garza? The, the yeah. big dude? Yeah, bro. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's in the NBA. He's, I think he played for the Pistons. Bro, the man don't He was a guard, miss. right? No, he's Not a player. Uh, he, oh, Bro, he don't him. miss. He don't miss nothing. There was nothing I we you could said do. Luke Rittenhauer, my friend, my. No, no, no. Luke Rittenhauer was a dog too. Yeah, yeah. he played for Seattle, I think, too. I yeah. think he went to Oregon. Yeah, Luke Rittenhauer was a uh, was a monster, man. In college, Luke Rittenhauer was that dude. That's what I'm in saying. College. Some that's why I say these dudes on the NBA. When that's why when I have uh, debates about role players. And dudes laugh at me when I mention certain dudes' name. If you see that dude in LA Fitness or whatever, he will kill anybody. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. I'll be no, telling people this, bro. This is why. This no, is why. Real. When I'm sitting here listening, and you got Elder talking about, yeah, I'm still cooking these dudes. I'm like, bro, <laughs> there ain't no fucking way. There is no okay. way. <laughs> like, yeah, this is world. Like, I don't even just say basketball player. They're world class athletes because, like, the conditioning you got to be in, bro. It's like imagine running off of screens trying to chase these dudes and they still got the energy to knock down a three in your Bro, face. It's like this. They they sprint, no, like, like your your sprint is they jogging. Not only that's that, crazy. Like, not only that, like um and like they me, don't stop. I mean I'm in college right, for a track and field, right? And I be playing against my co- at TSC. I play against, you know, my uh basketball players that go there. It's like the hand don't even affect them. I put a hand up and don't even affect them. It's it's crazy how like the skill levels be different. Bro, they, yeah, the, the hand, the hand to the face, really uh, uh, elite. Like good D one players are really gonna cook average players. They are gonna cook them bad. But when you throw an NBA player into the mix, you might as well just hang them up. And it's a wrap. It's, you know, it's over with. You know what it was too for me, Lamont, is that when I was younger and I used to play, just shoot around at twenty one, and we'll I just be playing at my own pace, not understanding like different paces, right? And then when I get into a game, like a little uh like a high school game or play with some of these dudes that were considered top dudes in high school, bro, like the speed, everything is fast. And so like what I was doing, it just didn't translate. I'm like, bro, I'm turning the ball over because everything is faster, bro. It's like, that's just crazy. Like they, you literally got to pl- learn how to play at, at, at that speed and be, yeah. and be controlled. You know what I mean? So, and you know what? And the, here's the thing. This is what I tell people. I said, basketball from high school to the NBA is all the same. Only difference is the speed. They just do everything faster than us. And 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 obviously their shot making, the ability to shot make is much more elite, but they just do everything faster. So if you wanna if you if you listening out there, you little kid trying to get to the league, play fast, practice, practice at game speed. This is what I was gonna ask you. If you a young dude, let's say you 15, 14, right? And yeah. you really, you know, you really wanna take that next step. Mm-hmm. Do you even recommend him just going to different gyms, or do you no. recommend him being in like these leagues, like to where he just throw him into these fast paced environments to where he got to learn on the fly? I, I would definitely say play up. The number one thing I would say do at a if you got a kid, anybody that's young, impressionable, and you think they might have any hope of getting somewhere, keep them away from bad runs, keep them away from LA Fitness. Um, Wreck any type of wreck runs. Keep only keep them around high level basketball. If if it ain't a run with D one players or NBA guys, they don't need to be a part of it. And this is why a lot of times you walk in gyms and you see this one dude off to the side shooting with some trainer or something. You ask them to run, they'd be like, "Nah, I ain't running." That's that's why you pick up too many bad habits playing with scrubs. Too many, and And that's where they're taught that young too, huh? Yeah. Well, once you pick up them bad habits, it's hard to shake them. And like defensive, like a lot of bad defensive habits, a lot of bad offensive habits, and you, your tendencies are once your tendencies are thrown off, and you you get these bad habits, it's it's hard to shake it. This is why NBA players' kids make the league because the only thing these kids have ever seen is NBA basketball. They don't know how to play like a scrub. 
they they they've been at shoot arounds with NBA players. The only thing they see and know how to replicate is what NBA players do. Facts. So you got to keep them around. Kids are gonna pick up on this on it anyway. All you gotta do is put a kid. If you if you had a kid and you had access to an NBA gym, let's say you a janitor there. While the team is practicing, just take your kid and let him run around with the NBA players every day. He gonna turn into an NBA player because he gonna start copying what NBA players do. So he can't get nowhere with uh with street ball players. No, oh. I mean th- there's a few. I mean obviously you got some people that that have, but I'm saying if, if but if, for the majority, yeah, yeah, I'm saying if I have a kid and that's my goal. Let's say the kid say at four years old he want to be in the league. All right. Well, that kills any open run you might play in, mm-hmm. unless unless you around D one. I'm taking them. You got to take them to a ton of NBA games. You got to find your way to get into high level college practices. You cannot get any any glimpses of bad basketball. That's if you want to do it the easy way. That's going to be the cheat code. There's a hard way to do it, like John Morant's dad, when you put him in the backyard with a big tire and you got him jumping a million times. But uh, and. You know, and then you got to hopefully get a scholarship somewhere. But if you want to get them noticed, keep them around high level basketball. <laughs> That's, That's what he I, did. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh yeah, remember he he, nah, he couldn't jump. Jaws been training for yeah. Jaws been training for a long time. Bro, he had Ja going down. through it, bro, with that tire. Mm-hmm. So he jumped on top of the tire. That's it, bro. He had him. Yeah, doing no Pyle's shooting right. drills. Every time he did a shooting drill, go over there, and now you're doing 50, 50 exercises off this big tractor tire. Bro, he had him. That's, That's what got him that explosion. Fatigue. Pushing past fatigue, man. Pushing past fatigue. But, wow. but yeah, which you got to start early, bro. Know how to do nowadays? So you know, but here's the thing, though, uh, uh, Lamont. I'm actually shocked that guys like Pascal and Joel and B, who didn't pick up the game late, and how they turned out. That's that's actually shocking to me. Like, well, how do you that's, just come? Well, that's that because way? when the people who discovered, like Joel and B, like Joel and B was a soccer player, but when they when they discovered him, what did they do? They immediately put him around high level basketball. So if he had never really played basketball, and then the first few glimpses of basketball that he really got in training that he got was all around college and pro level basketball, that's the only thing he's picking up is pro habits and, co- and high level college habits. And so it's Hakeem because he, he, he didn't learn too. the game until he was what like 16, 17, yeah, or like 18. That's all you got. If you see a, you in Af- you in Africa, you see one of them seven footers. You really want to get them to swap over. They already have the athleticism. They naturally gifted. But right. yeah. you got it. You got. But there's also a whole bunch of cases of a lot of these African kids who come over here and they get put around a whole bunch of low level basketball. I see it all the times in these some of these trash prep schools. Yeah, the uh, maker marker uh, dude. Like what's his name? Oh, oh yeah, maker, I forgot about marker. him. What happened to him, bro? Just fell out, fell out the mix, bro, man. He, just, hold on, wasn't he with the Bucks like four or five years ago? No, that's nah, time maker. that's Maker. It's oh, a whole bunch maker. of them. They got another brother. They got another brother that's younger, still out here in Arizona. That's where they. That's where they from. I don't know if they from here, but they that's all. They, this is like the Arizona is like the home of the prep schools. Like, so they, a lot of these African kids are coming out here to Arizona, going to one of these prep schools out here, but. Somebody needs to advise them. Some of these prep schools is garbage. They wow. Just trash. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Like, like we're in my city, I'm in the Midwest, right? I went, I'm in the same state with Chet, you know, Chet Holmgren. Yeah. So yeah. that's where I'm at, right? And so they told me, Master P kids that came up here, it's like three schools up here. If you want to go to the league, they say you got to go to Hopkins. You got to go to uh, Minneaha because that's where they're going to see you at. And they say you got to that's you got to pay to get in them schools, bro. I like, got a player who went to Minneaha. Master P played at my school for a semester. He, uh, her senior year, he played at my school, and then he transferred to Xavier. Yeah. Yeah, Chet Holmgren, they said, man, his, his dad has been watching. Man, he been, obviously, his height, but he put him in that school, bro. That's what you got to do, get the, get the looks. Mm-hmm. But but you know what? To, I, I, I feel Amir like coffee, Amir coffee I, came from I think high school, the, your high school selection is also very important because I think I might just myself, I think I derailed my own high school career because I had a choice going into high school. I think it was after my freshman year, I was going to these workouts and some, some white dude walked up to me. He was like, man, I want you to come to my school and hoop. It was called like Baptist Academy. It was a very small school. All white kids went there. I went and worked out with them all summer, but I kept telling myself in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't <laughs> want to go to a high school with all white people. That's what I'm telling. That's what I'm telling myself in my mind. 
I'm like, I want to go to the big high school with all the black students. Right. But, right. but the problem is there's more competition. And even if I make the team, they only going to be focused on their guys. They ain't going to really be focused on me like that. You, you thought went prep school? No, 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 no. I, the high school I went to was just a, a city high school. Okay. Right. But I had an opportunity to go to a very small school where the coach actually wanted me, where the coach would have featured me. Yeah. Right. He would have built the team around me and my brother. He literally told us these things. It, they would have literally, we would have been the only two black kids in the school. They would have built the whole program around us for the next three years. Mm-hmm. And like an idiot, I went, wanted, I, I told my parents, I want to go to tech. I want to go to the school with all the black kids. I don't want to be stuck at a school with all white kids. And if I would have probably went to Baptist Academy, I probably could have got a high level D1 scholarship. But see, no. here's the thing, Lamont, you talking about yourself at 16, 15 years old. Like, you know what I'm saying? You Did you even yes. notice? What you mean? Like the information you're saying, did you notice at the time? I just knew I was thinking like a 16 year old. I'm That's thinking, what I'm saying. You was yeah, a you kid. Can't really feel yourself for that. I, I wish I honestly wish my parents would have took over the decision making process and said, hell no, you going to Baptist Academy. Yeah. Even, even if I wouldn't have liked it, because I would have just because I was hooping a lot, I would have learn to love it if I was just playing. I would have figured yeah, it out. Hey, man, parents are important, man. Parents Bro, are critical think, things I'm, in our I, life. Oh, so you know what tech is. You know tech and Baptist Academy Sub-Zero. I, I'm going to be honest. Like, having parents who can give you that guidance, who know who know a little bit about the business of basketball, if That's you critical. don't have that, I think it's hard to make it. That kind of happened to me a little bit for for my sport chat because, like, I was supposed to go to this school that I was, I was zoned for, but I didn't go to. I, go to, I went to a different school. It has a better education, and I didn't find a connection to the school I go to now for track and field. So it helped out in hindsight. So I feel what you're saying, though, but I don't think – you're going to think like a 16-year-old. So it's like when you think of hindsight, though, those type of decisions are kind of hard to make at that age because, you know, you don't really – you're not thinking about the future really kind of thinking more of the now. I just think it's like your parents, man, like – Want to make you happy. Whatever made you happy, then that's what you they want to like when I hear how D Wade used to have his dad in them in the backyard just playing until he won, you feel me? Like, like you not going in until you win, like shit like that. When I hear stories like, bro, you gotta have people around you who know what it what it take. I think it's different. It's different. It's different. Like strategies. Like with kids, it's like literally thousands of ways to to end up in the league. I think for me, I think the one thing to me that like the easiest way because not everybody's gonna have the benefit of like having access to gyms and all that. Again, the easiest thing for me, mm-hmm. the easiest thing you can do is keep them away from low level basketball. Wow. Just that's it. And if you can, if you can control that to some degree, cause kids are going to be kids. They're going to find ways to get their little rec runs in. But if you can find your way to mitigate that and keep them away from as many trash runs as possible and go out and seek high level runs, go seek, Go I find out where the D1 players run because the, where the D1 and NBA players runs, them runs don't get publicized. It's only a handful <laughs> of people that know. They don't want no scrubs walking in. They want to keep them runs to themselves so they can get good work in. It's, it's hard, hard to get downs, though. man. Like like Coach Hines, like those Coach Hines runs. Or it, it, it's not even like about them though. playing. You like you might bring a little kid there. You just, just want the kid around watching. Yeah. Because right. now he's picking up kids, peep, kids, especially when they're young, they absorb stuff. I remember when I was young, and, and all, like, I can't, it's hard for me to replicate moves I see now, but I remember seeing Kobe do that the one move where he drives through the lane, but he does the jump stop going behind the back. Yep, yep. Right, finishing. Yeah. I'm talking about, I went out the next day, mastered that, doing it in game. You know, I'm doing it immediately, just like, but that's what I'm saying. When, when, when you see high level moves, you want to go replicate high level. And I immediately went out and replicated that uh, like with no problem. Mm-hmm. And it yeah, worked in game in, in anywhere I did it. I worked. So, right. and, you know, that's what I'm saying. Keep them around high level only. And that's the easiest way. Cause I got a question for you, Lamar. How do you feel about like AAU and like the Houston Rockets play like that style of basketball? How do you feel about AAU? Bro, bro, EYBL and AAU, man, it's, it's, it's sad because it's turned into such a money grab. Because now people are just creating teams to make money. And now you have a whole bunch of people lying to kids. So what I end up seeing is I see a ton of kids who been told by everybody that they, they D1. But then when mm-hmm. they get in front of me and I'm like giving them a workout, I'm like, 
bro, you ain't D one. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm I, I'm the type to be honest with him. I'm but like, let me ask you this: How do you? Like, I don't know who told you you was D one, but you're not. Bro. But like Lamont, what are you detecting to tell them that that they're not D one? Is it their conditioning, their bad habits? What is it? So what, my my one thing is when I t like I talk to my players because I got a couple guys looking to transfer out, get to you know some D one offers. But I tell people like I I have one kid. He was asking me. I said, I need you to ask yourself. I was like, what? All you got to do to make D1 is you got to have one high level skill, one skill that you can say is D1 ready, walking in the door. And if you ain't got not one skill that I can say, whether it's your ball handling, your speed, your athleticism, if you don't have one thing that I can say is D1 ready, you ain't D1. If you got a D1 jump shot, I can work with you. If you got D1 speed, I can work with you. If you got D1 handle, I can work with you. But if you don't got nothing that's D1, Draps. That's crazy. So he had nothing D1. <laughs> bro, he had nothing, bro. Nothing. I be having to tell him. I'm like, I don't know what you think you're going to do with that. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to have a high GPA and you got to be a walk on or something. But other than that, you ain't getting on the court. I think right. one skill that's most important for some, I say kids develop is probably shooting. Because, like, because if you can shoot really, really good and you can find your way on a team, yeah. if I'm wrong, but because shooting. But, but here's know, the problem. Here's the problem now, Dev. This is the new problem. Mm -hmm. Boy, they got all these shooting machines out. I'm talking about in an That's empty true. gym. In an That's empty true. gym, I didn't seen some kids. I, I didn't seen kids make thirty out of forty threes. Thirty five mm -hmm. out of forty. I'm talking about empty gym shooting, looking nice. But when you put them in the mm -hmm. game, they, they can't. They, it doesn't translate. Yeah, it don't translate. So again, now then you can't get fooled by the by the great practice player. But mm. well, what you is it that saying? don't translate? Is it the mental, mental aspect? aspect? The mental oh, aspect. One thing, mental. one thing you can never Their nerves. Nerves. That's the one thing mm. that throws everything off. See, is how I, they gonna respond under pressure? And that's tough, man. Because that that's what I used to feel like. Like I'll be hitting three. I'm like, why can I hit threes in the game? I ain't gonna lie to you. The nerves, bro. Yeah, like when the crowd did it, 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 it's 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 strange, bro. It's First strange. shot I hit when I was playing in high school, nervous as hell, nervous than a mother. But it the shot went in, but I shot from the corner. <laughs> the shot was so far off. Have y'all ever made a three where it hits like the top corner of the backboard and finds a way to go in still? Yeah. So yep. it, so you got lucky then. I got lucky. I got lucky. Hey, I didn't know where when I shot the ball, I didn't know where it was going, man. <laughs> That's how, that's how I have hey, Lamont. Man, I, yo, what up, Jason? Nah, how, you, <laughs> yo, that how, you, how you feel about the development of young players pre, like, the uh, the, the circus, like Adidas Nation and uh, e, Nike EYBL versus camps when they had, like, pre-2010, like, in that era. Five-star camps. Was yeah, five-star in Pennsylvania. Yeah, like, yeah. like. Bro, the camps like was what, way better. Yeah, the like with Dead Bros and, and all them yep. guys, John Wall, pre pre EYBL. Bro, the they camps, don't have those no more. The camps was nah. they, they might have they have them every blue moon, but it's not ABCD. as quality. But Jason, Jason yeah. knows what I'm talking about. The five star camps and yeah. uh, the camps was way better. I ain't gonna lie. EYBL yeah, I mean, right now, I see too many kids walking around with the EYBL backpacks in like, here. They get I on the court like, playing like mm -hmm. garbage. Bro. I feel like that this era of high school basketball is so bad compared to that. I say like the late 2010s. I mean, not yeah. the late 20s, the late 2000s. That yeah. era, early oh. 2010s. Hey, before. Jason. Yeah. Them Friday nights used to be crazy. Yeah. That's you, know the, you know that feeling that's I'm talking about, I came about, right? watching. I came on watching that. But, you, but anybody that knows what I'm talking about, anybody that played high school basketball around that time, them Friday yep. nights used to be Even um, Austin Rivers. It was competitive Austin Rivers, back then. It, I played. Austin I played Rivers against Austin Rivers. Yeah, because yeah, he said in an interview like he earned his um high school mixtape. Like back then, like how everybody get mixed like, like he didn't ask for that. Like him and John Wall, like he earned that. Like they um earned that based on his play. Like all that stuff. Yeah. He wasn't looking for a highlight. He was just playing the hey. game how he played. So what up, purple California, baby? So I used to go watch modern What's day up? and them type of schools. Bro, I played. I played hey. against um Austin Rivers, Shane Larkin from Doctor Phillips. Brandon Knight from Pinecrest. Hey, I mean, yo, like, hey, I, man, I, guys I might, special, I man. might, I might know the only two people that gave him business one on one. Who, who are you talking Austin about? Austin Rivers and these two people you would never guess. It's two white dudes from Indiana. They twins. Twins? And, are they, they yeah. in the league? Nah, they went to Indiana State. They twins. Just, the one, the the better twin. His name is Lucas Idol. Y'all go look him up. He was nice at Indiana State. Gave him the work, huh? But they was in Orlando. 
just doing little one v one drills. Next thing you know, one one of them met, dropped Austin Rivers, hit him with a with a cross, dropped him. Next thing you know, Austin Rivers he he got an ego. He get mad. Yeah. Let's play one on one. Let's play one on one. I'm talking about my boy Lucas Idol went to town on him. Indiana State's Damn. a legit, um, a legit and, college. And, man. And, and look, just look him up. His name is Lucas. But see, Idol. but see how you Bro, you know how you say town. stories like that, and then you think about why them type of dudes didn't make them. That's why that'd be fucking me up. Like I'd be hearing what, what, stories where stars you know, pool deep, that got, they got smacked. That talent pool. That's what I'm saying. The talent pool yeah, is deep, and one on one is not in game. Like so the things yeah. that the things that Austin Rivers could do in game is unmatched. Yeah, That's my, why you can't my, overrank one on one. One on one is not five yeah. on five basketball. My cousin, yeah. my cousin, my cousin, he the all time leading scorer at Fresno State. Uh he ended up making the Knicks summer league team. He didn't make the cut and he ended up playing Australia. So that tell you right there how uh deep this time tough, bro. Is. So, so let me ask you yeah, this man, got what politics politics too. Too. let me ask you yes. this what, what do you think the difference is like because i know we talked a little bit about nerves like austin rivers he's not a great one-on-one -on -one, but in a team you say he's good so like what separates them type of dudes who are like purely kill you one-on-one -on -one, but then the game it just don't translate or they well he was it. great at duke and in college though well I mean, dude, again his type of his his ability he, he was just some people just got it. Like like the guys that just show their signs of being gifted early, they just got it in game. They just know how to game and yeah. just make tough shots in games. I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes you can't really explain it. He just it just comes to them. Like he's like, been around such so, so high level basketball for so long. Yeah, he just knows. Yeah. Like yeah, he watched Paul get, Pierce in the gym practice and all. Yeah, let me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you another dude. Yeah. I'm talking about. I was I was working out a dude. His name is Isaiah. Probably easily one of the best defensive players I've worked out, and his one of his next game. He was in high school still at the time, and he he kept telling me about a big game against Pinnacle. I'm like, why you keep worrying about this game? He was like, man, we got they got Nico Mannion. Some of y'all might remember him. He he got drafted by the Warriors. Know, yeah, um, Arizona, bro. But when I watched Nico Mannion in person, I'm like, man, you got this. I'm talking. I'm watching my homie Isaiah play the most elite defense you can. I'm talking about turning them cutting them off and this man Nico Manny is just so calm and poised yeah he just wop 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 okay you still there all right I ain't worried about you pull up jumper all net and just every time I'm just talking about Nico Manny is just going at his own pace and it don't matter what my homie did good defense he's right there in his eyeball Nico Man is going at his own pace. Step back three, take these. Yeah Nico Manny and dad played in the leagues. Yeah you know he Bro, Nico, they just understand that Wait, what was his name? Nico, Nico Manning. Manning. I he is really right now. Oh, if you watch him in high school, he was a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's facts. He's been tough. He, did, he was in the same class as uh, Lamelo and that, right? I, I was, yeah. I was sitting there right there on the court, just watching him cook, my homie. And, and, like, and, you, and he's not in the league, right? He's in the G League, you say, right? He was, he got I drafted. Think, he think, actually, I think he's in the league. He, he left. He voluntarily left the Warriors to take, uh, to play for a team in Italy. Cause he's Italian. His family's Italian. He ended up playing oh, for the God, Italian national it. team, and he got real sick with some type of mono or something, and lost a whole bunch yeah. of weight. But he's back hooping now. Yeah, yeah, he's nice. Yeah, yeah. man, it's a, it's a lot of competition, bro. It, hey, it Lamar, was, uh, yo, I got a quick question. Hey, how do you you saw um player choice? How do you feel about the um Jokic all time offensively take by low? I think it's a good take. I mean, I agree. I, I feel I, like I I like I him. feel like um. What was his take? Need some time. That oh, Yoke is one of the best players offensively all time, and I agree with it. I feel like they kind of um the other people that are against it don't really understand or watch Yoke. It's kind of like yes, understands the short sample size, but he's peaking at an all time level because he's scoring at elite level on low volume. He's one of the best playmakers all time. Hmm. Here's the, here's the scary part about it. Have we even seen peak Yoke? I don't even know. I, I think he's still have another level, in my opinion. That's what I he's think, only too. 20, 26, 27. So he's still. I mean, he's lost a ton of weight. I mean, I think, I think like this is the best Jokic that we're going to get. I think like this is max level Jokic. Like he, I, don't um, think it's, I, think, I don't think it's the best. I think we can see another seven. level. Yeah, I feel like he can score more. I feel like he's just willing. He's a willing passer because. Go look he where he was at in the beginning of his career to now. I mean, this guy. Changed up. No, he was a big. Lot, though. No, yeah, he was big. He was like big. Now he did lose a lot of weight. If if MVP, he better win. 
Well, I think, I think yeah, but that's a it. team thing, though, bro. Like that's a team. Oh, hold thing. on, Kirk like, Royce. This ain't tennis. Hold on, Kirk Royce said he played. Your son played yeah. um on uh Shadow Mountain. Where's Kirk Royce at? He said his son played on the team with Eddie House kid. Yeah, that that's Shadow Mountain. Yeah, I remember that. Mike team. Bibby. Mike Bibby was the coach. Where is that at? It's in Arizona oh. out here. Oh, oh okay. It's called Shadow Mountain. Him and one of the, his running mate, his running mate, um, uh, Javon Blackshear, he because he plays for GCU right now. Oh yeah, he's hurt right now, right? Yeah, he tore his ACL, man. Yeah. But you, and then this is what happened. He tears his ACL. You know what the GCU team decides to go do? What happened? They said, "Hey Lamont, we need your starting point guard, man." I'm like, what the <laughs> "Wow, fuck? hey Lamont, what happened to uh, uh, Dan Marley as the head coach at GCU?" Bro, he got fired. Bro, he got he fired. Got fired. It, was just, it was a bad. It was bad because everybody could sense it coming. But basically, they had told him going into the year, like. Because it was a lot of stuff coming up, a lot of sketchy issues, the recruiting things. Obviously, they was paying players and stuff like that. That was no secret. But he, it was he was losing. He he would get four star recruits. They would immediately transfer out. I mean, Marley, he was kind of toxic. The program was just getting too toxic, and Ooh, they, everybody uh, on campus could sense it. They were completely disconnected from the club team. Like we yeah. are normally a feeder to the D one team, and um. Basically, um, the president of school went to him and said, "Yeah, if you if you don't make the NCAA tournament this year, you you might as well pack your bag." Then. So what was he doing? <laughs> getting money under the table? Uh, y'all, dudes y'all up? Put- nah, it, it mean obviously, I mean they always in on it. But if you go to the right, school right. and they they divvy up some money to make sure a player comes to the school, but then that player gets there and that player don't live up to expectation or. That player gets there and then immediately transfers out. They're gonna be like, "Okay, Marley, we we went and got this kid for you with the money. Well, what's going on?" Right. And um, so you know, it, Mar, Mar, it was just toxic, bro. I mean, I'm talking about it was transfer, it was transfer city for a while, just losing players left and right, just he cussing <laughs> out guys every single day, man. It was bad. Y'all y'all playing the same conference as Cal Baptist, right? I think so. Yeah, whack. We in the whack. Yeah. Yeah. One of my come my homies go to Cal Baptist. They be talking about. Yeah, y'all heard about New Mexico State, right? Yeah. Oh, you talking what? about the the boy that got the gun charge? Yeah, but did some stuff happen after that? What happened after that? So after that, then one of the players. This happened like two weeks ago. One of the players ends up going to the police, filing a police report, talking about. Yeah, the seniors, the seniors on the team are hazing me too hard. I want to file a police. I want to file a police report for assault. Uh-uh. That's crazy. And, and as, soon of- as, as soon as that happened, they they suspended the whole program for the whole year, and then they fired the whole coaching staff. Damn, um, so know lot, you know, you know, I'm, guys- I'm emailing, I'm emailing, I'm like, I man, y'all need a new, fresh new voice. <laughs> hey, <laughs> got gotcha. you. Chicago, right? <laughs> Chicago players, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude was from, from Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. He was saying like a lot of them dudes come from like a trouble. Uh, What'd you say, uh, purple? Like, you were right? you opportunity for you. Hello. Opportunity. Yeah, what's I didn't hear you, Purple Baby. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, since we bringing up college situations, what do you think about uh what's going on with Brandon Miller and them choosing, you know, to put out the report about his uh reported involvement with the other two young men from Alabama? Hold on, Brandon. What what's going? Hold on. Is this? Yeah, like, um, like he's a freshman from uh Bama. They saying that like that he gave the kid the gun. Yeah, that killed the girl. But, the young girl. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't up on this story. Y'all gonna have to. I'm, I'm not up yeah, on bro, this. Like this a uh, lottery pick, man. Like this kid got yeah, special I just, talent. I just looked it up. It's a yes. Yeah, it, it says uh, Alabama star Brandon Miller delivered gun used in shooting. Oh, I heard about a girl that just got killed. So that's a um accessory to murder. That's the dude that was crying while they was bringing him down the stairs, right? Light skinned dude. Oh, that, yeah. that was something. That's something else, ain't it? No, the girl that got killed was from murder in Alabama. I think she he she rejected a dude, and then he yeah. killed her for that. Yeah. And then now Brandon Miller was the one apparently is the one that gave him the gun. I heard yeah. I heard they not charging yeah. him with accessory. They trying to drop him. Charge ruined him. his whole career too. That yeah. Is wild, yeah. Bro. That's crazy. I don't. I think that's crazy, and I think only reason why it happened is because he don't have top dollar lawyers. Because it ain't no way this late that that should have came out like that. Unless was I don't I don't know. I don't see any details of the whole story. He just said that he delivered. I don't know. They didn't say but how they, or he got position. Okay. 
No, uh, from what I read, they said the uh, one of the young men had came to him uh, complaining about bullying, and so he c- gave him the gun for protection. Hold on. So Brandon oh. Miller is another player. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So this is this right is the second player that got in trouble, right? No, no. Nah, nah he's not on the team for what I've heard. M- Miller is supposed to be a part of this draft class that's getting ready to come out. He's supposed to be top three. He's he's I forgot. He's he's a lottery pick. He was supposed to be a lottery yeah, pick. Yeah, basically. Yeah, from Alabama. Yeah, they said a, lot he was of a potential people. lottery pick. Dang. Not anymore, Dang. though. It ain't bro, no way. Bro, I, I I see. Bro, this is how you know they got very questionable friends because if my homie is about to get drafted, well, if I see anybody bring a gun close to him, we fighting. Man, what type of friends they be having, man? That is well, uh, why is, why you know, is he only a gun, though? That's that was, the one thing. But they, he ain't got no friends. He, he ain't got no real friends around him. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Bro, ain't no way. It oh, seems like, cause I don't know if he knew he was he was gonna kill the girl or not. I cause, but still, bro, it's bro. his fault and the friend's fault because one, he's he done. Been, yeah, he's only, done now. He shouldn't have been owning a gun partially. And two, why would you even if you, if you, even if you are a gun a gun owner, you, why you would you? Get, you should looking. never you should never give it to someone else or just bro. ask. You know, if you are a owner hey, my, my Google must be messed right. up. It say Brandon Miller's forty. Three years old, man. Let me check. Hold on. This is crazy. <laughs> no. You know, no, my no, no, said that too. I was like, huh? Hold on. Why does it say that? It says he's forty three. I thought I was tripping. <laughs> unless is it? Uh, is no. it unless someone else. Uh, but yeah, like that's a common name. So yeah, that's a common no, name. Yeah, both it's a dude from Alabama. I'm showing the video. The, no. his, his highlights is popping up with the name. He likes nah, skinny like a like a small Ford, ain't he? If you but if you going to yeah. seven sports, you got like a taper, bro. But going to four seven sports is like it shows his age. He's probably like nineteen or twenty. He's from Indiana. He ain't no. F- and he's from Antioch, Tennessee. Six nine two twenty. Then he had, yeah, my he's Google messed 18, up. Now he's averaging eighteen eight and one. Yeah, he was definitely a lot of big. And I can't lie, I've not been paying attention to college basketball at all. I just it's been boring to me. But I look at the standings. I don't see Duke. I don't see nothing like the normal blue bloods. It's like. Houston's number one in a in a nation. I mean, like college basketball didn't change. Yeah, it was that. It's the um. Hey, on the side note, it's the nil nil deals. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. balanced the scale. That, that it balanced the scale. Now, if you a a five star recruit, you ain't got to go to Duke or Kentucky to get get a little right. money under the table. Yeah, true. Yeah, you can go to you can go to Ohio State. You can go to your little Purdue, Iowa. You get big nil money. Still get recognition of your own team. Yeah, I do like the balance though. It's more balanced than college football. I went to the GCU men's basketball website. Like all the players on the roster got little dollar signs next to their name. You could pay for appearances and autographs, all types of stuff, bro. These players about to eat. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad players can get paid because you know, because obviously, like you get some money because not, not everyone's gonna make it to the NBA and all that, but at least you get some money to kind of yeah. set yourself up. Because these are, because we're all kind of young. We're all young. That should be the mindset, though. I just hope that getting the money early doesn't stop their hunger from making it to the next level. That's the only thing that I worry about. The thing is, I don't care. Like, the thing is, if you get a big bag while you're in college, you got to understand, you're only talking, what, 1% if that even make the NBA? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, so one person that make it. Yeah, if you could be, if you can, if you can make half a million your four years in college, as opposed to owing half a million when you leave, like most people in yeah. college, like that's a that's a nice little that's jump. That's a win win. That's a big yeah, one. good. Oh, no, that's point. a nice little jump. Like I, I can work with if coming out of college. Imagine if you have five hundred k. Yeah, well, not only that. Uh, what? Like, you know, my high school. Going, and, you, and, and you got your degree going to your career. Not only that, but you got to get these dudes educated that if you know that that they got that type of potential to make that money, but they're not probably going to make the league, they got to invest that money, bro. Like, they can't nah, just flourish. Look, to get NIL money, money though, to get the NIL money, you, it's just, you, you, get, you have to take that class. You have to take these financial literacy classes and investment classes. So there's a there's a whole bunch of courses you also have to take. Yeah, that's no, good. No, I get that. That's I'm just good. saying, separate from the courses, they need to have like an agent or manager or so, like a vest. You know what I'm saying? Somebody to help them invest. I would, yeah. but you got to be careful it's with those learn. people too. Though. Yeah, people, I feel man. like honestly, yeah. you got to learn. I feel like until like do it, if, until you learn how to do it on your own, like until you like 
know how to do on your own, then you don't need it no more. Cause yeah, that's facts. Or, or or have yourself a team. Cause you know if you if you educate yourself, really, you don't really need a um investment agent. If you know how to do it yourself, or, unless or, you're trying or, to do something big time. I think what they should do is they should make a stipulation to be like, okay, twenty percent of this automatically goes into like a a ten year, five year escrow. Yeah. So at least you have some little nest egg that you can get access to. Maybe five years after you finish college or something, something, something. That's a good yeah, point. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So, so at um, least you, if you blow your money, you still got a little nest egg. Now, okay, I blew it, but I got this little change coming. I can go work with this. And don't let you. your don't let your friend from high school be your be the man managing your money. You feel me? Unless you like LeBron, unless you like LeBron, because his team. That's, that's, I think LeBron's like one of the only stories I've seen. Like you know, he he let his day one people kind of like no no. His but the, team, the, the difference is he he made them dudes go get educated first though. Them dudes have to have to prove yeah, they're wrong. Like you feel me? They are real educated. Like rich, like people kind of like talk about rich Paul, but rich Paul is, is very intelligent, very smart. Yeah, like he, he was like, y'all go, go get y'all business, whatever y'all gotta get, and then you know what I'm saying. Even Matt Carter, no Matt Carter got his own stuff. Jimmy <coughs> Brown made all them dudes millionaires times mm -hmm. ten. <clears throat> Oh yeah, Lamont, I forgot to ask you, man. What's your what's your opinion and take on dudes, right? That we like is consider bust. Like these number one draft picks or whatever top dudes, mm -hmm. like Anthony Bennett, shit like that. What what's your take on that? I don't think I heard what you I mean, they bust. Like how does how do you how do all these scouts been educated all of this? Like how do they not see the weaknesses in these players' games or whatever? It's, the not, case? it's not weaknesses. All all of them is nice. The one thing, the the problems. And I hate picking on Alonzo Trier, but I like using him as an example because <clears throat> there's certain things that you can't forecast as a scout. And you, people wonder why the NBA does all these intensive background checks and they want to know who you're hanging out with because they're trying to get a, a, a some type of understanding of your mental, how you're going to respond when you get all this money, power, mm -hmm. and recognition. And so with, with Alonzo Trier, as soon as he got a, a taste of the NBA, I mean, he – in every IG models DM, messing with all of them. <laughs> Next thing you know, he got two of the models up at the Knicks practice facility fighting. They end up busting people car windows out that don't belong to Alonzo. And so a lot of people was like, he was balling in New York. Why, why they? They because he, he when he was in New York, he was balling. But every, yeah. everyone was like, why they let him go? It had nothing to do with basketball. That man just. Did his head wasn't right, and some he people was a, he was a player, bro. That's it. yeah. Some people don't know how to like. They don't know how handle to handle money. Not even handle money. money. And, they don't know how to handle the fame. Is, like they 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 and go crazy success. with it. But see, most allow... of these dudes don't know how to manage money though. So it ain't the money. No, it's the it's the fame. The fame is what gets to most of them. Right. right. Yeah. Get like them in trouble. Fame. Gets them in trouble, and whether it's with women, whether it's with the law. Some of them yep. get to doing dumb stuff like buying guns and, you know. Or not only that, if some people, I would say some people don't know how to, like, get rid of that old lifestyle. Kind of like they, they, the opportunity you had, like, you don't have to, like, there's some people you, when you get to a certain level, you're like, you can't hang around them no more. Or, like, you got to change, change your circle. Y'all know when you're a draft pick, you know you know the NBA, they, they like secret question that can get you weeded out. They always ask you, you got a girlfriend? So if you say yes, you get weeded out? No, 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 no. If you say if you say, yeah, I've been with her two years, two, three years in high school, they're they going to look at you as a more stable-minded person. All right, okay. This dude okay. ain't been all over the place. Hey, that's he, actually he a good point, in. bro. I'm, that's crazy locked. you say that. Wow. Yeah. They, so they, be, let's say they look at guys like, so when you talk about, I had him on my channel too. I interviewed him, Corey Kispert. Right? He, he been with his girl all throughout high school and college. Right? So he was an easy interview. So when he gets interviewed, obviously he got some good background, both parents. Right, they looking at him now. They looking at him personally. How did he react when he got this newfound fame at Gonzaga? Did he go crazy? Did he stay locked in? Now they see, okay, oh, his girl plays <clears throat> on the Gonzaga basketball team, and they've been together his whole time here. And I ain't seeing a whole bunch of crazy social media posts that he's too beefing, getting into breakups, going at each other, whatnot. Oh, okay, he's stable. So we we draft him and we give him all this money. We know he ain't about to go crazy. Hey, Lamont, you know it's crazy that you say that because my mentor who I talked to, like, he was telling me about, like, the business side of things. And he was like, when these, like, dudes get promoted to some of these positions and in, in, uh, general manager positions, regional manager, that's what they look at. They look at stable, middle-aged men, bro. Like, that's what they consider 
when they're looking at that's what they want like middle-aged dudes who are like stable married stuff like that like long-term relationships it's the same shit bro bro they be looking for guys that just ain't because the thing is that's the one thing you can't gauge like when people get on Kwame Brown and this is why I was so hard on Kwame Brown because I know he had all the talent in the world he just don't want to admit he has so many vices off the court. That's what screwed you over. Well, you look at you. You, oh, you don't want to talk about it. But it, it, like whenever you see a number one pick like that, like even with Adam Morrison, it's no way in hell it just went wrong all of a sudden. So when it things like even with Jimmer Fredette, like people just think he couldn't defend. No, that wasn't it. Jimmer Fredette was a head case as soon as he got in the league. He was being a diva. He kept telling the teams he wanted this right Yeah, he was delusional, bro. Bro, he was being delusional. That's just why he didn't – it wasn't about skill. The man has NBA yeah, he jump can get shot. buckets. Yeah. And same with Adam Morrison. I don't know what a backstory with Adam Morrison, but you cannot tell me that he just didn't pan out just because he wasn't good. No, he was good. It's Listen, something else going on. Uh, something every else time going. every right. time I play 2K, this dude had a suit on every time I used to play 2K10, bro. <laughs> So. I listen. I, I thought you. I thought he. I thought he was one of the like the uh, trainer people. Like this when I was young. I'm like, oh, he must just be an assistant or something. Nah, man, bro. He was sick but, too, right? Who? Lamont. Adam what up? What up, Purple? No, I was just about to tell you. Do, do you think it can work in reverse where, like, they can see all the red flags, but they take you anyway? Or what they think is a red flag, but like it could be the total opposite where the yep. player ain't what they think. I think that was Anthony Bennett. Yeah. No, Anthony said. Edwards was like that. Anthony Edwards did not interview well. He did not check out well. His his history was all questionable. There was a whole bunch of flags. But at the end of the day, they was like, well, he's, let's just pull. Let's take a risk on it. And they, they made a good call. So sometimes you can, see the, you can see the red flags. But that sometimes the money can have the reverse effect. It can straighten you up real quick. So what happens with a dude like Jahil Okafor then, who was dominating in college and then got he to the league? Wrong era. Wrong yeah, he's era. just wrong era. Yeah, the style of the game passed him up. Yeah, Low post him in, player. Put him early Cause they was putting him. They was putting him neck and neck with with Cat at that time. You know, so yeah, I, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. It's just, it's just John. Yeah. He's in the wrong era. Like he, like Demar Rose. Even though Demar Rose is still a good player, if he was playing in the early two thousands. He would be way better because his play style and the game fits his play style more. Yeah, they said he had slow feet. He just and he couldn't he couldn't spread the floor. And, look for, and he's not good at defensively remember, either. So they won a national championship. I remember that. that That's what I'm saying, time. bro. He get to the league, he didn't go bust. That's crazy. But but see, Jilla Okafor made the mistake of if if he had the right handles around him, they've been like, well, it's time for you to to, to reinvent yourself. For you to stick around, you got to turn into a defensive player. And, right? Hey, remember remember Derek Williams too. Yeah. Dang. Oh, yeah, from Arizona. Oh, Derek Williams, he, Arizona he, 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 was supposed to be the yeah, truth. Man. Bro, Derek Williams, he was he was kind of showing me like uh glimpses of like Michael Beasley a little bit. What class was he? What class? Style. What year he came out? Twenty ten. Coming out when he got. Yeah, I think twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Okay, okay. Derek Williams was supposed to be next up. He was supposed to be next up. He was supposed to be the starter. T was before. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. like before they got the. And there's some players. Hey, you know another dude who I thought was gonna be good, but he. He was my one of my favorite players in college. Uh, what's his name? Johnny Flynn. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Johnny Flynn <laughs> was yeah. a dog. Yeah, and I swore up and down he was gonna be a bucket. Hey, you know what's crazy? I'll be with you on that. Yeah, he got, he got that was the Syracuse team to have McNamara in them. In the, Bro, man, they drafted, I swore. Timberwolves to me are the dumbest organization in history. They drafted him and Rubio before Curry. Hey, that's, that's, that's tough, tough though. Man. That's tough, and that's gonna, and that's gonna live with Johnny uh, Flynn for a long time. But everybody knew. Time, right? Hold on. Even at that time, everybody knew Curry was. Bro, did, did y'all see Curry at Davidson? Bro, come on, man. You can't watch that and then say you got to go with Johnny Flynn. He was not. I feel like. So. And I they was looking at competition. The only reason, no, the My only reason why so I would have took Curry is because of his because he he's NBA blue blood. Like he has it in his blood. Yeah. That's the only reason why I would have been like, okay, it's not the competition. And he did it against too many high level schools. Like, yeah, like he, he killed Duke yeah. one season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He, didn't do it. he did it against, yeah. like, he was dumb, bro. He was doing his thing in college. And so I'm like, me and my cousin was watching his games. Like, bro, every time he came on, we was watching that. Hey, yeah. He got clamped up one game. I got, a, I got a buddy. He's the only player ever to clamp Curry. Who was that? In college? Yes. No, oh, basically, you know, you can go from NBA to college. He's he probably did the best job 
of individually guarded Steph Curry mm-hmm. ever. He was in the same conference. The um, I don't think y'all could ever his name. No, hey, I don't know, man. Tony Allen did a pretty good job time. on him. No, he was in the he was in the Big Ten. He's in a Big Ten. In the NBA, Tony Allen did a pretty mm. good job. No, 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 no. He did a better job than Tony Allen. You what? Tony. I mean, it, bro, it, it, bro, it, it, bro, if y'all type, if y'all just type his name in with Steph Curry, y'all will see a million stories about. His defense on Steph Curry was the best ever. His name is Chris Kramer. No, listen, Lamont, I'll Let's give you that probably at that Purdue. point in his career. Purdue. But if you're talking about like NBA, Purdue Steph came Curry? to Dave. I mean, Davidson came to Purdue. Was it 08? I forgot. I heard. I forgot what year it was. It was around that time. I can't remember the exact year. But when they came to Purdue, it was the Chris Kramer said, "I got him." Y'all, y'all know who I thought was gonna be some in the league. This is this ain't that long ago, but I thought Chris Dunn when I seen him at Providence. Yeah, Chris, Chris who? Like that term, Chris, when he Chris had that Dunn. tournament versus Chris Dunn. Yeah. Hey, oh, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell y'all a guy that left college like too early. Like um, Trayvon Duvall, a kid, a kid, a kid, a kid from Seton Hall. I think, I think his name was um Whitehead or something like that. Oh, like, Whitehead. Whitehead. I know. Yeah, man, like he left too early, man. Hey, hold on, hold on. Trayvon Duvall left too early from New York. Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn. Oh, okay, okay, cool. No, Chris Dunn was a hooper in college, bro. He was nice in college. Yeah, he got defense. Trayvon shit. Duvall left too early. He he should have stayed in there and developed his shot. I know. No, was Trayvon a, Duvall was a head case. He couldn't even stay at one college though. Oh, okay. For example, what what's for uh Lamont? What's what happened with a dude like Tyler Hands, bro? College, you what man uh, dominated in the college, won a national championship, and then he only played four or five years in the league. How does that happen, bro? Didn't like, have enough had, offensive had skill. The college four, game bro. is different, bro. College is different, bro. His yeah. levels, man. Like this dude was, I don't even know what he was like. The NCAA, the player of the year, like, dominant. But, like even with the um, uh, the Zeller brothers and stuff like that. Like I just knew, like when they got in the Plumley brothers too, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Like when they got nice in the NBA, Plumley got nice. Cool. No, they, they never, got game. I mean, they, never got be, they never was gonna be. They never was gonna be superstars. I thought they could be like decent role players. Me too. Stuff. Yeah. Tell yeah. Them never. Stuff, if yeah, never, I, was no, bro, I, I, if I was a scout, I would have one policy. What? Don't draft American white bigs. Why? Why you that? Oh. <laughs> Fuck scrubs, man. Only that would be, that I wouldn't tell nobody way. that. Honestly. If, I, if I was a big time scout and, and I'm like, I see a, why I'm, you say that, Lamont. Bro, I, see why I, 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 I want y'all to think about it. I want y'all to think about it. Going back to everybody, Christian Leighton, Adam Morrison. Go, go back. And it, 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 it's a yeah. All you just of the said Zellers, they remember, they it was three bro, Zellers. I can't think of nothing in the league that I, I, all the Hans, white bro. bigs in the league now are love, European. Bro, that's it. Hold on, are you saying they just don't age well? They don't. They don't. They overwhelm. To me, they less. They turn they into busts. No, but look, look at the league. Hold on, we all know that. Hold on, we look, all know that. Frank Kaminsky at Wisconsin was a beast. Yeah, he that's not good. He did all that. And the NBA ain't sniff nothing. Right, now, but look at look at all the white players in the league that are big men. They're all not really good. Europe, uh, yo, no, European, yes, but not American. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I said. Yeah, yeah, American. yeah, 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 yeah not American. Yeah. So no, hold no, on, so hold on. Would you hold on? Would you tell people not to draft like a K Love players like that? No, but what I'm saying is you're gonna have anomalies here. Or there, Kevin Love was yeah, like, one of the. Yeah, that's an anomaly. No, but doubt outside it. of that, like outside of K Love, I want y'all to think about garbage. American bigs. I'm talking about bigs. I can't think of it. I can't tell me one that I actually really panned out, one that had promise, like Frank Kaminsky drafted high. Ray for the friends, yeah, he was all right. right. The last it's one, I can say, I, what's, honestly, what's the dude? The last guy I can say is probably like from the 80s, Kevin McHale. That's it. What, and that's like the 40 years oh, he, he, he had to go back 40 years, okay? Exactly. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, look, yeah, then Chet, you bring up Bill Walker. Chet Holmgren, yeah, like PMG in the chat. He said Chet Holmgren. Chet well, Holmgren, we haven't seen it. I would have, if I would draft table, that would have been a red flag to me. But the only thing that where I would have liked about Chet Holmgren, he is super competitive, man. That that yeah, that yeah. he's skilled though too. He's super. But skilled. man, it's risky though. White American What's, bigs don't normally work. Look, even we just talked Walker about oh boy, Luka uh, Luca Garza. Luka Garza was dominant. Yeah, that's what I was about. Yeah, yeah I, he was crazy. I, 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 man. Crazy, yeah. man. crazy. Don't he can't even sniff. Can't yep, they so don't. He, he was not, like a low post lying. player. He didn't, he wasn't but listen, hold on. Some of these, not like he was somebody, a stretch five at Iowa like European, last season. Hey, some of these European, oh, yeah, he was he banging out threes. Easy, post, yeah. Well, some of these uh, Europeans will be working out. What's the other dude named no, Nikola? But, but the Europeans have a higher success rate. Yeah, what's Marshall the dude that came to Miami? Nikola Yo- Jovic or yeah, something? Yeah, but he's a rookie, though. He's still a rookie. He's been hurt. Denver had two of them. Denver had... uh. 
They had a, a Narcan Narcan. and Jokic. Nah. Yeah, I remember like, that. Yeah. yeah, you really can't yeah. go wrong with them. Like, you got Valanciunas. Solid. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. Hey. Oh, Don't forget about my man. So hold on. Vucevic, hold on. Vucevic, solid. I take Vucevic. <laughs> but hold on. Americans <laughs> don't touch isn't them. Steve, Americans, isn't Stephen Adams a white boy? <laughs> yeah, Stephen. Yeah, uh, but he's not from the U.S. No, he's from. Yeah, he's from New Zealand. He's from New Zealand. Yeah. Wait, he's not a white boy. He's from New Zealand, bro. Yeah, that's where he gets his strength from. International, he yeah. Said, Where you think you got that? Bro, like New Zealand, man. That, that's that's hey, I, I think he's the strongest. He might be the strongest player in the league. <laughs> you might be stupid for that, but bro, they be but just yeah, they lifting stuff for no reason, league. bro. Yeah, he's low key underrated. I like him, Stephen Adams. No, 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 no. no he, you're yeah, right. he's a monster. When, when he, he like, he's, no, he's so so strong in the screen, every screen, bro. No, when he got hurt, this dude is. He's the strongest dude in the league. And yeah. he's a good playmaker but, from but that point. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you're yeah, a scout, went down you got to go with that hurt. strategy. Like, I'm not going to be the one to draft, like, the, that one white center in the U.S. that just, nah, I'm not doing it, bro. Nah. Right, I'm not right. No, I got you. I, I'm with like, you on that. Like, like it's a big right now against Zaga right now. Oh, Drew not Timmy? Touching, oh, no, no way. No not way. touching Drew Timmy. Be. No, no way. Way. I agree. I don't think he'll be good in league. I ain't gonna lie, Frank Frank Kaminsky. I thought he had potential, but he's disappointed. I, I never thought he had potential. I didn't. Hey. I, I never thought. Hold on, didn't he play it. at Arkansas or what did he play? Uh, hey, Wisconsin, even his buddy Wisconsin, Sam Decker. Wisconsin. Sam oh, Decker Wisconsin, didn't work Wisconsin. out. Hey, no, yeah, Sam Decker. Right. I knew he was. Sam Decker had a three ball for. He had a three ball though. He just Sam Decker got one of the worst highlights in in basketball history in the NBA. Yeah, yeah, like he fumbled. Something. I knew he was. He has he has a face fumble. I knew Sam Decker was gonna be trash when he got to the NBA. I was just looking like, nah. Hey, hey, that big kid from Purdue, Edie. I mean, like, is he is he gonna do anything? No, but here's the good thing about Edie. He's not American. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so that's what he, that's where Edie can be on my board because he ain't American. If you, yeah, American, that's why I said American. I'm not touching you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the Europeans, yeah, but the Europeans, they be very skilled. They play a different type of game, like Jokic and Zach, Luka. Zach Edie they like all play. Beast, they yeah, all have a different. All right, style. I want y'all to imagine if Zach Edie would have been born in the '90s. Oh my god. So he'll yeah. vocal for it too. But is he gonna be yeah. solid still though? So you're not so you're not touching no three four year players either, right? No, I could do you could do three four year players. It's just my one thing I'm not touching. I'm not in, touching American bigs. No, not white dudes. No. Yeah. <laughs> that is not. I'm trying not to sound racist with it, but that would just. I, I, hey, listen. Now I, I see understand. where you're coming from. We're because you're, you're your job on the line. You make one bad yeah. pick, you fire. No way. I'm because, not doing it. Because yeah. because you if you if I had to go back forty years and name the best white big man, then I see where you're coming from. And that's American. Not American. Yeah. yeah, you can risk it. You can take a risk on a uh, overseas big, but no way, no. But I think right now, I think it's the the. the the Florida Tate, Florida State type uh, wings. That's what I would be looking forward for. Yeah, talk, yeah. talking about like a Patrick Williams, uh, Scotty, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Scotty Barnes. Yeah, Scotty. Jonathan Barnes. Isaac. Yeah, yeah John, Jonathan Isaac types like that. Yeah, I'll be. I, I, yeah. Man, I go make best friends with old boy at Florida State. Devin Vassell, he came from Florida State too. Bro, I, they, I'm talking about he know he he, yeah. he knows. Leonard Hamilton's a hell of a coach, man. Yeah, he he yeah. might not be the greatest X's and old coach, but he know how to identify NBA talent. Yeah, yeah, you know, I cool. agree with that. Bro, he gets some players over there, and they what, all be um, black dudes from some <laughs> random school in Orlando or Texas. They supposed to be yeah, playing he, football. I know Dwayne Bacon. He was he was at Florida State for a little. Dwayne one Bacon too. to do another one. Be, yeah, he can recruit his ass off. I like Leonard Hamilton. Um, Lamont, are you keeping up with the draft this year? Of because I, I got a question about Arkansas for you. Anthony yeah, Black. No. I'm, yes. I, yes. I've, that, been, I'm, I've been only, I'm going to tell you right now, the only team I've really followed in college this year is Purdue. Oh. Honestly, you know who I like? I like I like <laughs> these twins, lie. the Thompson twins. Cause I, I, I live in Atlanta. I don't watch them on OT. Bro, we played I against like, them. Yeah, I like the Thompson How good twins. are they? They're really good. They're like, they're like, like um, the field of the game, I think the one that we're at number zero is better. But if his field of the game is just so like calm, he's he's very hey, poised and he just, he gets, hey, he's a purple baby smooth player. We we like twenty two and three on the season. They gave us two of our three losses. <laughs> no, they're tough. They're tough. Like they play like Paul George. So, like one of them, 
And what school you talking about? What school guard. you talking about? Oh, they had uh, what you call it? Um, OTE. Overtime. Yeah, yeah. yeah, overtime. overtime elite. Elite. Yeah. The top yeah, 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 yeah. Asur, Asur, and Amen. They're they're both tough. I think Asur but, is a better one because he's a he's more. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I I, I like him. He, yeah, I, I take even more. But how like as far as they shooting go, are people just over exaggerate? Like, because I think they are. But no, it's hard like to judge. It's hard to judge. I'm gonna say it's hard to judge because the competition that they're playing against now, they're so good. They make everything look easy. So it's, yeah. you're, not, you're not gonna truly be able to judge them until you see them at the college level. And yeah, that's when your weaknesses really get exposed. I can say they're very athletic. I'll say their athleticism will translate to shooting. I'll say I think they're a good shooter. Are they elite? I don't know yet, but I feel the athleticism will translate. Yeah. Cause I like both of them. I, I know a lot of people like uh Scoop, but I I'm not. Not Scoop. No, I I I, I like I'm the twins better. I watched Scoop at, at um at high school. Uh, cause I I tell he was he's he's tough. Scoop is tough. I I know, but I still like the twins better. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to there. predict it. Like Rob Dillingham is another guy that somebody just said in the chat. Man, it's it's hard to predict out of college, man, because all these kids is good. It's about making the right college choice. Then you got to make sure the college coach is going to help jumpstart your development. Right. And then, so but a lot Vic of stuff is, still got to go right. But Vic is going number one, so it don't really matter right now. It oh, yeah. I, I, that's <laughs> one annoying thing about this draft this year. I'm just like, I'll be glad when it happens so people right. get stopped. But I've been watching <laughs> Victor, y'all, though. I don't see that. I don't see him being trash. He's a crazy prospect. No, 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 I, no, no, he's no, not. No, but a, some people think he can be a bust prospect. and they keep saying he's going to get injured. I don't see it. I he's don't not see that it. small. He's not that small. Like, he had a, I can see him getting some muscle, but he's, he, he like, he, that's crazy. He's a crazy prospect. Seven, four can shoot block shots. That's, that's crazy. Bro, next year about to be fun. Like, when they, when this next draft class come in, it's going to be a very interesting year. If you really think about it, the big man slick taking over again because Jokic, the last mm-hmm. MVP has been Jokic and Giannis. And B and you got Victor coming in like and every day like when Anthony Davis help he's a top ten hey, player. Hey, y'all want to know why these overseas guys are coming in looking better? And it's starting to it's starting to show now because these guys are turning to pros. They start they start seeing high level basketball way fast. Yeah, at like twelve at like twelve fourteen years old. Yeah, you you got Luca playing with the professional. Like I I just got a kid from Israel on my club team, and they playing. Like, yeah, I started playing pro when I was fourteen. That's crazy. I'm like, what? But wonder why he don't wonder why he nice. He just came right I'm in the gonna, gate, second semester. I said that. Job. I remember my freshman year of college when we had a dude come over from Russia and he was killing the first day. So yeah, they, they development start from a young age more so. Yeah. They, they just know the Sad. game better than us. They, they they no ball. Yeah, that's the thing, like we cause amateurs, like cause Everybody's an amateur, like in American players. Every, no, we become pro, they become pros right into the game. The NBA, I they think pros. The American they players, they, they as Americans, man, like we're too distracted, man, like compared to like overseas. I feel like yeah. we rely too much on the athleticism part of the game. No, oh, you know what's killing yeah. the game over here? It's the, it's college. To be yeah. honest, that's now, I, now I, I actually I, I've had I heard that tape before. They said college game is different because the shot clock's longer. They um pass. It's like they don't let um because the college game is different from the NBA when I watch it because the NBA is more well, the coaches game. Yeah, they coach it different. Yeah, they coach it. Different. Yeah, they, they, coach, coach, it they, co- different. they just coach it different. They coach it different. Kind of like coaches seem more stubborn in the college system. Like they say, they have a system. And they like they don't really develop it around the players. They have point guard always got to look to the coach for the play. It's like first of all, the three point line is different. The shot it's clock shorter. is different. Shorter. Yeah, it's stupid. Like they got all their rules. Like you would think that with them being so closely connected to the league, they would just mirror the league's rules. A lot of, a lot of zone. Yeah, it's a lot yeah, of, a lot, yeah, of a lot more zone not, than you not, see in the NBA. Not, not a sure. lot of ma- matches. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So is it fair to say, like, um, another player I've been keeping my eye on is like Jet Howard. So is it fair to say his effectiveness in the way he scores in college, he won't have the same effectiveness in scoring in the NBA? It depends. It depends on who the coach is. What well, who's what team is he with? Michigan. Uh, Michigan. Uh, it's Michigan, Juwan right? Not State. I believe he's yeah. If he's with Juwan Howard, it's gonna translate. Okay. 
I was thinking that. Juwan Howard's all the NBA guys know how to get him play mm-hmm. within their role. Look what he did with Jordan Poole. I don't. I don't think he was there with Jordan Poole, but I think I was B line. But yeah, I was B line. But uh, I don't know. I like Howard as a coach. He's probably not going to be the greatest college coach, but he he's a good NBA guy. He's probably going to get fired at the end of this year. Well, yeah, you know, like we got to see um, how they do in, like, Big Ten tourney and, and see if they can get in the um, NCAA tournament. Oh, yeah, coaches – coach, I've seen a lot of coaches say they job with the Big Ten yeah. tournament. Yeah. That's all you got to do is win it, get in. You Your job I think the, the, I heard I, – I think Dakari Whitehead is pretty, pretty, pretty good in the league when he, when he gets in the league. He plays yeah. for um, – he went to um Ben Simmons High School, that Mount Vernon, that that loaded high school. I talked to um Ben Simmons' brother. His brother coaches at Colorado Christian over here, close or oh, wow. close to, and uh, his brother predicted this stuff that happened in way before it even happened. To, to Ben, yeah. You think what's you think it's mental for all uh, mental for Ben? No, he 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 just basically straight up says it. He just says he's soft. He doesn't care about the game. Doesn't work out. Yeah, cause honestly, cause I honestly I feel like if like let's say he is let's say the Nets buy, buy him out, cause Low made me laugh. He said I will pay, I will give Ben Simmons money under the rug to so to like to like you know get to be get, get cut or something. I feel like and I agree with Law on this thing. I don't think he plays basketball if, not, if he's not in the NBA. Hey, 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 right now, if if I'm an NBA GM, I'm I'm a buy in on Ben Simmons. I'm a buy in on him. And and I feel like if you put him in the right situation, and I, I believe he still has something left in the tank. No, he has talent. It's just his mentality because, like, here's here's what got me because I was I was kind of Ben Simmons guy because I watched the Hawks against how Olivia and like, when he passed up when I saw him pass up that shot and like not dunk the bar, like, scored the label on Trey Young, who's like ten inches shorter, and I'm like, Ben, what are you doing? Yeah, and but, I thought he was gonna be real good. But Dev, here's the here's the thing, and, and Jason can probably attest to this. I I don't knock Ben for that play because we're watching from the eye in the sky. We're watching from the TV. We're watching yeah. from an elevated view where we literally see everything that could potentially happen on every single play. The players are watching the game that's going a million miles an hour right there on the court. Yeah, and true. so what what Ben Simmons might have saw in the moment. Obviously, he made the wrong play. It looks worse from the TV angle because we see everything. But it's hard for me. It was a bang-bang play. He di- he dimed it off real quick. and I, th- I think he thought he made the right play. Obviously, going back now, when you watch it, it looks bad. But I think people are ha- too hard on him because you got the eye in the sky view. And when you're down on the floor, things do not look the same. That game, yeah, that's different. Thing, yeah, that, that's really different. That, that's right, cause like, I, cause I, I, I yeah, that's, that's why you go back to you, you go back and watch film to miss out on, on things that you just see that actually yeah, playing the game. Fair. Because when I, because you're right, because looking, think of looking back at it, because like when I'm seeing as a fan, or like, I wasn't even thinking as a fan. I'm thinking, yeah, as a fan, I'm thinking as a fan. But that one play, game, I'm like, bro, what's? The, but that one play didn't kill everything. But that you're one right. play did expose one thing about Ben Simmons. The one thing that it exposed is he don't study film. Because if he studied film, then he would have knew, okay, if I got this player in my vicinity, I just need to go up with it. Yeah, that's why I brought that up. So yeah. That tells you right there, he probably don't spend a lot of time studying the game. And, and, and I think that's yeah. where his biggest mistake. And I think that's great one of the things. I think I think the Brooklyn took away his superpower. His yeah. superpower was playing him at point guard. Yeah. Uh, he, he, they he took it away from guard. him. When you, took, you took the ball out of his hands. You took his superpower away. You turn him into a power four. Yeah, now you put him in a dunker spot and, and yeah, try like to use him as a role man. Imagine this. Enough. Imagine, let's say Draymond Green don't resign with the Warriors. Let's say he just decides to go re-up with somebody else, opts out, and the Warriors make a move to bring in Ben Simmons as a Draymond replacement, but you make him the point guard. Ooh, that's the That's, that's not that's, that's not a yeah, horrible. That's scary. <laughs> if you can get, scary like, that's Ben's not a horrible defense. exchange. Like. Yeah, because he's the State? lead defender. If you yeah, put him like... in Golden State, and you, if you lose Draymond, now obviously I wouldn't keep get Ben and Draymond. I'll only yeah. do that if Draymond leaves. But if I'm like Golden ben State, Simmons I'm getting passer. all eyes on Ben Simmons. Yeah, How can Brooklyn I get this? Brooklyn's gonna want something in return, though. Like he's still in the contract, right? They, they I, I, think, I, think Bro- I think I think Brooklyn ship him off. I think because Brooklyn tanked. For who, though? I think oh, they ship him off. 
Like Brooklyn not necessarily much. tanking. I don't say they tanking. I think Brooklyn not tanking. Is I think they're going in a different direction, they're direction they're from being. They're, they're, looking, they're retooling. Yeah, they're looking for another, see if they can get another superstar in Brooklyn, which I doubt like, happens is, after the Kyrie. Ben Simmons' market is yeah, not there's no free agents. Yet. There's no big free agents this year. It's Mar- but ben Simmons I told you that earlier market. in the year, Lamont. I know. <laughs> ben Brooklyn is still on. like, you know. I mean, no, they'll yeah, still make the playoffs, but they're fresh yeah. on exit. It depends who they match up with. I still think they can possibly take they any play, team. They outside. play Cleveland first round. Uh, I think they will play. Hey, what up? What up, big fan Breezy? What you got on this, man? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Salute the panel. Salute the channel. Now, I see y'all doing the six-hour stream. Shit, salute to that, man. That's not easy to do, man. Respect. I, I was about to shut it down, too, a couple hours ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we on six hours now. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, nah. Um, so, yeah, now nah, respect, but... I feel like, you know, a lot of what y'all say, I ain't going to debate on Ben Simmons. I think we trying to hide him at most. You know, we trying to find a way to have defense or everything that we wanted him to do. We get in with Finney Smith and Mikhail Bridges. You know, yeah, that's right. why we need that's why we need these players, Finney Smith and like Mikhail Bridges, because Ben Simmons like not playing. I do like the team defense. Yeah, like I think – I think the better teams, you know, they say defense win championships. I don't know if y'all agree with that, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like, you know, that's our strength. You know, yeah, we went from having to get some money. What? I say Clash is going to get himself some money. Clash going to get a bag. Because uh, the way, he improved, the way he's been improving, he's going to get himself a bag. Hold on. But, but yeah. you don't think, I, as a coach, your job is to maximize and get the most out of your players while they're there. I just don't think sticking Ben Simmons at power forward is maximizing. Like, you're putting them in the worst situation possible. You're trying to hide them offensively. That, that All that's telling Ben Simmons is they don't trust me on offense when you take them off the point. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, 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 but you just said dude like that. He don't practice or study film, so why would I trust him? Like, where is nah, he? But, yeah. but that's on the coaches and staff to get them, get them in the film room and do all that stuff. You got you to gotta lock in. Like yeah, that was- but that, he got to have heart, though, man. He got to want to play, you feel me? Like, he can't just come to work and act like his outfit is the biggest thing to talk about. Like, you got to mm-hmm. actually put in some pain, man. Like, these guys, they want to win. Cam Thomas, he got something to prove. Spencer Dinwiddie, they should have never traded him. Should have gave him the team from the jump street. Never let KD and Kyrie. I mean, look at the ceiling. The ceiling is, what, t- second round, seventh game? I think we reached that this season. I just- Everybody, I think we're going to fly under the radar and we're going to get to the second round because a lot of people got their attention on the West, and they just I, looking at Boston like they declared the winner for the East. So, you know, I just I think, think it's a little too win. late for Ben Simmons in that situation. Mikael Bridges is there. I think that's the next wave of that of that team. So I don't I don't know yeah. where Ben Simmons is. I, I can't see him fitting with any team, like as far as his, his skill. I don't know. Where do you put him? Does do you put him on his own team or do you try I feel, to hide no, him on He says I'm making playing, excuses. No, no, no Ben Simmons team. is playing bad basketball right now. He I mean, there's yeah. no excuse for what he's doing. I'm saying he's He's still a valuable asset if you get a hold of him. If you let's say you can get him to do that, let's say you let's say he would have got bought out and you can get him on for the low for a half a year. I mean, I feel like as a coach, I could figure it out. Like, what I I just no, because if I agree with him, I'm saying you got to to figure it out. If anybody, do you need to put him around a whole bunch of hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought. He yeah, would have yeah, looked good did. with the Clippers. Oh, no, 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 no. Nah. Hold on. Clippers? If you were to put – if I'm a coach, first no, of all, sir. I got the best defensive backcourt ever team, in sir. NBA history. So I got <laughs> PG, Kawhi Leonard, and Ben Simmons. You no, sir. You, I said your perimeter – I got the perimeter on lock, one. But but the, but the thing is, you got to come in the door with that confidence, letting Ben Simmons know this is a crazy combination. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm putting the ball in Ben Simmons' hands. Okay, but but this is the issue though. We we got a dude who's already low managing, and then you throw another dude in there who can't no, who, shoot. And no, no, no. Play. But I'm saying I'm just going off if Kawhi Leonard. Oh yeah, being I healthy. got you. I got you. I, Kawhi I'm, Leonard I'm, healthy on the floor with PG and Ben Simmons. I mean, it, I know it, it sounds good, but here's the thing, bro. It I'm does, not, it, it doesn't it work because he can't. It only shoot. don't work if you put Ben Simmons at the power forward. I'm not giving no other. I'm tell. I'm saying be, yeah, a, point he guard. be a point guard. I'm saying push yeah. this ball up the court. I'm telling you, Kawhi Leonard and PG, we gonna run and transition as much as we can, and I, I hope to pray that these these teams can defend PG and Kawhi Leonard in transition. Y'all better be able to defend. I'm gonna just give them confidence by giving them the ball back. You, but, you might have all these flaws. You can't shoot. I don't care. 
push the ball. But, but here's the thing, though. But it's not, it, it sounds good, but in the playoffs, when the game slows down, they're not going to be in all of that transition like that. I think Ben Simmons yeah, might be okay, mentally but wrecked. In, in the half court, you still got PG and Kawhi. I <laughs> know, but you got to do it. He got to sit in the corner. Be, he got to <laughs> be a scoring threat, bro. He's bro, scared. there's certain – that, that, that's on a coach. Like, there's offenses – like there's so many different ver- variations yeah, of right. offenses that you can run where you can you can still make him a weapon in the half court. The for a coach just to say, "Oh, he's a liability," that means you don't know a how perfect, to coach. No, nah, hold example, on, example, oh, I got some pushback on that, bro. Like I think it's hard to do that though. I think in today's no, it's basketball, not. it's hard to hide a guy who can't shoot. And maybe two years hard. ago, it was easier. Right, so hold on. It's, hard. it's hard if you don't move the ball. Let me clarify what I mean by hide again. I, we put him in a dunker's pocket and at the four. You say he don't. We don't like him at the four. We like him at the four. You know why? We got Spencer Dinwiddie. We got Cam Thomas holding the ball up. Um, you know what I'm saying? Basically, with the ball bringing the ball up. Yeah. Now Ben Simmons is important. If not going, not changing his role is on defense. Even if, all he got to do is play solid defense and get the rebound and push. If he could push the pace after we get the rebound, that's all we really need him to do. It's but we need him to be aggressive, not look for the pass, look for the basket. If he we could get him to do that and you know have our team run with him doing that, then yeah, he's essential to the Brooklyn Nets. But if he's not going to be aggressive, and again, let the land the plane. In Philly, he averaged 12 drives a game. He averaged 12 attempts a game. With us, he averaged like three. Like, he hardly going to the basket. Like, we just need him to go to the basket. But y'all took the ball out of his hands. And you and you trying to ask him to attack the basket out of the half court, which never was his skill. No, never but, the half court. I'm not asking him to attack the basket after the um half court. I'm no, saying you, for the you, rebound, I'm asking him to push it. Once he push it, if if we can't look, if he can't find the shot off a fast break in the transition, then you need to kick it out and then let no, Spencer no, or Cam no, Thomas run a play. No, bro. The only At thing at the end of the day, he's still a better facilitator than Cam Thomas and Spencer do. Yeah, 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 but yeah. here's the thing though. Okay. Mike, you're, you're, I'm not taking the ball out of his hand. I'm gonna if I'm a coach and it's my job to Mac if, if the owner said I'm getting Ben Simmons, you better figure out a way to make it work. I, I feel like that's not a bad option. I didn't seen a lot of bad point guards in this league. I can work with Ben Simmons. I, but, but, I mean, but, but, Lamar, he ain't perfect, question. but I'm gonna work with him. Lamar, how do you how do you coach how do, how do you coach? All right. Hold on, let me let me ask Lamont a question. I get what you're saying because you're a coach. I respect that. But when you have a duo, and maybe you've had this on your team, who's very skilled, but he's not willing to put in the work. Like, how do you how do you I guess coach that? That part. Like he he doesn't even want to put in the work outside of basketball. Like he just doesn't want to do the extra work, or he doesn't have work ethic. Like that to me, that's just lost potential. Like in my opinion. Hold on, let me ask her what dude said before you answer. Um, sports look, I, uh, debates. I, I look at it like this, and to add to that, Jock Vaughn is saying the example, saying, Look, if, even if you make that, and that's the bag that you got, and that's the contract, yeah, you probably, you know, supposed to play X amount of minutes because of your contract or whatever, but if you're not helping us win, you're gonna sit. So, I think that shows character in the coach. And part of the reason why they signed a Jock Vaughn past this season or and next season. You feel what I'm saying? Because he's the culture. We're building the culture around the coach, not around superstars like Katie and Kyrie. We changing things, man. We about to shake the scene. One thing I can count on about dudes like Cam Thomas and all of these other dudes. Hold on, you are right. They're going to develop. They're going to actually. Let me say one thing. This is where I think you can be right. If you're on a team where you're trying to build a coach and you got a ton of young players, you don't want to spend your time trying to coach up Ben Simmons. It's just set too much of a bad example for your young guys. You got to get them out because it's going to turn toxic. I'm talking about adding them to a winning team, a team with culture, a team with vets. If you add them to it, that's why I didn't say add them to no young team. I said Warriors and I said the Clippers. I'm not adding them to no young team. No, I'm not sending them to the Timberwolves, none of that. But he could have I think he could have done well in Miami. Clippers. I mean, he's going to have to work. So, so hold and on. you got to get a coach. Yeah, he do, he going, hold on. He, he can do well those, with us. Right, man. Is he going to those places to get the culture mentality? Is that what you're saying? Because he don't have that. So that's what he would need, right? No, he just needs He just needs somebody who's going to say, I don't give a damn how you feel. I don't care about you having these mental problems. You're going to go back to being the point guard of this team, and you're going to go back to being the Ben Simmons we saw your first couple years. And so you come, need to figure on, that stuff Doc out. How Rivers couldn't do that? 
Doc we, Rivers is an is an expert coach, and there there was no, no Doc Rivers was doing that. But people killed Ben Simmons over that one mistake, even his own team. Well, he shouldn't have ran, man. Doc Rivers, I think Doc Rivers would have been a perfect coach for Ben Simmons. He's a player's coach. He's a motivator. He's yeah. all of that. Well, well, the thing, you, know, Rivers, you know, Doc Rivers said that he don't know if he could win with Ben Simmons, um, you know, as his point guard at that press conference. Look. You know? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Say that. That's huge, though, bro. Doc look, Rivers look. Don't just say shit like that. Look, look, to add to that, Cam Thomas said the post-game interview said it means everything for your coach to believe in you because you got the freedom to make decisions. So case in point is how a star player looks at how the coach respects they handle means a lot to them. And if they feel like they don't have that connection, you got the Ben Simmons, Doc Rivers situation. Hey. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I you know, right Jordan, Jordan, Jordan didn't want to get coached by nobody but Phil Jackson. That's for a reason. I got a player right now. This man can't shoot a lick. I'm talking about can't shoot at all, bro. I'll be, I'll be gassing him up in practice because I can't take him out because his defense is too good. But I'd be like, man, yeah, keep shooting that thing. But the other day when we needed it most, <laughs> this man catched four threes when we needed it most. I'm sitting here. I'm, you know, I'm doing, I'm yelling no every time he's about to shoot, but. He cashed four in the first half. But, nice. hey, at the end of the day, nice, bro. Hey, all that's paying off. I could bring him on. I could bring him on. He knows I be joking with him all the time about it, but he should, he made four of them in the first half yesterday. Bro, belt us out. Hey, so, Lamont, you better not ever yell no at me while I'm in the air shooting a three, bro. Hmm. You know what I do? I have a policy where if I'm about to take you out, if you make a shot, you get to stay in. <laughs> Bro, when they see that sub coming, they get to trying to figure out how to score fast in the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that should be crazy. I'm talking about I'll be having a sub ready and they always go find a way to score. So hey. That's Lucky funny, bro. Don't take guys yeah. out I'll run you to death. If you scoring, you ain't coming out. <laughs> it works. You to death. That's cool. Man, this is crazy, bro. It's gonna be a good year, bro. Uh Lamont, who you got coming out the West, bro? Oh, out the West? Man, this is gonna surprise y'all. Cause you said the oh, Lakers about shit. four months ago. <laughs> no, no, no. I said the Lakers <laughs> to the West Conference Finals. Okay, so that yeah, okay, I got you. N- now that th- we've seen a lot of adjustments, a lot of changes. Th- yeah, it's it's a better time to ask that. This question is this now. is based on recent play. Okay, I think the Clippers come out the West. Uh and you know what's crazy? Hey, I was I, I listen, I was that's that's all I wanted you to say, Lamont. I've been a Clipper fan and I've been telling you this hey, for the last two years. I'm not oh. look, I y'all know I'm not a big clipper, not a I'm not I think you they said figured we it were out. gonna be the biggest flop this year, but that's what you said. I did. I but they were hold on, were they not looking like it at one point in time with Kawhi missing all them games? I mean, he missed about yeah, he missed some games, but yeah. he's been playing a lot this year too, though, bro. This is the most he's played in like three years. Hey. I'm changed. I'm just saying it now. I gotta be honest based on what I'm seeing. And I'm then like, the trades we made, like even this, so even with Russ. Here's the thing with Russ. Bro, Russ I, makes I, it I'm, better. I'm excited. I don't know yet. Because Ty Lu did literally our season is all contingent on how well he he runs those rotations. Bro, bro yeah, bro. The Lakers are the Lakers are about to regret that. Now I understand why the Lakers had to do it, but the Clippers just picked up a big ass gold nugget. We did, and we're only paying him at like seven hundred thousand, so it's really a, a low risk. It's it's <laughs> no, that's a they get they won the lottery. That that's hitting the jackpot. And guess what? As soon as he Come turns on, the ball over, the just, hold on, Lamont. Just like you said, as soon as he turned the ball over, we got the subs ready, bro. Okay, I don't know why y'all ain't talking about another big three. That's a big three. Nah, nah, nah. Bro, no, 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 okay. it's not. Big three, bro. See, here's the thing. Hey, bro, I actually y'all must don't be like crazy, Westbrook. Man. I actually don't like Westbrook at all. But I think that in this situation, I think it's actually going to work. Some some weird reason, I think it's going to work. Well, <laughs> you hoping it does. That's no, the I, reason. no, I'm saying I don't even like Westbrook. But what I'm saying is that from what I've heard, and he was working out with these dudes in the offseason. And from what I've heard, it looked, they look great. He was working out with these dudes, Kawhi, Marcus Moore, all of them dudes. And then he'll go to the uh, Lakers. But um, he never went. I don't think he wanted to be there. So it, it's a lot. But in my opinion, Here, here's the thing with the Clippers. You playing bad, just bench them. No, here's the here's the saving grace with the Clippers. They have a stout enough defense to cover his mistakes. The Lakers didn't have that. That man made a mistake with the Lakers, and it turned into 
eight points for the other team because guys' attitudes would change. They would get mad, and they, they didn't know how to shake. They have a good enough defense behind Russ now where when he makes these bonehead plays, they get it right back, and they shake it off, keep it moving. That's going to be the difference. And not only that, Lamont, we got shooters around them. Hey, bro, no, you need you got PG and Kawhi. Yeah, yeah, and and see, and that's the thing. I, I'm actually we'll see because he he plays. I think the Lakers are a problem. I think the Lakers are still a a, a problem waiting to happen. If they Who do they have to pass? Uh, pass to get into the top? They got to pass like four teams. They got to pass the Blazers. Well, I don't, I don't uh, think the, I don't think the Lakers have to worry about passing. If they just stay solid, I think teams are going to drop. I don't think but, OKC stays. I don't think Portland stays. I disagree. I, I just see dropping. Because here's the thing. LeBron hasn't even listen, LeBron hasn't even playing, bro. And there and that's what I'm saying. Like, how are you gonna give a, a team a chance? So here's the thing. In order for them to make the play in, they literally gotta like they gotta go like split half their their games, bro. Like they actually gotta win above five. What are they? It's 20 games left. They gotta they gotta go go 10 for 10, bro. Oh, I bro. think that's possible. I don't I, think so. I'm not worried about the Lakers. They'll be in. They just lost what, like two, three in a row. <laughs> they just won. The no, so, the last. The, who did they beat? Did they Kings. literally didn't they just lose to the uh to the King to the Kings? No, nah, like they just. No, nah, the they Pelicans. played somebody. At, yeah, that's a. They blew, blew the Pelicans out. It was LeBron's first game with D'Lo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they did. They, they, so they won that game. Bro, so the yeah, chemistry but, looked so, good. I ain't gonna lie. So. Um, I, I feel like Golden State, you know, I'm a little concerned, but I know Steph is out. So I'm going to see how that looks once he comes back. I don't think they make it. <laughs> that's that's the feeling I got, that they don't make it. The, 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 <laughs> the Draymond Green thing, from what I'm hearing, mm-hmm. and I heard this from um, Nico himself, and I know he's not on the team, but he's still connected with them players. Mm-hmm. He says that locker room is split with the young, the young guys and the old guys. I can Steph, see that. Steph Clay and Draymond did not like Jordan Poole, and all the young guys don't like the old guys. And the locker room is divided. How does that? How does that work though? When you just won a championship with the same team, the the fight just what is situated. So the, remember the fight. From what I heard, it started first with Poole talking trash to Clay. Draymond start talking to Poole, taking up for Clay because y'all know Clay is quiet. So yeah. that's how the interaction started. He was stepping up like you ain't about to keep talking to Clay like that. And that's when they had their little back and forth. And when he said something about Draymond, um, something about his pay or something it had something to do with money. <laughs> but so something like that. That's when he he's, and 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 so now there's there's the big the divide and y'all wonder why the young guys just don't seem connected when you're talking about Wiseman didn't seem connected Kaminga still ain't connected Moody ain't connected Pool just seems like he out there doing his own thing where how many times have we seen Pool look off Steph Curry this year Steph would be wide open I mean mm-hmm. Steph Steph got ejected because of what Pool did you know oh, he got what so I'm say- but what I'm saying is from what I'm hearing now again this is coming from a, a guy that was with the team you know but it's just yeah, it's they're dysfunctional. We understand. And here's the thing: their defense is horrible this year, too, bro. They're like bottom five or bottom seven in defense this year. It's crazy. Yeah. So only that, and then the hold on the Gary Payton situation. We what we ain't even talked about that, bro. Like that's yeah, like crazy. he'll be back um towards the end of the season. So you and then he was supposed to be the help for the, the savior for the defense. It to me is just a lot of dysfunction. I think they know Draymond's out at the end of this year. And I, I just I don't see them even if they do make it to the playoffs, which I think they will get that eighth spot. I don't think they're gonna make much noise, to be honest with you. Just the chemistry is not there, bro. Chemistry is is important, super duper important in my opinion. Yeah, I think Draymond. Or that was what my next question to ask you: How much do you think the being good in the locker room affects the chemistry playing basketball? Very well, because very, very much. That's so. the, that's probably the most important thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. The the Warriors, and you see it. It's not even that. Like, the, 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 forget the losing the games. It's how they're losing the games. Like, yep. when you watch them, yeah. Like they'll be they'll go on a good run, right? And then their bench comes in, and then you'll just just see uh just Jordan Poole, and then they just look lost. There's no defense. Watch watch body language. 
<laughs> the body. Look how they interact with each other when they when the other teams go on runs. They're not, and this is how you can tell, right? Look how they communicate on defense. Like they don't have that. There's no communication on defense this year. Like you don't see that. The young guys, I'm telling y'all, all the young guys checked out on Draymond. Did Draymond used to be able to yell at them and get them all to act right defensively? They don't. They're not listening no more. They all checked out. I remember I used to see Iguodala. I used to grab Gary Payton in game, trying to coach him up, and them dudes just. And that's what I noticed last year. The veterans had a voice. Like that's why they that. brought GP back. They brought Gabe Payton back. That's why they brought him back. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. But even even if they're the eighth spot, I still don't want to see them. They're dangerous no matter what, in my opinion. Yeah, like they still- yeah man, that's the heart of a champion, especially if, if if Steph healthy. I mean, that's that's man, that's gonna be tough. You know, he could kill you in right. uh, in a series by himself. But um, if, if them other dudes ain't showing up, it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be yeah, like Wiggins and yeah, Wiggins. He's been very mi- uh, mediocre this year. Well, he ain't been healthy a lot. But Kaminga, mm-hmm. hey, listen, this was a perfect year for Kaminga to step up. With Wiggins going down. The Warriors still believe in him. They said he was untouchable with the trade deadline. My yeah. my thing is, I'm not, like, all these years watching the Warriors, as I keep telling people, like, they was better off getting veteran. I understand why they went younger, but getting veteran talent than younger talent. Because to try to develop and win at the same time and, you know, get to the finals, that's not easy. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, they were better, like, when they had guys like Maurice Spates and all these vests they used to have. Yeah. That is true. That's why they was trying to get Beverly. They was trying their hardest to get Beverly. They need a vet. Yeah. So, I don't know. I like the Suns personally. I think I think KD is gonna get in that situation, hit the ground running. I don't think like they're gonna have no problems with the um, chemistry or anything like that. I think I think um, they're gonna hit the ground running, man. I just don't That's think they I, can do it without Booker. Booker just re-injured his um, groin. He's hurt even, again. Hold on. Even with Booker, I still don't believe that they're they're gonna be. Uh, coming out of the you West. must be out of your mind if they had a no, because this is why though. Because like, like when I watch them play, like De- DeAndre Aiden and they, they got their stuff right together, right? They, bro, their bench, they don't have uh, again. I know Thank you, Aiden, Booker. Bro, here, here, y'all yeah, overrating that bench, me. man. Here's what people yeah. are telling me: the bench campaign, is overrated. Campaign can give you good backup point minutes, bro. They only going seven deep in the playoffs anyway. And Lamont, they don't listen, have- but that's uh, – listen, I knew you were going to say that because in the playoffs, what are you going to go, eight man deep, maybe eight at most? So it's not going to be super-duper important. I'm just saying injuries happen. I'm just telling you, the, the, to me, the deepest team is so important this year. I think that depth is going to yeah. be super important in chemistry. <clears throat> yeah, yo, hold on. I, yo, yo, can we slow down right there about just uh, – you know, you say you're a coach, so I'm asking – Going in the playoffs, like, I, I always want the coach to go into the ro- rotation, like, eighth guy, ninth guy, tenth guy. Why Why stop at seven? Why, yeah, why is, it, why is uh, it important to stop at seven? Right bro, the one thing you – if you get into coaching, the one thing you're going to learn real fast, you, you got you to go with the guys that get it done. And it's extremely hard to stay consistent when you bring – it's very hard to rotate. 10 guys in and out and have good consistency. And that's why I tell my team going into the season and I say, look, y'all, look, no hard feelings. Not all y'all going to be in this rotation because I understand that to win, you have to shorten the rotation down. So I'll be looking at my bench and I got a couple guys that can really go, but I got these seniors ahead of you. Hold on. And it's just like, I'm not, it's just, it just, it just kills. It just kills your momentum when you're doing all that subbing, and it kills your chemistry. You think so? I know. So no, I tried. It, it worked for some I, tried, I, I tried the five in, five out subs. That don't work. I tried you did that. You did that work for Kentucky. That didn't yeah. work for John Campbell. He quit that after a couple games. <laughs> I I'm talking about with, with with the whole car empty towns and. It don't work. That work. Nah, it don't and work, man. He abandoned it quick, and it. Just, I tried it. Like it looks fancy. It looks different. Seeing a whole new starting five come in. That Kentucky team with AD was deep too, man. They was deep, bro. That five, it don't work. Going that deep, I. I go. I go seven deep when it's time so, to win so, games. I'm seven deep. So, so let me ask you this from an NBA standpoint, because I know we we can kind of point out certain situations. 
that 2011 Dallas Mavericks team, right, they actually went nine men deep. It's like they had nine guys playing mm-hmm. over 16 minutes, and then their their 10th guy played nine minutes. So they actually did it. And this is, again, if you remember, Karan Butler was out. So and I mean, they, that, beat, bro. So they beat you was, with numbers. I mean, that was a veteran this is team, why, bro. Yeah, that's just why that, that Maverick team is one bro. in a million. Like that Mavericks team, bro. Corey Brewer was getting 16 minutes, bro. Everybody was getting minutes in that in them in them playoffs. I was like, bro, I didn't you, even know. I had to go back and look. It's hard, like, bro. It's, crazy. it's hard. You know how hard yeah, it is hard. to ask guys to come in, especially in games in college where the games are shorter. You got to come in four minutes and then come right back out. It's hard to get them to play hard when they sub it in and out like that. A lot of, yeah, a lot of guys ain't. A lot of guys ain't really ready to play them heavy minutes in the playoffs, especially. If you you got think a young it, team. does it work better with veteran teams, in your opinion? Yeah, it works better with vets. Yeah, okay. that's a fact. That, that's that all I fact. wanted to know. Okay, because yeah, you know, Marion, you know, um, Sean Marion, yeah. you know, he was hungry for a title. Jay Terry, kid, I mean, all those guys were hungry that's a for a title. Team, bro, yeah. bro yeah. Page, hey, Paige Storyakovich was getting minutes in that. I was like, man, Paige Storyakovich was a sniper still for Dallas, man. He killed the Lakers and uh, yeah, but they had a whole bunch of vets. Killing. All them vets, vets, bro, could come in. They knew how to play in playoff settings. They knew yeah. how to play hard. They knew how to turn it on and turn it off. Young yeah. players don't know how to do that. Young players mm. need to warm up. They like a yeah car in the winter. You know, you got to warm it up. And <laughs> then they start acting right after the first couple minutes. Right. Yeah. But see that that's another reason why, in my opinion, I think the Clippers this year can do it because they they're they're full of veterans, bro. If you look at this team, bro, they got exactly. seven guys you over, 30, over Man, 30 they ain't going to do nothing. I'm telling you, bro. Y'all, actually, y'all even they got a basketball team. You said Ooh. what? Who's your basketball team out there, actually? I don't have a basketball team, Actually, Thank you. That's all I was about to say. He ain't got one. Hey, man. <laughs> Hold on. I, hey, Hold I just said the Clippers ain't all that. Oh, what have they done? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, hey, bro, what, what, what's your team? Oh, my? No, the dude saying the Clippers ain't gonna do huh? that. What's your team, bro? He ain't got a team. <laughs> so you ain't got a team. And you man, I don't got I don't got a team. I, I'm, I'm okay. wearing LeBron. I, I can say that well. Where you from? I'm a LeBron though, fan. Like, you yeah. Don't what, state hold on. Nothing, what city bro? you from? You from Utah? Like, I do you rep Mahomes like? State. <laughs> he say Patrick Mahomes can hoop. He That's from Kansas. Oh, okay. It makes sense. Oh, okay, Ken. Okay, I got you. I got you. Hey, do you yeah, know you sound just like you sound just like Mahomes? When I hear Mahomes talk, y'all got the same accent and everything. Who, Jerry? Really? No, Action Jackson. When I heard when I heard Mahomes talking, I said that sounds just. Oh like yeah, that's that Kansas shit. That I Kansas agree. sound, that talk country, fat, talk yeah. fast. Yeah. 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 Are you from yeah. Kansas? You, you from Kansas City uh, or the Kansas? Yeah, I'm from, I'm from, I'm from Kansas City, Kansas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, why, why why some dude early in a different stream? He gonna ask the dude. He had an Arkansas like a um like a Razorback uh, logo. He going to say, how do you say it? Do you say it Arkansas or Arkansas? <laughs> oh, he's, a, he's a dumb. But like, Lamont, Lamont, my family's from Texas, so like, Patrick Mahomes, he's from Texas, so I got a Texas accent, too. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. I in Arkansas. And see, me and him talk totally different. I'm from the Missouri side. So oh, man, it's, it's the same thing. Stop. No, it no, ain't. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. Yes, it's the same thing. Who got the better it's barbecue? Different. It's the and same it, thing. That, hey, I'm gonna tell y'all one thing: Kansas City barbecue sauce is overrated. That shit nasty. No, it's not. <laughs> nah, hey, I ain't gonna lie. It's kind of decent though. Uh, oh, yeah, God, what's the best barbecue to y'all? I don't think it's Kansas City. Yo, it yes, ain't it been is. Kansas City in years. The last I heard, it was Memphis. Yeah, I thought it was. No, Memphis. it's Kansas City. It's Memphis, dude. It's Memphis. Boy, you hate on your own town. Why you hate your own Memphis your own town? The, they got the sweeter barbecue sauce, I think. Memphis, no, dude. North, hold on. North Carolina got the best barbecue. Stop it. Bro, North Carolina ain't no. Oh, nothing, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, 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 that got to be one of the most boring states I've ever been to, man. North Carolina. They, 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 they got They got that barbecue. You said Indiana's better than North Carolina. No, I definitely don't rep nothing in Indiana. I mean, but. Wait, Lamont, you from Indiana? Yeah, I'm from Indiana. Yeah, he's from Indianapolis. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, you you right by me then. Hey, Lamont, you gonna go to the All Star game I, no, I next year I'm in Indianapolis? No, nah, I live in Arizona though, so yeah, I'm about to move out to Arizona too. That's crazy. Hey, you gonna love it out here? The, but they but the Scorpions though, I don't know, bro. No, 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 no. Hold on, so, they said, you have that's a, a myth, bro. I'm gonna tell you right now because my girl, she was so scared coming out here because she was like, all she kept reading when we was looking for apartments when I first came out, Scorpion, Scorpion, Scorpions. <laughs> and then the funny thing is. 
the first part we moved in out here, probably like a month in, bro. Our dogs start acting funny. Yeah. Bro, I opened the closet door, bro, on the wall, bro. It got to be a scorpion, probably big as this Sprite bottle, bro. Are you serious? Yeah, bro, yeah, that's, that thing, that's crazy. Bro, bro, that thing, it like, it ain't too many bugs that make me want to run, but that thing made me almost want to <laughs> so run. So hold on. What you mean it's a myth then, bro? That's a, No, it's a myth. It's yeah, a myth real. because like, that's the only one. It, bro. It's, a myth because, <laughs> it's a myth because that's the only one I ever saw. No, hold on. But that could have killed me. I'm I'm getting my foot, bro. No, 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 exactly, no, bro. no, 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 that's not true. Fatal, no, bro. hold on. So the big scorpions are not poisonous. It's the little small, it's the baby ones with that, with that extremely potent poison that you got to watch out for. So how mm. often do you see those though? You don't see them. Okay. Most apartment complexes out here, like when we was in Awatuki, they do a good job of spraying and making sure you don't never see it. I'm when you do see one, season. it's like, it's like anomaly is very rare okay well then here's the second thing they say it gets so hot people's batteries just be exploding oh, bro, that's they no that's not true bro that's not true <laughs> that's, that's what they said <laughs> now you know what i, I, I did have happen YouTube to me video. though they said a top 10 thing no no, no. this is what i had happen to me i had <laughs> low profile tires on my truck the heat melted my tires wow what and yeah, well like, you could scramble <laughs> eggs outside <laughs> so but I love the heat. Hey, look, it's summer out. all year round. Like you can go outside in shorts all year round. Uh, hey, I love it out here. Man. They I, ain't heat out I heard they got. Good. I heard they got good Mexican food down there too. Yeah, you right about Mexico. It's not better than. Oh. It's not better than uh, L. A. and California. Uh, nah, hell no. Nah. If they, hey, if they can't speak English, man, the food is gonna be amazing. Trust me. Oh uh, man. <laughs> so what's <laughs> like? Okay. So well, tell me, what's the temperature like, like in the summers? How yeah, hot? That's do you crazy, bro. Are uh, you probably talking like 118, 120? That's yeah, that's different. Middle, middle hey, here's the cold. difference, though. Really. It's just, it's not humid. It's like when you go to Florida, that's that's the heat that makes you just sweat for no reason. Like you, you could you could be in the heat out here in Arizona, and you ain't just gonna be sweating for no reason. Okay, that, so humid. what? That's the dry heat you talking about? It's dry Florida. heat. Okay, I like that. That because I was this. It was either between Florida and Arizona where I was gonna move. Yeah, because so you can breathe like so. Like people be looking at me crazy because when it get hot like that outside, I'm gonna throw, I throw my uh my sauna vest on. I'm gonna go on a run. I'm gonna get a good sweat in. They be looking at me like I'm crazy. Hey, I'm down in Miami, man. It feels amazing year round. Bro, no, bro. I went to hey, Florida. Bro, Last time I went to Orlando, bro, it got so humid, bro. I stepped outside every time I stepped outside at Universal, bro. I just was sweating for no reason. Man. It was Only thing about Florida though is the I was comparing the cost of living. Florida's way more. So that's the only thing. Yeah, hey, yeah, cost yeah, living down here. Cost of living down here. You, you like it? Yeah, man. They said somebody had a uh, like a closet. They were spending about two thousand a month. I said for a, for a closet. That's oh, crazy. a studio? You mean a studio? No, he said a closet. A, in a closet. <laughs> Where in Florida? <laughs> hey, I think that person was over exaggerating, bro. Now, you know, studios and stuff like that still be expensive. I mean, like you know, I was, I was thinking about going down to, uh, like, what they Tampa, I heard, was cool. And then I heard Fort Lauderdale was cool. But they say, don't go to Miami. And they say Jacksonville is, is crazy. Don't go to Jacksonville. That's what I, I was Yeah, talking. Jacksonville, crazy. Tallahassee, you know, good prices. But, I mean, hey, if with, it wasn't for the so, college, it would be dead over there. With so many people here in Arizona, the, the, the crime rate is surprisingly low. Is it? That's that's the one thing that surprised me. You would have thought like it's just like super high crime. It's actually what's the nightlife in Phoenix? Is there is there a nightlife like out there or not really? Yeah, it's a ton. It's just different. Like the, the nightlife vibe is different. It's a more like very chill, chill vibe. So it's not. It's I don't know how to explain. It. It's like it's not like Chicago nightlife or, or nothing like it. It's like, all, it's like Austin, Texas. Nah, no, Austin, Texas is more lit. It's <laughs> it's more chill. Austin, Texas, down like they're yeah, like, like most back, college bro. students. I don't know. It's just more chill. It's like a more chill vibe. It's a lot of casinos out here, Indian casinos. So. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, it's that type of vibe. Yeah, I'm gonna go out there and take a little trip first. See I liked I like it. That. As soon as I came out here, I knew I was gonna like it. Once I once I came in out here, so. Hey, hey Lamont. Yo. You gonna go to All Star Game next year in Indianapolis? Uh, you know what? I'm not real big on the uh, All Star stuff. I'm not. It, I'm I not, mean, it's I, in your home town, man. You want to go check it out? Bro, I don't like going back to Indiana. Like, there's nothing good about Indiana, man. It's nothing good. No, nah. Lamont, bro. Indianapolis. Did, Indianapolis is one of the worst big cities in the world, man. Last time I was in that area, man, I had to deal with some 
racist people, bro. Indianapolis, bro. Yeah, like in that in that area, because I was in uh, the shy, and um, and I had drove over there like my homies and stuff like that. And like, man, like the way that they was looking, it was like, damn, bro. Hey, I, I like faint out here in Arizona because everybody respect each other mind because it's a uh, uh, it's a uh, open carry state or concealed carry. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you have to just you know treat everybody else everybody like they carrying. See, that's why, yeah, that's why I, would, I, I imagine Phoenix or Arizona to be like a little, like a little Texas in a way. That's kind of how I imagine it, like a little Texas. But um. nah, it's not. You got some areas that like <laughs> remind, give you that vibe, but um, but not nah, they, they. I'm gonna just say it, bro. Is Arizona a redneck state, bro? No, I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was too, but it's not. It's it's more of an implant state. It's mostly implants from other places. So you got a lot of Los Angeles. A lot of Indiana, a lot of Texas, a lot of Florida. Everybody come here. New Mexico, it'd be like new people from New yeah. Mexico over there too, don't it? So not just from new everybody Mexico. come here, so it it don't have the feel of like that type because yeah. you got everybody from everywhere here. Yeah, I only knew like one of my homeboys. He was from out there, so he was just he was always at the pool though. He just said, "That's just chilling by the pool." <laughs> yeah, I be I be uh, you know, I just get out there. Sometimes I do my sun meditation, man. Who's that guy from Purdue, uh, Lamont? That's pretty good. The center. What's his name? Oh, Zach Eady. Yeah. What's What's his draft? Is this his first year playing, or? No, nah, he's been in Purdue. I think this is his third year. I think he a junior. Is he gonna be a top pick? You think? Probably so. I don't think Painter's gonna let him come back. The one thing about Painter is if you get if you get any draft stock to your name, he don't he won't let you come back to school. He's not going to let you miss out on that money. That's what he did to Carson Edwards. Carson Edwards wanted to come back for a senior year, and he said, don't come back. I'm not letting you come back. Because it, it looked like a top-heavy draft. I'm, I'm talking about far as the top five picks. Mm. I mean, I there's know, a kid I'm in sure. Arizona. Um, not not top like four now because we, we don't know about the Brandon Miller situation. Who are you talking we about? We don't know about his situation now. It's not looking good for him. If he beat it, regardless, it ain't looking good. I don't think a team will gonna be willing to draft somebody with that attached to their name. Hey, hey, y'all, look, we going on seven now, close to seven. I got to get this thing shut down, man. All right, all right. Some shit I gotta do. It's already past midnight, man. But yeah, salute, man. Appreciate y'all pulling up, man. Salute, Purple Baby Wisdom Warriors, Jason. Good basketball talk. We cleaned it up towards the end. We had to make a little bounce back. SFM and them came in here, man. They was kind of. Throwing off the vibe, man, a little bit, man. I had to get him up out of here. Salute to SFM and them, though, but today just wasn't a day for it, man. I wasn't trying to hear all that crazy chatter, man, or whatnot. So, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. My bad, Chris D. Just, just like I said, man, I just, I just wanted to do a little chill vibe today. Just get the conversation on, man, and a little bit of debating, but all that yelling and stuff, it ain't, it ain't really for FYF sports, man. You said homeless rate in Arizona is high. Um, not as high as like Portland or LA. I mean, you'll see homeless people every now and then, but um they they have they have rules for the homeless people out here. Like, you know, so if there are a lot of homeless out here, you definitely don't see them. They can't camp out in front of businesses and none of that stuff. I just don't see it. I don't see it too significantly. Um but you know, hopefully they get it cleaned up if they do. Um, but yeah, man, salute. Great show today. Appreciate everybody that hit the cash app to donate to the channel, man. I think we, you know, got a few donations in, man. Hopefully if I missed you, I'm gonna get you on the next stream, but look out, man. Great episode today. Appreciate you guys helping me get this live stream in. Apologize for the late live, you know, but we, we got some good conversation in. Uh, a lot of viewers came through today. A lot of new faces. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Do what you got to do. Um, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you check us out. Um, and as always, man, look, we got memberships. I know it's late in the stream and I didn't get to it early, but if you want to become a member to the channel, man, click this link, man. We need members. All right. Y'all help. Y'all help this community. Y'all help the channel um, just by becoming a, a monthly member to the channel. One, two dollar, whatnot. And I, it's all much appreciated. Facts. Woo pig. Appreciate that. Woo pig. He said he's watching over on FYF sports debates live. So Woo pig, make sure you also come over because our main channel is FYF sports debates. 
right? We looking to hit 100K subs over here. So make sure you also come over here to FYF Sports Debates, man. Give us a follow over here as well. Um, and like I said, there's the link right there. If you want to become a member to the channel, man, as usual, it's always going to be there. Definitely appreciate anybody that signs up to help support the channel. But it's FYF Sports, man. It's another great podcast episode. We're going to be back with more sports and news. Until then, it's FYF Sports, and we out.